Audiobook title Water Magician, 00-318, by Koho Tadashi Part 01. 1. This work belongs to author Koho Tadashi. Translator Tsirp. Prologue. Chapter 0000. Ryo-san, please calm down and listen. It was the phone call announcing the death of his parents. Having just entered the second year of college, Ryo took a leave of absence, returned to his hometown, and took over the family business. That said, because he didn't know the ins and outs, Mr. Shige, who was the managing director, became the president and Ryo became the vice president. The employees were all people who had played with Ryo since he was little. Although he was the vice president, his salary was the lowest, but he learned the work little by little without garnering any particular dislike. After eleven months, March. Ryo-san, shall I help you? Seeing that Ryo was still working on his computer even though it was late, Mr. Shige, the president, asked. It's okay, it's something the youth club is doing so. The youth department of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry. It was very troublesome for Ryo, who was only a young manager. It was an organization that was everywhere in the rural areas and many small and medium-sized enterprises belonged to it. Of course, there was no problem even if you do not belong to it, and there was no merit for Rio's company. However, the previous president asked to be affiliated with it so the current president, Mr. Shige, was still affiliated with it. Rio, frankly speaking, was not struggling with his company but was spending time on relations with external parties. Mr. Shige, when looked at this angle, our company really has very few documents. Ryo, who was creating documents, presentation materials, event manuscripts, and such for the youth club, was impressed by the small number of documents internally. That's right. Our predecessor said. I don't need report documents. It is a waste of time to write a report. Money won't come in even if you write reports. Sales will not increase. The more time spent on writing reports, the lower the productivity. That action which occupies many hours out of the eight hours of work a day would not form a normal company. Instead, use that time to develop one of the business partners, hone your skills or come up with another idea. I wish you used the time for such matters. And so, if you wish to report, do it verbally. Superiors, if you want to know something, Go to the people in the field, because that is the basics. Of course, it would not work if it was a huge organization but the company had 97 employees, including the management team. The people in the field know best about the field? So that's why many people in the field have a lot of authority. Although it is not easy. When something happens, not just the people in the field have to take responsibility, but also the boss. Of course, that includes us the management team. Mr. Shige smiled wryly. What you need in management is that preparedness. That is why, without a human resource department, human resource matters are exclusively matters of the management team. Placing a person in a position means taking responsibility together when that person fails. Mr. Shige smiled and said, so now, I have to convey to Ryo-san who is working too hard the words from the predecessor. Don't work until you are exhausted. Ryo and Mr. Shige's voices overlapped. And the two of them smiled. Of course, those were not words to spoil the employees to support laziness or hesitation. It was purely from a management perspective. Failure, mistakes, redo, problems occurs no matter how carefully you work. However, there is a common reason for many of these cases. Those were fatigue and having no leeway. Redo, all the time, effort, and materials spent so far are wasted. Moreover, more time and effort are required to restore the original state. If all those wasteful things could be eliminated, the company would be grateful. Of course, there is the aspect where employees grow by learning from their mistakes so it is a case-by-case -case basis. Rio's father grandly told his employees to, don't work until you are exhausted. And as the same manager level, he once again found it amazing but more than that, 
Rio found it even more amazing that he was forming the company such that the employees don't have to work until they are exhausted. Fu. Rio said to Mr. Shige after sighing. You're right, father would be angry if I worked to exhaustion. That's right, Rio-san. Mr. Shige smiled. Although hard work is important, exhaustion and hard work were opposite faces on the same coin. I'll go home. Rio left the company. His feet may have been swaying a little due to fatigue. Nevertheless, the traffic light was green. He confirmed it. He was crossing the pedestrian crossing properly. That was also certain. But that had nothing to do with the dozing truck driver. Rio was struck and hit the ground hard. He could no longer feel any pain. His consciousness was slowly becoming faint. Ah, uh, this is bad. The first sensation Rio felt was not the fear of death. Nor was it peace. He didn't know where it was directed at, but he held a little regret knowing that tomorrow was his twentieth birthday. This is the afterlife? Rio found himself in a white world after waking up. Mihara Rio-san, right? In the white world, a man emerged as though he floated out of it. He seemed to be in his mid-twenties. The man had long blonde hair and a calm atmosphere, seemingly a handsome European man. He held something like a tablet in his left hand. Yes, you are correct. Rio answered and the man smiled. Great. To be honest, you are the first visitor in a long time. And then, he said with a slightly sorrowful expression. Mihara Rio-san, you died in a traffic accident. Ah, uh, as expected. Rio recalled a little. About how he died in the accident. Yes, I remember. Rio answered with a nod. The man changed from his sorrowful expression and started talking with a slight smile. But the content had many parts that Rio failed to understand. This is part of the reincarnation system of your world. You died in the 777077 world line of Earth, but occasionally there are instances where people reincarnate or transfer across world lines. This time, Mihara Ryo-san has been selected for that. Excuse me? I guess it is hard to understand. Well, to put it simply, do you wish to reincarnate in a different world from Earth while possessing your current memories? That's the offer. The man smiled with an expression that showed he was certain this would work. Ah, uh, other world reincarnation. Just like in novels. Yes, yes, you are correct. It seems to be popular on Earth these days. The explanations became easier because of that. Rio was grateful to be given the chance to live again. That said, he had one question. What did this person want to achieve by letting him reincarnate? I have a few questions. Sure, any question is welcome. The man waited for Rio's questions with a smile. Are you God? No, I am not God. If I reference your knowledge, I am something close to that of an angel. I see. Angel. If he calls himself an angel, let's call him Michael, pseudonym. When Rio thought that internally, he sensed Michael's pseudonym, eyebrows twitched slightly. A very slight movement that could have been his mistake. H.N.? Did he read my thoughts? Well, it doesn't matter. Michael, pseudonym continued waiting for Rio's questions with a smile. What is your purpose for reincarnating me? Sorry, I cannot answer that question. His smile suddenly transformed and Michael, pseudonym, said apologetically. We do not decide your reincarnation. The God that Rio-san mentioned just now makes the decision. For that reason, I do not know the purpose. But in that case, what should I do after reincarnating? Michael once again smiled and answered. Please live as you wish. I have not heard of anybody told to do something or given a mission. Life as you wish. That's a wonderful phrase. Yup, let's have a slow life. Understood. I accept your reincarnation offer. 
Rio answered and a smile bloomed on Michael's pseudonym, lips like a flower. That smile alone could captivate many women in the world. It was such a smile. Oh, 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 that is great. Then I will explain about the world you will reincarnate in. According to Michael's pseudonym, explanation, it was a world with swords and magic. Gunpowder was not yet commonplace. The size of the reincarnation planet was the same as that of Earth and the molecular composition was also the same. Most of the physical phenomenon was the same as well. But it is a world with magic? Won't it differ from the physical phenomenon on Earth if there was magic? Yes, there is magic. But there was magic on Earth in the past too. Well, things happened and it seems that it can't be used now. That was quite shocking to Rio. Earth has magic too? What's with that? Is he referring to those out-of-place artifacts? But those were explained as coming from aliens or ancients. It's true that in legends and such on Earth, magicians and magic appears frequently. Ah, sorry. It looks like you are confused. But no matter what I said, Ryosan has already decided to reincarnate so it is not good for your mental health to ponder Earth's past. Ah, yes, you are right. Let's not think about stuff that can't be solved just by thinking. I will think forward. And so in the world with magic for convenience, we call that world, Phi? About one-fifth of the humans on, Phi, can use magic. Ryosan's attribute is, water attribute, dot. Water. It could be said that using magic was a staple aspect of reincarnation and transference. But even if it is staple, something like fire magic with high attack power, or earth magic that is easy to use, like making a swamp or stopping the movement of the enemy, creating a fort in an instant to change the battle situation, I wanted to try something like that but, no no, in the first place, if I am to reincarnated. I would want all attribute suitability. That would have been great. Erm, if possible, could you change it to fire or earth? Today, Michael, pseudonym, replied with many apologetic faces. Sorry, but I can't change it. Because Rio San's magic attribute is within the scope of creation, it is the territory of the gods. It is outside the scope of management that we are in charge of. Also, magical aptitude is determined at birth on phi and can't be acquired after birth. In other words, I have to keep living with water attribute? Perhaps Rio's face was filled with despair as Michael, pseudonym, added in a hurry. That is true, but water attribute aptitude is very good for humans. For example, water is needed no matter where you live. You will not have any trouble procuring water. Furthermore, 80% of the humans on, Phi, can't use magic. From that aspect alone, Rio San is already quite blessed. That's true. Water and salt are crucial for human survival. When talking about a sword and magic world, it is standard that they do not have a water and sewage system in cities. The worry about water might be a huge thing. Mihara Rio was fundamentally a positive person. By any chance does water magic encompass healing magic or has healing properties? On, Phi. Healing belongs to the domain of light attribute magic. Ah, uh, okay. After that, Michael, pseudonym, continued his explanation. There are six attributes of magic on, Phi. Fire, water, wind, earth, light, and darkness. Also, there is the neutral attribute that is not included among them. As the neutral attribute magic is not included in the six attributes, it is possible to learn it but the possibility can be said to be close to zero. To be honest, do not have expectations for it. Instead, I recommend you extend your mastery of the water attribute that you have an aptitude for. Michael, pseudonym, continued talking while looking at the tablet in his hand. Rio San's physical strength is about upper middle tier. On, Phi, there are no level, systems or skill. Systems so steady efforts are the most important. I'm among the average as expected. 
In other words, I'm slightly better than average? Then I have to put in a ton of effort or I might die immediately. How can I grow my physical strength of magic? The physiques of humans on, phi, and earth are the same. So the way to gain ability is the same too. On earth, the human body becomes stronger the more you're trained, right? If you do strength training, you will build muscle. If you keep running, your cardiopulmonary ability will improve. Or some African tribes look at distant things since young and have eyesight above 5.0. On the contrary, people who are blind have no choice but to rely solely on hearing to collect information and have good hearing. It is the same. All you have to do is use it. Then it will grow. After receiving some other explanations, it was finally time to ask for Rio's wish. I wish to live a slow life in a place where nobody can reach. Michael, pseudonym, nodded after hearing that and operated his tablet. In that case, I will make Rondo Forest your reincarnation destination. I will prepare a house and two months worth of food for the time being. During that time, please become proficient in hunting using water attribute magic. I will make it such that monsters don't come near the house. It will look like a barrier. In earth units, it will be about a radius of 100 meters. Also, about 500 meters southwest of the house is a sea so once you are used to water attribute magic, you will be able to collect salt from seawater. Please do your best. All right. Ah, uh, one final question. How do I use magic? At the very end, Rio asked the most important question. Magic is by mental image. Draw a clear image. And gain experience. It is the same for everything. You won't become a master suddenly but get better after countless tries. The same goes for magic. I'll give it a try. Thank you for everything. After finishing, light wrapped around Rio's body and he disappeared. Michael, pseudonym, remained on the spot. Slow life, huh? That sounds good. Will I be incarnated someday and live a slow life somewhere in the world? Finally, he lowered his sight to his tablet and noticed that there was an oversight. Ah. Uh, I forgot to mention that his amount of magical power is considered quite large on. Fi. Well, he'll notice as he lives. But there was something else. Hidden characteristic? Why is such a thing? It's been 10,000 years since the first girl I reincarnated that I saw hidden characteristics. I wonder what kind of hidden characteristic does he have? Characteristic, perpetual youth. WMV1C0001. Part 1, Volume 1, Slow Life. Chapter 0001, Slow Life. The First Ceiling. The first words in a reincarnation, it was close to a staple, although it was a little different. But staples are important. A bed with a luxurious canopy, there was nothing like that. If there was a canopy, he wouldn't be able to see the ceiling. By modern Japanese standards, it was a shabby bed. Straw was laid on a board and a piece of cloth was laid on it. That said, considering it was a European pre-Renaissance cultural level, the bed was relatively good. It said something about his class too. As he was not in an aristocratic mansion. He was wearing the same outfit he wore when he died on earth. The same shoes. He didn't bring anything else. Rio got out of bed and first took a walk around the house. Bedroom, living room, kitchen, and bathroom. A bath. He never heard of a bath appearing in Europe before the Renaissance. Well, there were large baths during the Roman period so it can't be said that there has been none. As a Japanese, I am immensely thankful. Ah, uh, I wonder if Michael, pseudonym, made it for me because I am Japanese. Michael, pseudonym, is a great man. Although it was still unknown if Michael, pseudonym, was even male. That said, Rio's knowledge was very mistaken and there were public baths in medieval Europe too. However, the general public's knowledge of hygiene was poor so ironically those public baths were a hotbed for infectious diseases. 
There were two books and a knife on the desk in the living room. Beside them was a piece of paper. The food can be found in the storage outside. It has been made into a freezer room so the food can be preserved. By Michael Pseudonym? I knew he could read my thoughts. He didn't want to make a capable man an enemy. The books were not those heavy volumes stored in the valuable archives in university libraries, but ordinary books, right, books that can be said to have been made on earth after the development of letterpress printing. Books? Not parchment but paper? Is this a world with paper? Monster Encyclopedia, Beginner's Edition? Plant Encyclopedia, Beginner's Edition? This is... In other words, there was no such thing as the classic, appraisal, skill commonly found in reincarnation stories. He did mention that there was no level or skill system. Both books were quite easy to read with illustrations. He was very thankful for that. The knife was about 20 centimeters in blade length, and it seemed to be quite well made. What would you bring along if you are alone on an uninhabited island? The staple answer will be a knife. Staple is royal road. Staple is supreme. Rio slotted the knife on his belt for now. Looking around, there was nothing else that stood out. Then, he opened the door to the outside. The image of a brilliant sun came into his eyes. A carpet of grass surrounded the house. And a forest directly ahead. It fit the term dense perfectly. A forest which depths can't be seen at all. The same forest was in the opposite direction. However, further beyond, perhaps it was quite a distance away but there were mountains that reached the heavens. This transferred location seemed to have a warm climate but it was snowing near the top of the mountain. It looks like a place where dragons might appear. Yeah, I'll not approach that. Rio pledged to himself out loud. He was not yet hungry. In that case, there was something he must do. Or rather, it was something he definitely wanted to try after coming to this world of sword and magic. Yup, to actually try to use magic. I can only use water attribute. And the image is important for magic. He somewhat put his right arm forward. He imagined shooting water from his right hand and called out. Come out water! Splash. A clump of water about the amount of a full glass came out from his right hand and fell to the ground. It was his first experience of magic. From an objective point of view, it was an extremely shabby display, but that was that. Succeeding in his first magic, Rio was struck with emotion. Magic truly exists in this world. Rio continued to cast due to his excitement. Come out water. Come out water. Come out water. Michael, pseudonym, said that the image was important. Maybe. The image of water coming out of his right hand was the same. Water. In the same way, a clump of water appeared from his right hand and fell to the ground. Water. T slash N, he said it in English. Even then, the same clump of water appeared from his right hand and fell to the ground. Next, without saying a word, he chanted in his head. Water. Upon doing so, the same clump of water appeared from his right hand and fell to the ground. So there is no need to say it out loud. I am to chant some cool lines though. Men will always have some aspect of Chinibu. Ah, uh, I should have stored this in the bathtub. That was a waste of water. After that, he quickly moved to the bath. Then, he continued his water magic training. Water could only make a full cup amount of water appear. I want to have something that allows water to continuously come out. About enough to fill the bathtub. The bathtub was made of stone and was quite well made. The closest image would probably be those open-air baths and luxury hot spring inns. Just relying on water would certainly be a hassle. Thinking of continuous water flow, the first to come to mind will be a tap. No, wait, this is a bath. For a bath, it should be hot water. Right, I'll try to release hot water. 
he made an image of hot water in his head. He chanted out loud to solidify the image he had. Hot water. When he did that, a clump of water appeared from his right hand and fell into the bathtub. That's right, not hot water but water. Eh? Maybe I have to imagine it better. He chanted with the image of the hot water in a bath. Hot water. And then, a clump of water appeared from his right hand and fell into the bathtub. That's right, it was not hot water after all but just regular water. Yeah, let's give up on hot water for today. This Rondo forest is quite warm so a water bath is good too. Rio didn't hate hard work. But he was a man that knew the usefulness of giving up. Yup, not everything will work well from the beginning. Water supply. Shaping his right hand like a faucet, a continuous stream of water appeared from his hand. All right, that looks good. It was true that his procurement of hot water failed but continuously releasing water from the first day should be in the category of considerable success. At the very least, his drinking water and water bath were secured. Of the problems faced in daily life, the remaining major one was Fire, huh? Right, from cooking to keeping warm or to rank up his water bath to a hot bath, a fire was needed. It would be great if he could use fire attribute magic, but he could not hope for what was impossible in this world. Rio would have to live with water attribute magic for his entire life. How can I get my hands on fire? Was mankind's first fire due to a tree burned by a lightning strike, or bestowed by Prometheus, either one was not plausible at the moment. It would have been easy if I had a flint. A quick glance told him that there was no flint in the house. Striking the flint with the metal part of the knife would have generated spark. Eventually he would have to find it from a nearby cliff or riverside but that would have to be after he got used to life to some extent. The fact that monsters don't come within a radius of a 100 meters meant that there were monsters outside. He felt that he should make some preparations before leaving the barrier, pseudonym. Only after he gets better with water magic and find a way to make offensive water magic. At any rate, for now he would have to find another method to obtain fire. Without a flint, the other method would have to be rubbing a hard stick against a soft stick to generate fire from the friction. Although I totally cannot imagine myself succeeding. After finally generating enough water to store in the bathtub, Rio went out. He collected firewood while making sure to not leave the barrier. Along the way, he picked up tinder as well. The tinder would refer to materials that can catch fire easily to start the fire. Withered grass. If he crushed them, he could use them without issue, probably. Among the pile, he seemed to have been lucky to acquire some black palm bark that came from palm-type trees similar but slightly different from the palm's trees he recalled. Yeep, I recall seeing it in a video. Rio's survival knowledge was to that extent. In the house Michael prepared, there was a sickle. Even after taking into consideration the amount of firewood to use there, he was able to obtain a reasonable amount of firewood. The wood he would use to cause frictional heat were the pine-like tree branches and the oak-like tree branches. Now! It didn't even smoke. Rio worked harder. An hour passed, two hours passed, and then he gave up. Let's check the food inventory for the time being. It may be necessary to ration. Rio, who gave up on making a fire, headed to the storage outside the house. The storage seemed like an ordinary small hut. Upon opening the door, he noticed that the interior was cooling. Is this water attribute magic? Walls made of ice? This is just like what they call a cold room. Michael probably prepared it for him. In the future, Rio may be able to use this kind of magic, maybe. The second day after coming to, Phi, Rio woke up with the rising sun. The idea to get a fire going was already in his mind. However, to realize it, he would have to get even better in water attribute magic. Michael, pseudonym, mentioned that the laws of physics and molecular composition of earth and, phi, 
was fundamentally the same. Of course, Phi had magic while Earth didn't have magic. But apparently there was magic on Earth too in the past. The molecular composition of water was H2O. That was probably the same in Phi. He brought out a pail from the bathroom. Water supply. He collected about 10 centimeters deep worth of water in the pail. After that, he would have to solidify the water and make ice. The mental image he had was to tightly squeeze and shrink the water. Freeze! But it didn't go well. Yeah, it's difficult. But I have to be able to make ice. This will likely be my weapon. I want to try making a spell like ice spears. Perhaps it was not enough to just squeeze the water. Maybe he needed to imagine taking heat away at the same time. Thoughts such as those ran through his mind as he repeated trial and error. After challenging countless times, a thin film of ice finally appeared on the water's surface. But he couldn't make it completely solidify. This time, he imagined the H2O molecules within the water in more detail. There are two mechanisms by which ice stores thermal energy. One is by molecular vibration. The other is by changing the strength of the bonds between water molecules. In other words, enthalpy. He bonded the H2O molecules together. He connected the oxygen atom O of this H2O molecule with the hydrogen atom H of the adjacent H2O molecule. A phenomenon called hydrogen bond was formed in his image. At the same time, the molecular vibration stopped. In the first place, the temperature of a substance is proportional to the magnitude of the amplitude of the vibration of the molecules that make up the substance. Or rather, temperature can be said to be an indicator of the intensity of vibration of a molecule. The stronger the vibration, the higher the temperature of the substance and vice versa. The state where the vibration of all atoms and molecules is almost zero is called absolute zero, minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. That is why, theoretically, there is no temperature below absolute zero. In his mental image, he made the vibrations of the H2O molecules zero. At that instant, the water in the pail completely turned into ice. All right, success! Although I succeeded, I can't get the ice out of the pail. He had to change the shape of the ice slightly. While holding both hands over the ice, he imagined in his head. The ice was gradually scraped off around the edge. Then, he took it out of the pail and held it in his hand. A lump of ice with a diameter of 25 centimeters and a thickness of about 10 centimeters. He held it in both hands and imagined deforming it in his head. He thickened the central part and thinned the periphery, making a convex lens. After about 30 minutes, it finally reached a shape he was satisfied with. Fufufil, I won. The reason for victory was hydrogen bond. Who exactly was Rio fighting against, no one knew. Hydrogen bond forms the bond between water molecules but for example, a double helix DNA is also connected by hydrogen bonds. From science class, we learned that aadenine and t-thymine, and g-guanine and c-cytosine are linked by hydrogen bonds to form the double strand. Hydrogen bond is amazing. Now then, it was time to gather the sunlight with the created ice lens and burn the black palm bark. Using ice to create fire. It felt a little immoral. He was worried that the ice would melt but it didn't seem to melt if he continuously pour magical power into it. That aspect may be the difference between natural ice and ice created by magic. The brilliantly shining sun. And the fairly large ice lens. Using those, the palm bark was ignited in less than two minutes. Rio finally acquired a way to set fire. Magic sure is convenient. He could use magic to obtain the three elements of survival, fire, water, and food. Well, he did use quite a primitive method to create fire using magic. I wonder where does this water come from? I guess it comes from the moisture in the air, maybe? The Rondo forest had a warm climate, or rather, 
the temperature was so high that it seemed like a subtropical climate. And there was high humidity. That naturally meant that there was a large amount of water contained in the air. Because of that, a beginner in water attribute magic like Rio could quickly find the knack to release water. Rio thought so. On Earth, even deserts have a few percent of humidity. In other words, even the dry air of a desert contains moisture. If he could extract that, magic is definitely convenient. However, if that was not the case, if he was not extracting water from the air but creating it from nothing, of course, it can't come from nothing. To be exact, when he mentioned nothing, it only meant there was no substance, but there was energy. Michael, pseudonym, mentioned that the laws of physics were fundamentally the same on Earth and on, phi. In that case, Rio thought that the physics formula effective on Earth would be effective on, phi, as well. The famous Einstein formula that even ordinary people on Earth know. E equals mc squared. E energy, m mass, c, speed of light. Energy is equal to the product of the mass and speed of light squared. To put it simply, it is possible to generate energy from matter. A prime example would be nuclear power and the atomic bomb. However, the focus here was the equals sign. As learned in junior high school mathematics, the right and left connected by an equal sign are equal. They are equivalent. In other words, if energy can be extracted from matter, matter can also be generated from energy. Of course, even on Earth entering the 21st century, material production from energy has not been established as a technology. At best, pair production has produced electrons and the like. In the first place, a huge amount of energy is generated from even one gram of matter. In other words, even if you could control an enormous amount of energy, you will only succeed in generating one gram worth of matter. How enormous! The atomic bomb that fell on Hiroshima actually only weighed about 0.7 grams in terms of energy. In other words, even if all that energy could be converted to mass, only 0.7 grams of matter would be produced. However, there was this convenient thing called magic on, phi. Perhaps in the depths of magic there is also a technique to create matter from energy. Not only creating something from nothing, that would lead to the establishment of creating matter from energy, and even the mystery of the creation of the universe. His dreams were expanding. WMV 1C0002 Chapter 0002 Handling Water Rio, having won against who knows what with hydrogen bond, next aimed for hot water. However, it was simple. Rio saw the prospects of victory. Ice was created by stopping the vibrations of the water molecules H2O so he could perform the opposite process as well. In other words, he increased the vibrations of the water molecules. In the past, Rio used to do free research during his summer vacation. Of course, it was not using magic. Place water in a thermos bottle, cover it, and shake. After shaking about 2,000 times, the temperature of the water rose. The temperature rose by forcibly increasing the vibration of water molecules. That was already guaranteed success. First, he took out the frequently used pail. He'll try with that. Water supply. He cast without chanting. He practiced so that he could do it while either chanting or not. The same as when he created the ice lens, he prepared about 10 centimeters deep worth of water. Then, he held both hands over it and imagined the H2O molecules in his head. Then, he vibrated them. Eh? There was no change in the water in the pail. It didn't feel like steam was coming out. When he placed his hand in the water, he didn't feel any temperature change. Why? Was his H2O image insufficient? After imagining it more clearly, vibrate. The temperature isn't going up. Even though it should work if he reversed the process he used to make ice. What else did I do that time? He thought about his actions. 
Uh, before stopping the water molecule vibrations, I combined the molecules. Maybe I have to do the opposite as well. He once again held both hands over the water and the pail and summoned the image in his head. An image of breaking the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules and allowing free movement. And then imagining each molecule vibrating. Splash. Suddenly, hot water blew up as though a geyser spouted out from the pail. Hot. Rio managed to somehow avoid the falling geyser. It would have been terrible if he got burnt. Water magic has no healing aspect after all. That said, it was great that he succeeded in making hot water. However, the current problem was that it was terrifying to attempt this unstable boiling water technique, real style definition, in a bath. It would be a disaster if the stone bath broke. So how should he do it? That's when he decided. I just have to practice. Increase his proficiency. Experience success and failure countless times. Slowly increase the number of times he succeeds. Experiencing success many times would lead to confidence. His lunch was also the same surprisingly unfrozen dried meat in the storage as yesterday. For some reason, only the dried meat was not frozen in the cold room. He repeatedly generated hot water while chewing. It was about 3 p.m. in earth hours judging from the time the sun moved across the sky. Rio suddenly felt dizzy and couldn't stand. My consciousness is swaying. It was his first magic depletion. He drank a little of the freshly generated water from the pail and somehow managed to reach the bedroom before collapsing and letting go of his consciousness. The third day after arriving on, Phi? Reflection on yesterday. Let's use up my magical power after taking a bath. Rio spoke out loud and reflected. It seemed that it felt unpleasant to sleep without taking a bath. As expected of a former Japanese. It was then he noticed something. I only have the clothes I'm wearing now. That's right, in this home prepared by Michael, pseudonym, there were no clothes prepared. Thinking back, what was Michael, pseudonym, wearing? Something like a toga worn by ancient Roman aristocrats. Well, at any rate, there was no cloth in the house. No, there was one. The cloth used as his bed. But that was necessary for sleeping. Well, nobody is watching so if it came to that, I have the choice of not wearing anything. But even in the paintings of Adam and Eve, their crotch was hidden by leaves. When I eventually hunt animals... Maybe I can wrap some skin around my waist. Rio had always been a man who didn't care about what he wore. Now that he had decided on the direction for his clothes, did he? He had fire, water, and food. In that case, it was finally time. Right, a means of attack using water magic. He had two months until the food and storage was exhausted. Until then... He must become able to leave the barrier and procure food. His only weapon was the knife prepared by Michael, pseudonym. The man who made a name for himself using a knife on earth was not Rio so he had zero confidence in hunting animals or monsters that attack him using that knife. In the first place, it is almost impossible to defeat even a normal wild boar with a single knife. It would be insane to attempt to cross a forest in, Phi? where monsters roam with just a single knife. In that case, the only weapon Ryo could use was his water attribute magic. I wish I had the skills to make a bow and arrow and shoot it but I don't have such a thing. Yesterday, when he made the ice lens, he thought that he could one day make an ice spear. But it was still impossible. Just making the water in front of his eyes into ice took a few minutes. Making a spear in front of his prey and sending it flying was not very realistic. In that case, what can he send flying? Water and water supply both freely fall to the ground after coming out from his hand. Right, first of all, he had to use something like a water ball. He raised his right hand forward and made a mental image. An image of him creating a water ball the size of his head and launching it from his right hand. Water ball. Splash. Just like his image, 
a ball of water about the size of a head was launched from his right hand and flew. It was about the speed of a basketball pass. After flying about ten meters, it fell to the ground. Oh! Ryo did a slight dance of joy from his first attack spell. This time, he'll fire it at the trunk of a tree about seven meters away. Splash. Drip. The trunk got wet with water. Yeep, it has no attack power. I knew it from the start. Ryo said as he collapsed to both his hands and knees. It was a pose of despair. But I have a trump card. Ryo immediately stood up and declared. If water ball doesn't work, I just have to release a water jet. On Earth, the water jet was said to be able to cut anything. However, fundamentally it was not cutting but shaving with water. In the past, Ryo researched water jets for company operations and was convinced that it was the likely winner for water attribute attacks. Raising his right hand forward, he made a mental image. The image of a thin, high-speed water jet launching from the tip of his right hand. Water was made as thin as possible by applying pressure from the surroundings. Water jet. Trickle trickle. A thin stream version of water supply with little momentum appeared. Yeah, that will likely not cut anything. Rio once again was on both his hands and knees on the ground and overwhelmed by despair. I lost. It seemed that he lost to something. Let's calm down. Just like yesterday's lunch, he bit down on the dried meat from the storage. There's no need to rush. I could only use the boiling water technique fairly well after practicing for half a day. In that case, if I pile on practice for this water jet, won't it become a strong weapon? Furthermore, I'm now able to create ice. That should be usable in the upcoming battle with monsters. I just don't know how I can use it yet. I just have to practice after all. Hard work does not betray. He devoted himself to practicing water jet. After around 2 p.m. on Earth time, he surpassed to make a slightly more vigorous version of water supply. However, after that, he could not focus the pressure beyond that of a car wash hose. Then, Rio suddenly realized. I have to enter the bath for today. And in the bathroom. It was time to show the results of his half-day training yesterday. Plenty of water. The bathtub was filled with water in just ten seconds. He was now able to control the amount of water produced. That was the result of the magic control he acquired after training for half a day and collapsing. Next will finally be the time to make the water hot. But Rio was not worried. With yesterday's training, he was confident. He held his right hand over the bathtub and imagined in his head. The image of the water molecules moving around freely and each one of them vibrating. He performed it for about half of the water in the bathtub. He didn't want it to be too hot. He placed his hand in the hot water each time and raised the temperature while repeating the fine adjustments. And then, finally, it reached the perfect temperature. Yes. Rio's efforts were thus rewarded. Tiredness is the cause of failure. Don't work to the point of exhaustion. It was somewhat of a signature phrase from Rio's father. It was true but a difficult phrase to put into practice. He slowly immersed himself in the hot water and organized the current situation. Water jets still could not be used as a means of attack. Forming ice takes a couple of minutes. Before that, he had to verify if he could directly create ice in midair. But I still want to be able to say icicle lance and launch an ice spear. Any man would like to perform cool things. First, I have to know a little more details about using ice with water magic. Next, if I could generate ice faster, I might be able to use it when confronting monsters. After getting out of the bath, Rio went to the garden and put it into practice. I'll try directly generating ice from the air. Ice lens. Between his hands, the same ice lens he used to create fire appeared. It took about five minutes to complete. It is possible to directly create ice from the air. But it takes quite a long time. 
Unlike yesterday, it was made without a pail. It was actually quite significant progress but Ryo was not aware of it. The ice lens would not melt while magical power was channeled into it. Once that was stopped, it would melt like ordinary ice. I wonder if I can make this lens can fly. Swish plop. He used his arm strength to toss it, and it drew a parabola before falling. Yup, I knew it couldn't fly. I made it to be an ice lens after all so it's natural that it can't fly. Of course, it was a secret that he was feeling depressed internally. Then, next will finally be an ice spear, icicle lance. This is the favorite for attack magic using ice. First, the image was important. In his head, he imagined an icicle about 30 centimeters long. Icicle lance! Compared to the generation of the second ice lens, this took considerably longer. After 10 minutes, after 15 minutes, it finally took shape. All right, just as imagined. Then fly. Swish plop. Ah. Uh. He used his arm strength to throw it, and it drew a parabola before falling. I imagined it flying but maybe it was not enough. Shooting the water ball from his hand allowed it to fly for about 10 meters. But then why didn't the icicle lance fly? The ice lance is heavier? But the water ball was about the size of my head so the weight should be about the same. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe I will find out after trying a few times. Water ball. From chanting to launching, it became much faster after repeated practice. Initially, it took about five seconds from chanting to launch, but after dozens of practice, he could now fire after around one second. The distance also seemed to have extended further from the initial 10 meters. The power was the same as the start. So, I've gotten used to it. Well, water ball worked well from the start. Now, it will be icicle lance based on that. I'll try firing the ice lance from my right hand like the water ball. He adjusted his breathing and chanted. Icicle lance! Swish plop. The instant it shot from his right hand, it fell to the ground. Icicle lance! Swish plop. It was the same no matter how many times he tried. The time taken to generate the spear has become much shorter but why can't I get it to fly? He had probably released dozens of icicle lances. The time from generation to launch had been reduced to about a minute. Then, the time came. Ah, uh, I'm losing consciousness. It was the same magical power depletion as yesterday. While staggering, Rio reached his bed and let go of his consciousness again. WMV1C0003 Chapter 0003 Ice Formation the fourth day after arriving at, Phi. He still could not decipher the icicle lance even after a night's sleep. In fact, there was an even more urgent issue in the morning. He was hungry. Thinking back, he had only eaten dried meat since he was reincarnated. Furthermore, he basically only ate lunch. Rio was by no means a large eater, but he was a healthy 19-year-old. His stomach would growl if he ate too little. If he died of starvation despite Michael, pseudonym, preparing two months' worth of food for him, he wouldn't know what kind of face to make if he gets reincarnated again and sees Michael's, pseudonym, face. He first headed to the storage. After passing through the door, it was cold as a cold room. Probably due to the inner walls made of ice. Those were probably made with water attribute magic but, the ice Rio makes would begin melting once he stops channeling magical power through it. But the inner wall made of ice in the storage showed no signs of melting at all. Was Michael's pseudonym, magical power reaching this place? Or did this embody a higher aptitude in water attribute that Rio had not seen? Either possibility was interesting. He will one day solve that mystery, but first he had to satisfy his hunger. He could first eat the dried meat but as expected, after four days, he wanted to eat something else. Right, that would be roast meat. 
there were frozen beasts and monster meat lined up in the storage. Rabbit, boar, and chicken-like meats, and they have been dismantled, butchered, and lined up nicely. These meats have been through dismantling. I believe Michael, pseudonym, prepared this. In other words, he's saying that I can obtain edible meat if I dismantle them this way. Michael, pseudonym, is such a capable man. While thanking him for his consideration, he took down two pieces of what looked like rabbit thigh meat. They are really frozen solid. I wonder if I can melt them. It would be great if they would naturally start melting once they leave the storage. Rio exited the storage shed with meats in both hands. Then, he placed them in the pail. The all-purpose pail. Sunlight from the slowly climbing sun illuminated both lumps of meat. However, they didn't seem to be melting at all. Is he telling me to defrost them myself as a water attribute magician? Holding his right hand over one of the frozen meats, he formed an image in his head. He imagined breaking the bonds of the water molecules in the ice that covered the meat. Eh? I feel like I'm being repelled. He couldn't peel off the bonds between the water molecules. And he didn't just fail to do so. Rio could sense clear feedback in his head. Is this because it isn't ice I made myself? There's a rejection because Michael made it? But there was no way he would give up that easily. He couldn't live without eating. In the first place, since Michael, pseudonym, prepared it, it should be able to melt and eat. After all, Michael is a capable man. So it should be doable. I'll do it without rushing. He didn't aim to melt the entire piece at one go but focused on a single location. He felt himself concentrate his magical power on that location and broke the bond between the molecules. Next, he broke the bonds next to it. And next to that. And next to that. The eyes at the places where the bonds were broken turned into water. Finally, after around 15 minutes, he defrosted a piece of rabbit thigh meat. Even after taking that much time, the other piece of frozen meat remained rock solid and didn't show any signs of melting. Michael's magic is amazing. Let's experiment on the other frozen piece. I wonder what will happen if I directly roasted Michael's ice. He prepared firewood and black palm bark in the yard. Then, he brought the salt that Michael, pseudonym, prepared from the kitchen. Incidentally, of the seasonings prepared by Michael, pseudonym, there was only a large amount of salt. He skewered the thawed thigh meat on a branch and sprinkled it with salt. And then, he made the usual ice lens. Perhaps because he made it multiple times, Initially it took him about 15 minutes just to freeze water but now it only took him 2 minutes to directly create an ice lens. I've gotten quite used to it. It was nice to see his progress in a measurable way. Using the ice lens, he focused the sunlight onto the black palm bark to create fire. He blew on the embers to make it bigger and transferred it to firewood. He then stuck the branch skewered with thigh meat on the ground beside the fire. Then. He held the frozen thigh meat in his hands and held it over the fire. The frozen meat did not show any signs of melting even above a fire. This is quite a surreal scene. Conclusion Meat frozen by Michael, pseudonym, does not melt even when roasted over a fire. The thigh meat skewered on a stick had roasted nicely during the time he took to reach that conclusion. Thank you for the meal. He finally had a decent meal for the first time on his fourth day. It was so delicious it made him want to cry. Or rather, Rio ate while actually crying. Rio used the same method to melt the other frozen thigh meat and roasted it before eating comfortably. He thought about what he should achieve today. First would be Icicle Lance. He still had no clue why it didn't fly. He didn't get a flash of inspiration because he didn't have all the information. He wouldn't get an answer even if he thought about it for a long time. In that case, he should try something else and wait for the information he needed to solve it. Time was limited after all. He was already quite used to ice formation. But if for example, he wanted to use it while in battle with monsters, 
it would probably still be difficult. It took one minute from the formation of the icicle lance to launch. Although it still couldn't fly either. The formation of ice lens took two minutes. Either one had a significant reduction in formation time compared to when he initially made them. But more. He had to shorten it even further. When fighting monsters, he was putting his life on the line. There was no room for compromise. He had to be proficient to the level of completing the formation in one second. Rio made that decision and started practice. He tried creating all kinds of ice. An icicle shape like for an icicle lance. It was an ice spear of about two meters in length. Ice sheet, ice pillar, ice wall, and such. He noticed something during that time. The way to make hard ice? Even on Earth, there were hard ice and ice that were hard to melt. By removing the air within the water, it would become difficult to melt. That could be achieved by first boiling the water to expel the air within before freezing it. Now, how should Rio form his ice to produce harder ice? When freezing, it would be more solid if he excluded the air. To achieve that, he tried freezing from inside out. Normally, when water freezes, it would freeze from outside in. As such, the air contained inside water would solidify inside the water and form bubbles. However, he could form ice using magic. So he could just freeze from within. Ice formed that way would probably be harder than the ice made without any thought put into it. Rio firmly believed so. For lunch, he had the usual dried meat as he earnestly repeated the formation of ice. Forming with his right hand, forming with his left hand, or even forming using his feet, he practiced while assuming as many situations as possible. While he was absorbed in doing so, he suddenly noticed that the sun was setting and it was reaching evening. I have to enter the bath. He ate, took a bath, and once again repeated magic training. Such a cultured life. Rio was happy. The fifth day he came to, Phi. Today, he tried reviewing what he learned up to today. In the morning, he took out rabbit thigh meat from the storage just like yesterday and roasted it to eat. Thawing the meat, lighting a fire, roasting, eating, it went smoothly. And as a continuation from the day before, he created ice. After training for an entire day yesterday, he could now produce an icicle lance in 20 seconds and reduce the creation of the ice lens to 20 seconds as well. But it was still not at the level of being of practical use. Of course, as long as he could not launch the icicle lance, he could not use it for battle but he would never know what kind of skill would protect him in what situation. Furthermore, the creation of ice was likely to be a skill that he would use for this entire life. As such, his goal was to raise it to such a level that he could form ice as naturally as breathing. Ice spear, ice sheet, icicle, ice walls, etc. He would create and melt it, melt it and form, in a perpetual cycle of repetition. Wholeheartedly. During lunch, Rio was chewing on dried meat as usual. In the afternoon, he devoted his time to the formation of ice. Suddenly, when he looked up at the sky, something fell on his cheeks. Rain. He was experiencing the first rainfall since reincarnating to this land. Foo, it's a good time to take a breath and enter the bath. In the home prepared by Michael, pseudonym, there was no such thing as glass windows. There were windows, but they were in the form of hollowed-out walls and could be covered during rain with a wooden board. And there were no lamps in the room. And no fire. Right, it was pitch dark. It wasn't an issue up until yesterday. After all, usually after entering the bath, he would use magic outside until he ran out of magical power. Then, he would return to bed and lose consciousness. The windows were left open and the room was illuminated by moonlight, but he was usually not in the state of mind to recognize it. Today, due to the rain, the windows were shut and there was no moonlight. But it does not affect magic training. He got up from the bath, laid down on the bed, and repeated ice formation which he was doing outside. 
Instead of letting it melt after formation, he made it turn into water vapor in the air. By doing so, he could avoid melting ice that would soak his bed. After repeatedly forming ice yesterday and today, he managed to reduce the time for ice to take shape to five seconds. Just as he realized that, he ran out of magical power tonight as well. Rio let go of his consciousness as he erased the icicle lance. For a week after that, he spent all his time creating ice. The twelfth day since he came to, Phi? Finally, he could create icicle lances almost instantly, in less than a second. However, he still could not launch the icicle lance. That said, he finally had a goal. What goal? Of course, the goal of leaving the barrier. His goal was set but his preparations were not complete. First, he had to secure a means of recovery. The staple of an other-world reincarnation would be potions. The plant materials that act as ingredients for potions were listed in the Plant Encyclopedia, Beginner's Edition? But even though it was listed, Rio was not confident that he could secure the ingredients other than the plants needed. However, leaving the barrier without a means of recovery was reckless and idiotic. Even though it would not heal as much as a potion, some plants could help heal an injury by just grinding it and putting it on a wound. So first he decided to secure those plants within the barrier. If he could do so, then he would plan to leave the barrier the next day. According to the Plant Encyclopedia, Beginner's Edition, the most commonly used method to treat an injury was the wound grass that was aptly named. It seemed that townsfolk regularly use it as getting a potion was difficult. Wound grasses were growing just behind the house. It was so dense that it could be said to be growing en masse. Wonderful. Sometimes having it in easy mode is great too. It would be great if the icicle lance problem could be solved easily too. Rio sighed and complained about something that would anger 80% of the residents in. Fi? That can't use magic. It was a shame that he could not procure inside the barrier the other grass called detoxifying grass that had an antidote effect when brewed and drunk. He would have to look for it when he exited the barrier. Securing flint and detoxifying grass were his first goals. After that, he would identify if it was possible to hunt and procure food. His only physical means of attacking was the knife that Michael, pseudonym, prepared. The knife was considered large, having a 20 centimeters blade, but he would have to get close to his opponent if he wanted to use it as a weapon. To be honest, Rio didn't see himself as capable of doing so at the moment. It would be better if he widened the reach. The length of the spear gives soldiers a sense of security. The king of the sixth heaven realm said that, probably. He made the knife into a spear. That said, he didn't use water attribute magic. He made a physical spear. He used something that looked like bamboo, or rather, it was bamboo no matter how he looked at it, and cut it to the right length. He could use it as a bamboo spear but he had a knife after all so he split the end of the bamboo and slotted the knife there. He wrapped it with ivy that he gathered and tied it tightly so that the knife wouldn't drop. As a final touch, he would secure the knife with ice right before leaving the barrier. Naturally, he did not make a 6 meters long spear just like the Oari soldiers but a 2 meters long spear that was easier to handle. The three Japanese famous spears were the Nihongo that was 3.2 meters long, Otogen which was 3.8 meters long, and Tambo Kiri that was 20 shaka long, or 6 meters long, such lengths were impossible for an amateur to wield. An ice spear could be used as a physical weapon but there was no telling what would happen in battle. He could not say for certain that he could calmly create ice when his life was on the line. For now, let's take today slowly and prepare to leave the barrier tomorrow. Ryo had been depleting his magical power almost every day by using magic before sleeping. One of the reasons was because Michael, pseudonym, mentioned that he could train by practice. Of course, the other reason was to gain experience and reach a point where he could use magic as easily as breathing. However, there was no way to tell if his magical power would completely recover by the time he woke up. 
That was because he could not see his remaining magical power in a quantified manner. With that in mind, he decided to rest for today to allow his body's magical power to recover to its limit before leaving the barrier the next day. He read the Monsters Encyclopedia, Beginner's Edition. Until the day turned dark, ate roasted meat, entered the bath, and slept. Then, he welcomed the morning of the decisive battle. WMV 1C0004 Chapter 0004 Day of Battle The thirteenth day after coming to, Phi? It was finally the day of the decisive battle. He started a fire with experienced hands and ate meat. He slowly ruminated the preparations he made in his head. After finishing his meal, he confirmed the items he would bring. The wound grass had already been ground and frozen into packs using water magic. They were ready to use by just melting them and applying them to any wound. A bamboo spear with a knife as the tip. He had strengthened the part where the knife and spear connect with created ice. That was all. In fact, the items he took to leave the barrier were very limited. His goal was to secure flint and detoxifying grass and to fight a weak monster, if possible, he hoped for a slime. He didn't plan to stray too far. If anything happened, it would be troubling if he was too far and couldn't escape into the barrier quickly. He closed his eyes a little and adjusted his breathing. All right, let's depart. He headed in the direction of southwest. The direction where Michael, pseudonym, told him that there was a beach 500 meters away. There were a couple of kinds of rocks that can be used as flint but Rio was not well versed in it. The only stone that Rio could identify as an amateur was quartz, a stone with a proven track record used as a flint. There were colorless transparent quartz called crystals but the more common opaque white quartz could be found quite easily. A good place to find such stones was at river banks. If there was a sea, there should be rivers connected to it. In that case, he wondered if he could encounter a river along the way to the sea. Well, if this fails, I can set off in the opposite direction next time. This is an adventure in a sense. There's no telling what can happen so it is an adventure. Rio felt a slight sense of resistance as he left the barrier. I guess that sensation was the outer edge of the barrier. As he was within a forest, visibility was poor. He listened carefully and walked slowly while relying on sound. He could hear the sound of birds flapping their wings in the distance. After proceeding about 100 meters outside the barrier, the forest suddenly ended. In front of him was a river that spanned hundreds of meters to the opposite side. Bingo! However, Rio appeared on the top of a cliff. It was a difficult spot to go down to the river to look for flint. I guess I'll continue walking upstream. The river ran from east to west so Rio carefully walked upstream on the cliff. Such a wide river is only a hundred meters away from home. This scenery is a little touching. However, the current Rio couldn't afford to take a leisurely look at the scenery. After a short walk, he was able to get down to the riverbank and quickly found quartz. He decided to give it a quick try to generate sparks. He tried to hit the back of the knife attached to the bamboo spear to the quartz. Spark, spark. Oh, I see sparks. With this, I can make fire even when there is no Sunday. There was no need to linger once he confirmed that. A river was a place for beasts to quench their thirst. There was no telling what would appear. He quickly climbed up the cliff where he came down from and headed in the direction of northeast. If I continue moving north like this, I should appear on the south end of the house barrier. If I head northeast, I should be able to move while having my house to my left. If anything happened, he could quickly dash into his house barrier. As mentioned many times, that was the most important matter to Rio right now. In the first place, he didn't know how strong the monsters in, Phi, were. He was certain that he could defeat slimes, but it wasn't guaranteed that only slimes would appear. He was able to find flint fairly quickly but he couldn't find detoxifying grass no matter how long he looked. 
He constantly moved while keeping the position of the house in mind so he didn't stray too far from the barrier. Well, this is quite difficult. What should I do? Perhaps he was recalling the page on the detoxifying grass in the plant encyclopedia hoping for a hint. At the very least, it was certain that his attention strayed from his surroundings. When he suddenly realized the boar was looking in his direction. Shit! That is a lesser boar. The lesser boar charged in a straight line toward Rio. That was a lesser boar. Charging in his direction. He had to intercept it. Rio's mind was aware of those facts. Even though he was aware, his body did not move. It was the first time he faced the killing intent of a monster head on. It was a clear murderous intent that he had never experienced in his life. Perhaps it was the same principle as a frog that couldn't move when a snake glares at it. Shit, move, move, move! His body finally jumped to the left. Instead of jumping, it may be closer to describe his action as falling to the side. Ugh. When dodging the lesser boar's rush, its fangs lightly scratched Rio's right foot and injured him. However, he couldn't stay down forever. The lesser boar that rushed past him slowed down and stopped before turning around and staring at Rio. In those eyes was clear murderous intent. Or perhaps it was anger that he avoided its rush. Calm down. If it was possible to calm down just by saying that, no one would have a hard time. Rio was not an exception. His heart was pumping like an alarm bell. His mind was blank, well, not completely. Even though that was the case, his body wouldn't move as he wanted. The lesser boy charged once more. Once again, Rio couldn't move as expected. However, even if he couldn't move his body, Rio had magic. His water attribute magic that he has practiced over and over and over again. Hard work will not betray. I spawn. T slash N. Bon equals road in German. In front of Rio to the lesser boar, an ice road about two meters wide was formed. Due to its momentum, the lesser boar slid over the ice toward Rio. It couldn't stop itself on the ice. Icicle Lance 16 Even though the Icicle Lance couldn't fly yet, he could grow them from the ice bond. It was like a line of spears in front of Rio. The 16 spears grew from the ice floor at a 30 degree angle. Without any means to stop, the lesser boar rammed into the mountain of Icicle Lance head on. Guy The skewered lesser boar screamed from the severe pain. But it had not died. But the fear of death that bound Rio was released. He could finally move his body. He held his bamboo spear affixed with a knife. Rio did kendo but of course, he didn't know how to use a spear. However, there was no need to think about it so much. He just needed to stab. Face, neck, groin. He stabbed over and over again. He could move his body now but that didn't mean that he was calm. He stabbed with the bamboo spear with all his might. Again and again and again. He probably stabbed a couple of dozen times. Rio finally realized that the lesser boar was no longer moving. I won! That day, Rio defeated a monster for the first time. I have to quickly leave this place. There was no telling what might be attracted by the scent of blood. Rio summoned his energy and stood up. The problem was the lesser boar's corpse. It looked heavy. So how should I carry this? Of course, leaving it there was not an option. It was his first hunt. Rio decided that he would eat lesser boar meat tonight. The barrier shouldn't be far. It was at most a hundred meters. That was when he suddenly saw the ice bond that the lesser boar slid on. Could I pull the lesser boar if I spread ice below it? If he laid down ice bond until the barrier, it shouldn't be difficult for him to pull on his own. With just a little adjustment, he created a path of ice below the lesser boar and pulled. Oh, it's super easy this way. He could easily pull the lesser boar that seemed close to 200 kilograms with a single hand. 
Then, he passed through the barrier and arrived in front of his house. I'm finally, home. There stood a young man who had exhausted all his energy and willpower. Although he didn't get any detoxifying grass, he obtained flint, won his fight battle, and net a lesser bore. Those were sufficient results. WMV1C0005 Chapter 0005 Various Goals The fourteenth day since coming to, Phi? Last night, he enjoyed the thigh meat of lesser boar. The other parts he froze in ice and placed in the storage. After one night, he calmly looked back on yesterday's battle and broke into a cold sweat. The lesser boar was as its lesser name implied, the weakest of boar-type monsters. Of course, it was more troublesome compared to slime or lesser rabbit but due to its brutal charge, it would be impossible for ordinary farmers or hunters to defeat it alone. Nevertheless, it was listed as the weakest rank in the Monster Encyclopedia, Beginner's Edition? But I'm glad my first enemy was the lesser boar. There was a chance of encountering even stronger foes so I was lucky. Rio was an optimistic person. Although he could not launch the icicle lance, he could use it as a line of spears. But even if he could use it, it used himself as the decoy to attract the enemy. Because of that, he would take immeasurable damage if it failed. What if the monster's speed exceeded Rio's expectations? What if there was a foe that wouldn't slip on ice? Also, it would be useless if he was attacked from the sky. As expected, since he could finally use magic, he wanted to secure a method to safely hunt from afar. Hunting on the edge every time would be too mentally draining. The water ball could be launched but not the icicle lance. After trying all kinds of theories, he concluded that water could be launched but ice could not. They were both formed using water attribute magic. Water ball was, probably, made by gathering the moisture in the air and then launching it. Icicle lance was, probably, made by gathering the moisture in the air, freezing it, and then launching it. HN? Icicle lance has an extra step? Don't tell me that. At my current ability, I can only use two-step processes. He decided to prepare water first then try the freeze and launching steps separately. It would be bad if something happened to the pail so he made an ice bowl and stored water in it. Placing his right hand over the ice bowl, he imagined in his head. The image of the water freezing and launching along with the ice bowl. Icicle Lance! Whoosh! Although it wasn't a spear, the frozen water stuck to the ice bowl flew about ten meters. All right, success! Something that didn't work for dozens of days was resolved in an instant. So that's the reason. The answer came quickly once I realized the important information. In this case for Rio, instead of obtaining the necessary information, he acquired flint, concluded a battle outside the barrier, and came to this realization after relieving his mental stress. But it was a fact that he solved the problem so it was probably fine. I understand the reason. For now, it seems that it is not possible to perform three steps at once. Perhaps I will be able to do so after I am more proficient in water magic. It would be great if I can. It seemed that he won't be able to launch ice for some time. In that case, water will have to be his means of long-range attacks. Now that I think about it, I have not tested the water jet recently. The water jet that he practiced hard on the third day of coming to, Phi, but was only able to focus it into the strength of a car wash hose and concluded that it could not be used for attacking. With creating ice, I've come to understand how to handle water magic so I'm sure it will be better than last time. With his right hand raised forward, he made a mental image of a water jet. Water jet. Sure. Compared to before, the stream of water was much thinner and more vigorous. There's progress. Next, he tried firing at the tree at the edge of the barrier. Sure crack. It still could not cut the tree, but the spot it hit was slightly gouged out. This could work as long as I practice. Rio once again started practicing water jet. Four days from then, 
real practice water jet all day. Of course, he made sure to eat a proper breakfast and enter the bath. He ate roasted meat for breakfast. Right, roasted meat in the morning. Breakfast is important after all. His lunch was mostly dried meat. And he entered the bath at night. As for dinner, he always thought of practicing water jet a little before preparing but end up depleting his magical power and going to bed directly, without having dinner. Perhaps that was why he always wanted to have a proper meal for breakfast the next day. The result of four days of practice on water jet was that its power had certainly increased. But although it increased, it could not compare at all to the water jets on earth. He was able to gouge deeper into the tree trunk and was able to focus the jet into a smaller stream. But it was still far from the image of cutting. However, he acquired the skill to hit the spot he aims for with pinpoint accuracy. If it was a stationary target 10 meters ahead, he would hit it without an error of 1 millimeter. There's no telling when it will come in handy. Right, I have to train to be able to shoot multiple jets at once, not only one. Rio said and continued his training once more. A positive mental attitude will save him. His goal was to hunt safely. Obtaining food every day by putting your life on the line was not a slow life. Becoming able to hunt safely and leaving the barrier was part of life too. Once he was able to do so, Rio wanted to expand his diet. Currently, he could only eat monster meat seasoned with salt and roasted or dried meat. He wanted some other flavor, right, he wanted to have some fruits eventually. In the Plant Encyclopedia Beginner's Edition, pepper was called pepper, too, and could be found in Phi. After living here for about two weeks, Rio felt that it was a location similar to that between the Tropic of Cancer and Equator on Earth. From the direction of the vortex when water flows, it seemed that he was in the northern hemisphere. The height of the sun and the humidity meant that he was close to the equator. In that case, there should be spices. Although there were hundreds of kinds of spices, Rio only knew pepper, red pepper, Japanese pepper, and ginger. He was never very knowledgeable about cooking in the first place so that couldn't be helped. Among them, he had personally seen the trees where pepper grows from. They would grow in a bunch like grapes. I can probably identify that inside the forest. Well, he would only be able to get his hands on it after he can leave the barrier with more peace of mind. WMV1C0006 Chapter 0006 Assassin Hawk The 21st day after coming to Phi Rio was hunting outside the barrier. His target was a lesser rabbit. A monster that resembles a rabbit. It would hop unpredictable to close in on the target before biting their throats. That was the lesser rabbit's movement pattern. Rio's aim was the moment the lesser rabbit hops. At that instant, he shot water jets concurrently from the left and right side at its hind legs. It was not powerful enough to pierce the legs but it would lose its balance when it lands and he could prevent its next jump. Then, while approaching it, he would aim the water jets at both its eyes. If he could do so, he would then pierce it with his knife-tipped bamboo spear and end its life. So, Rio finally established a safe way of hunting. Against lesser rabbits. His other foe was the lesser boar that he encountered the first time he left the barrier. From then, he encountered lesser boars countless times, but this method did not work against them. The reason was simple. It was possible to snipe the exposed hind legs of the lesser rabbits when they are jumping but the hind legs of the lesser boars couldn't be sniped at when they are charging forward. In that case, he could aim for the front legs with water jet but they could apparently use their hind legs to leap forward for the last three meters. He was able to leap to the side at the last moment, but it revived the nightmare of his first encounter with the lesser boars. After that, it was a bitter memory where he finally calmed down after shooting water jets frantically at its legs, eyes, and everything he could see. From then on, he reverted to the original hunting method of ice bond plus icicle lance and dealing the final strike with his knife-tipped bamboo spear. 
That method was the most suitable because the lesser bore would always charge in a straight line forward. In any case, it was now relatively safe to hunt the lesser rabbits and lesser boars that appear around the house. Lately, Ryo's schedule was he would hunt outside the barrier in the morning and practice magic inside the barrier in the afternoon. He still could not launch the icicle lance, and water jet was still not powerful enough to penetrate the target. Nevertheless, the hunting success from every day planted a seed of peacefulness in Ryo's heart. Peace is the platform for the next step. By Mihara Ryo. The next step was of course the enrichment of his food. That food enrichment referred to his aim to obtain fruits and seasoning other than salt. In general, clothing, food, and housing were the fundamentals of life. Among them, housing was the home and barrier prepared by Michael, pseudonym, and was rock solid. Then clothing, he was no longer wearing the clothes he had when he transferred to, Phi. He kept those in a safe place. In frozen storage. Currently, Rio was wearing tanned leather from lesser boar skin. Right, Rio was performing tanning. As it was amateur work and he had only seen it on blogs and videos on Earth, the result was quite mediocre but... First, he peeled the skin of the lesser boar. Then, he washed the peeled fur carefully. Wash. Wash. He was living up to his worth as a water attribute magician. After washing and drying, he stripped off the meat and fat on the inside of the skin. In the case of the lesser boar, he could peel them off piece by piece by hand. All that remained would be the dermis, or the part called collagen. All that was left was tanning by allowing the tanning agent to bind and stabilize the material, but the problem was that tannin agent. On Earth, the mainstream tanning agent was called chromium. Of course, he didn't have it. He didn't even know how to make it. The other mainstream agent was tannin. It was the astringent component of wine and was derived from plants, but he didn't know what kind of plants he can get it from. In the first place, tanning was written as tanning. To soften the leather. That was the essence of tanning. In that case, what would happen if it was not done? It would rot and dry and turn hard. Rotting and hard clothes wasn't something he wanted. To prevent that, the skin is preserved in chromium and tannin. Right, basically tanning was preserving the skin but... Rio knew. There was a method to preserve without tanning. Smoke tanning, he saw a video on it before. That said, he only recalled them burning some leaves to produce smoke but he couldn't remember what leaves they were. Well, any plant-derived smoke would work yeep. In addition to the usual firewood, he gathered lush leaves from the surrounding trees. Then, he made a fire. Igniting a fire was now his forte. He kept the fire from getting too strong by putting lush leaves and green grass into the fire to generate a large amount of smoke. For example, smoke from smoking would normally be from the burning of sakura chips or some other kind of wood but this was an expression of Ryo's sloppiness where he felt that any plant-derived smoke might work the same. If he did it in a residential area, he would definitely receive complaints. Lately in Japan, there have been cases where policemen went down to fields to jot down names. It has become a difficult world. That said on, Phi, nobody was living around Ryo's home, probably. The skin of the lesser boar was hung on a bamboo construct like a drying futon. He tried smoking for half a day. The next day, the smoke tanned lesser boar skin, no, it could be called leather. He first washed that leather. Smoke tanning wasn't intended to allow the odor of smoke to seep into the leather. After washing the leather, he finally spread it thinly and evenly with an ice roller. Right, this was the true calling of a water attribute magician. The completed lesser bore leather was about the size of a table tennis table. For now, he cut the part to be used as a waist cloth with a knife. He turned the remaining scrap leather into thin strings. He didn't have thread in the first place after all. That was how Rio, wrapped in lesser bore leather around his waist, was born. Peeling the skin off a monster you hunt and tanning it, 
This is a stereotypical slow life. The definition of slow life differed by the individual. Lesser bore leather, waistcloth equip. Lesser bore leather, sandals equip. He wasn't wearing anything apart from that. If he was in Japan, he would have been reported immediately. I actually wanted to make something like a tunic but, as expected of leather not made by an actual craftsman, it doesn't seem that durable. Ryo muttered while tapping the lesser bore leather. HN? If it's durability, can't I just generate ice on the surface of the leather? No, in the first place, I don't even need a chest tunic and can just directly form an ice armor? No, that would be too cold and might even stop my heart. I want to eventually be able to automatically generate an ice shield for defense when receiving attacks. Fufufu. I want to try saying fool, such an attack would never reach me, or something like that. Men would always have Chunibyu no matter how old they are. Once the clothing and housing parts were settled, naturally the final aim was to enrich his food. He aimed to acquire fruits and new flavors. The question was which direction to set off for. From home, the sea was about 500 meters in the southwest direction. Michael, pseudonym, said that. To the south was a flowing river. A river that spans hundreds of meters to the opposite bank. The river where he found the flint. In the east, he first fought the lesser boar and after that, it became the important hunting ground for lesser rabbits. However, he has not traveled far from the barrier. In that case, he had not set foot toward the north at all. There's a chance I can find it nearby in the north. Let's go. Apart from his waistcloth and sandals, he carried his usual knife-tip bamboo spear and jute bag. He couldn't tell if that jute bag was actually made from jute but it was one of the two bags that Michael, pseudonym, used to keep the dried meat in the storage. It would be meaningless if he found fruit but don't have a bag to bring it home. He could only use what he had available. For now, he kept all the dried meat that was in it inside the storage. That jute bag was the kind of jute bag used to carry coffee beans. Since I am between the Tropic of Cancer and the Equator, I wonder if there is a coffee tree? He noticed that there was no coffee tree listed in the Plant Encyclopedia, Beginner's Edition. Even if he could gather coffee beans, there was the problem of how to brew them but... For now, enriching his food with drinks wasn't a bad idea either. Let's set out. Even though he was heading in the direction of north, it didn't mean that the vegetation would change compared to the east or south. Well, it would be troubling if he encounters a frigid place where cold wind blows as soon as he goes north. That would have been very fantasy-like though. Immediately after he left, he found something that resembled a fig. I recall this is called the Chizuku in the plant encyclopedia. It's written that it can be eaten. Tn, fig in Japanese is a chijiku. For now, he took one and ate it. There's a good balance of sourness and sweetness. That was the first time the flavor of fruit was spreading across his mouth since coming to the other world. He put about ten ripe chizuku in the jute bag. It would be great if I can find all kinds of things like this. After that, he walked around the area for an hour but couldn't find any other fruit. There's no helping it, I should step foot a little further north. At the moment, he was about 200 meters from the barrier. He had no experience of leaving the barrier further than that in all directions. But he was planning to extend further eventually. He was just setting foot a little earlier than planned. But Rio was not able to proceed further. It was not a calculated act. He didn't think but he sensed it. He fell prone to the ground. Something invisible suddenly passed over Ryo's head after he crouched down. Something was flapping in the direction from where the invisible something came from. A bird? That bird flapped its wings strongly. Then, he couldn't see it with his eyes but he heard the sound of something slicing through the air. He dodged to the side. Is that wind magic? A monster that can manipulate wind and a bird form. An invisible wind attribute long-range attack magic. 
the so-called air slash or sonic. Yup, I can't beat that. He made a quick judgment. Ice wall, you shape. It was an ice wall that Rio devised for protection. He created a wall about one meter thick and two meter high in front and to his left and right. A defensive wall meant for retreating backward. When he started running toward his house, the ice wall followed right behind Rio. In reality, Rio was channeling magic into it to move it according to his movement speed but when viewed from the side, it looked like the wall was following him. 200 meters to the barrier, I have to somehow dash all the way. But after running about 100 meters, the ice wall shattered. What? After receiving three shots of the invisible wind attribute attack magic, it couldn't withstand it any longer and shattered. It would be impossible to run the remaining 100 meters and escape while showing his back. Rio had no choice but to turn around and confront it. He could see the bird a lot clearer than before. Assassin Hawk, its main weapons are the invisible wind attribute long-range attack magic air slash and its assault that approaches the speed of sound using its beak and claw. He inadvertently recited the contents he memorized from the Monster Encyclopedia, Beginner's Edition? but he couldn't think of any method to confront it. He couldn't use the ice bond plus icicle lance that worked against the lesser boars. Using water jet like how he dealt with lesser rabbits, maybe. Maybe he could snipe the base of its wings to hinder its movements a little? A good plan must be acted on immediately without hesitation. Water jet. The opponent was a monster with the wisdom to manipulate magic. No chant was better. The fired water jet pierced the target accurately. Right, it pierced, the air. It didn't hit the assassin hawk's body. It seemed that its speed that exceeds the speed of sound can be utilized not only for attacking straight, but also for dodging enemy attacks. In that case, I will suppress with numbers. Water Jet 32 From Rio's right hand, 32 water jets was shot forth simultaneously and headed toward the assassin hawk. But when the water jets pierced the space where the assassin hawk was, the assassin hawk was no longer there. It moved far to the side and diagonally forward to the right of Rio. That's bad. Rio couldn't tell but he jumped and rolled to the left. Immediately after, the place Rio was on exploded. It was the assassin hawk's charge. He somehow managed to avoid it, and the assassin hawk was now right next to Rio. He thrust the knife-tip bamboo spear in his right hand toward the assassin hawk. Stab. Gee. He felt the response of cutting something. At the same time, the assassin hawk's cry deafened him. That instant, his eyes definitely met the assassin hawk's. Its right eye was bleeding and could not open. His knife-tip bamboo spear seemed to have injured its right eye. The remaining left eye was glaring at him with immense hatred. Normally emotion in a bird's eye was not so easily read like fine glasswork, but the assassin hawk's eye at that time was definitely full of hatred. Ice Wall Package An ice wall was formed like a box from above to cover the assassin hawk in front of him. However, as expected of the assassin hawk, even though it was injured, its agility was still there. It took a distance from Rio before the ice wall could form. Then, it glanced at Rio before leaving. Rio felt like he heard a voice telling him that it will kill him the next time. Rio couldn't move for a while even after the assassin hawk was gone. This time was dangerous. He firmly checked his condition and injuries as he headed to the barrier. How should I confront that? Difficult problems were pouring in one after the other. A slow life in Rondo Forest was quite challenging. WMV1C0007 Chapter 0007 Magic Range Magic seemed to have somewhat of an effective range. Currently, Rio's range was roughly about a radius of 15 meters around him. He could not channel his magical power beyond that. For example, even if he launches a water ball, it would lose its ability to float and fall to the ground once it passes 15 meters. Before it reaches 15 meters away, 
He seemed to be able to control it to some extent as though there was a thread of magical power connected to it. Thinking back as to how the water ball would fall after 10 meters, he was able to verify that the effective range would be extended. That said, the water ball wasn't fast and its attack power was weak so Ryo could not use it as an attack spell. Even the ice spawn that Ryo used when hunting the lesser boar could only be generated up to 15 meters in front of Ryo. It could only manifest starting from Ryo. It was not possible to create an ice bond directly underneath the feet of a lesser boar 15 meters away. Suddenly creating a water ball in a space 15 meters away was impossible. But what if he could do it? Forming a 3 meter radius ice bond underneath a lesser boar 10 meters away, just that alone would render the lesser boar immobile due to the slippery surface. At the moment, Rio's greatest means of attack was the water jet. That was a straight line attack originating from Rio toward the opponent too. In a sense, that made it relatively easy to avoid. Since the trajectory of the attack was just a straight line. Sure, avoiding the fast water jet was pretty difficult but, that assassin hawk dodged it. Furthermore, water jet 32 was Rio's hidden trump card. Firing 32 water jets at the same time. An all direction surface suppression even though they were fired at a slight angle to achieve, but it still managed to move out of the effective range. There was still room for improvement. While enriching his food was an attractive prospect, there were still monsters that Ryo could not win against at his current stage. And it could be found very close by. He had to become even stronger. Since everything would be over once he dies. He would hunt in the eastern forest once every two days in the morning. Hunt one lesser rabbit or lesser boar. On days when he doesn't go hunting or on rainy days, he would read the Monster Encyclopedia, Beginner's Edition, in the morning diligently. Since he didn't know when, where or what kind of monster he would encounter. It would be too pathetic if he couldn't cope with the new monsters because he didn't read up on them. Apart from that, he would train magic. He was practicing creating water and ice away from him. As expected, he could not immediately create them 10 meters away from him. He extended his right arm. He cast a water ball in front of him, forming a water ball 10 centimeters away from his palm. His goal was to extend that distance to 15 meters or even further. That training seemed that it would take a long time as well. Nevertheless, just because it felt like it would take a long time didn't mean that he shouldn't do it. When he was practicing outside, he would always incorporate the practice of firing a water jet from a point away from him. By doing so, he could practice both creating it away from him and improving its power. Growth only progressed in tiny steps. But Rio was happy to see the result of his growth. As it was directly connected to his survival, he had to do it regardless of whether it made him happy or not. That was a fact but humans are not that strong-willed. Instead, having visible results from effort would have a great impact on motivation. It was more related to emotions than reasoning. Half of the humankind's drive comes from emotions. Whether that half can be moved was crucial in getting good results. Rio knew about that regardless of being a person who leaned on the side of reasoning. Rio was not a genius, nor was he a talented person, but he knew the importance of hard work. That came from his emotional side, rather than his rational side. For a person like him, the effort didn't bother him at all. The change came suddenly. On the day he goes hunting. He was hunting for lesser rabbits or lesser boars in the eastern forest. Of course, there was a chance of encountering monsters other than those two types. But he had not experienced it other than the encounter with the assassin hawk in the northern forest. The northern and eastern forests were connected and it wasn't such a large distance so he naturally considered the possibility of the assassin hawk appearing in the eastern forest. However, he encountered a different monster today. Greater Boar the greater species of the normal boar that is the greater species of the lesser boar. Capable of shooting stone gravel as a long-range earth attribute attack magic. 
and the speed of its charge was close to the speed of sound. Although there was a difference of wind in earth and sky and ground, its characteristics were similar to the assassin hawk. But it was huge. Its length was about seven meters. Its head was around three meters above the ground. Something that large would charge at subsonic speeds. It was a nightmare. I'd die if I get hit. I was hit by a truck and died on Earth, but isn't that even faster? Since kinetic energy was determined by mass and speed, a greater bore that charges at subsonic speed produced destructive power that is incomparable to the trucks on Earth. By visual estimations, it was about the size of a dump truck. The greater bore was so large that even though it was about 20 meters away from Rio, the perspective seemed strange due to its appearance. Icicle Lance 16 First, 16 icicle lances formed at a 30 degrees angle from the ground to intercept its charge. That would prevent the subsonic charge. The greater bore fired two stone gravels while slowly approaching. Ice Shield 2 Two shields about the size of tennis rackets made of ice formed in front of Rio and disappeared after the gravels that were shot over collided with them. Go. He wasn't sure if it was to intimidate or a cry of frustration. But the greater boar cried out. Immediately after, more than twenty stone gravels manifested around the greater boar. That's way too many. Ice wall. Rio chose a wall instead of a shield to prevent all the attacks from the front. The greater boar shot the stone gravels immediately after that. The stone gravels that flew toward Rio shattered the icicle lances before causing cracks on the ice wall. Rio jumped to his left at once. Almost the same time as the stone gravels landed, the greater boar charged. Charging in at the same time as using skills, are you some knight with a sacred sword technique? It was a technique that appeared in Rio's favorite comic. If I were a wind attribute magician, I could form three other bodies and shoot sonic blades before following up with a charge assault. But that was impossible for Rio. The greater boar shattered the icicle lances with stone gravels and shattered the ice wall with its body charge. It passed Rio by from the momentum of crushing the ice wall and turned around to face him after about 15 meters. You shouldn't have stopped there. I spawn. He formed a floor of ice with the greater boar in the middle. A radius of about three meters around the greater boar became a floor of ice, and the space between it and Rio was an ice floor as well. The greater boar failed to stand on the ice and fell over many times. It probably never experienced walking on ice before in its lifetime. The Rondo Forest was warm after all. Icicle Lance 16 Even after that much practice, he still could not shoot the icicle lances forward. However, after becoming able to form them away from himself, he found a new way of using them. Sixteen icicle lances formed eighteen meters above the greater boar with their center of gravity placed near their tips. Then they fell. Jaya. The icicle lances pierced the greater boar one after another from its neck to its back, except for its head. Due to the greater boar's characteristic to favor charging, its entire head, including its nose, was extremely sturdy. An ordinary sword would not be able to pierce it. That was how it was able to break through Rio's ice wall. However, its body other than its head wasn't as sturdy. It was similar to that of the lesser boar and may only be slightly tougher than a regular boar. Rio aimed for that. I'm glad I read the Monster Encyclopedia. But the hide is now full of holes and no longer usable. WMV1C0008 Sorry for the slow release. My main translation project growth cheat is kicking up again so water magician translations would slow down slightly but it is still ongoing. Thank you for understanding. Chapter 0008 Northern Forest Expedition Second Team Now, the second team for the Northern Forest Expedition is here. Rio declared to nobody but he was determined. This time I will fulfill my food enrichment. The previous time, he went to the northern forest to enrich his food but the assassin hawk blocked his progress. 
The assassin hawk hunted just as its name assassin implied, killing its prey even before it was noticed. It would fire an invisible wind magic air slash from a blind spot in the air. Ryo was able to dodge the first attack of the assassin hawk the other time by pure coincidence. This time, was he ready for the assassin hawk? I can't win yet so I will withdraw immediately if I meet it. It sounded like he had not made any progress since his last encounter but that was not the case. Now, he should be able to retreat with more leeway than before, maybe. His inability to defeat it was a matter of compatibility. The greater boar was not inferior to the assassin hawk in terms of strength. However, the difference in how Ryo was able to beat the greater boar and not the assassin hawk was dependent on whether he can impair the movements of his enemy. Once the greater boar enters Ryo's effective magic range, he could stop its movements using ice spawn. However, he could not do that with the assassin hawk that flew in the air. Even when he tried to surround the assassin hawk with ice wall package the previous time, it was able to escape. The basis of Ryo's hunting style was to block the movement of his enemy and then attack it. At present, without a means to hinder the assassin hawk's movements, it was an enemy with the worst compatibility with him. And so, he decided on retreat on encounter. Regardless of the assassin hawk, I gathered a Chizuku, Fig, the previous time. The last time I gathered a Chizuku that was about to be ripe so it would be great if I can find something else like pepper. His equipment was a waist cloth made of lesser boar leather, sandals, a knife tip bamboo spear, and a hemp bag. His usual set of expedition gear. Immediately after leaving the barrier to the north, he reached the location where he picked the Ichizuka the last time and found freshly ripe Ichizuka figs. Yup, it's a great haul. He stored ten Ichizuku in his hemp bag and headed further north. Then, he arrived at the location where he was attacked by the assassin hawk the other time. About 200 meters from the barrier. I was attacked here the last time. But it looks like it is not here this time. After looking around carefully, he noticed that at that spot, the dense forest was slightly interrupted and there was not much overlapping of trees. In other words, it was a suitable place to attack from the sky. I didn't notice at all the previous time. I guess that was my limit. He advanced further north while maintaining vigilance of his surroundings. By the time he reached around 500 meters from the barrier, he finally got his hands on it. It really exists. This green exterior looks like a pepper. A green pepper the size of a Delaware grape soaked with some liquids so that seeds don't stick to them. Rio would have been scolded severely if he told that to grape or bell pepper farmers as they were not similar at all. He picked one and bit into it. A peppery and spicy scent filled his mouth and nasal cavity. Typically this would be harvested while still green and dried over time until it turned black and become black pepper. However, in Southeast Asia on Earth, they use these pepper while still green and fry them with chicken meat and such. Nevertheless, it was the first time Rio tasted it while it was in its green form. All right, time to harvest. He packed the pepper into his hemp bag until it was about half full when combined with the Ichizuku. If it was the age of discovery, that alone would have been a fortune. Although the initial goal has been reached, let's try going further. After advancing another 300 meters, a wetland spread across his view. When speaking of wetlands, lizard men comes to mind. Unfortunately, there were no lizard men in the wetlands. Well, if there were, I would have no choice but to run away with all my might. They would probably be better at handling water magic than I can now. The lizardman's racial characteristic was extremely high compatibility with water attribute magic. On, fi, lizard men can't communicate with humans so they were not considered as intelligent monsters? A human that approaches a wetland would be attacked without questions by lizard men. It seems a little difficult to skirt around this wetland and go further north. A bamboo spear on his right hand, a hemp bag on his left hand. There was the important pepper inside the hemp bag. 
if ever the pepper fell into the wetland or it got dirty with mud. I guess I should be satisfied with getting this far this time. Rio decided to return home after spitting out lines like a Yakuza from somewhere. However, at that moment, he suddenly noticed a plant growing in the wetland. He looked once and moved his sight away, before looking again with a startled expression. It looks similar. Of course, the plants were a lot taller than what Rio remembered. And they spread to the side. Its fruit would fall apart immediately when touched. The color was also a little dark. But nevertheless, it was probably that. Rice, right? It was native rice that was not cultivated by anyone. Rio had heard about wild rice before. Even on modern Earth, there were quite a few areas in Southeast Asia and India where wild rice grew naturally. But he wondered if such a convenient development could actually happen. Rice plants, or rice, were something that could only be found eventually after getting used to life after reincarnation to a certain degree and going through tons of trouble to search about half the world. Right, that was the classic development. First, one would encounter black hard bread. Then it would be white soft bread. Then finally, one would encounter rice. Despite that. In any case, I'll think about it later. For now, I should harvest it and bring it home. If looked closely, one would see the wild rice growing in a fairly wide area in the wetlands. With the knife he removed from the bamboo spear, he cut off the ear of the rice and placed them in the hemp bag. In the end, he harvested the rice until the hemp bag was almost full and ran home so that he wouldn't be attacked and lose the great harvest he obtained today. When Rio arrived home, he first made an ice box. The ice made by Rio's water attribute magic seems to be able to receive and channel magical power from Rio automatically so it usually does not melt. If he consciously cut the magical power line where the magical power flows then it would melt like ordinary ice. And so there were quite a few ice boxes made by Rio in the house. The amount of magical power used to maintain it seemed to be insignificant and had not hindered his life in any way. The ice box this time was about the size of a large suitcase and he placed the pepper he harvested in it. In addition, he placed the Ichizuku in the hemp bag on the kitchen table. Now, all that remained in the hemp bag were the wild rice. First things first, these rice, can they be eaten? Normally rice is obtained from threshing the rice ears on the patty. The patty had to be dried well. The taste would not deteriorate easily if stored as patty. If he wanted to grow rice seedlings next year, he could nurture them using these patties. And he could use a threshing machine on the patty before eating to remove the stalks. Only after doing so could he get what the Japanese call rice. And at the moment, Ryo had no such tools. None at all. He thought in his heart that he encountered easy mode when he obtained rice but utilizing it after he obtained it was difficult too. If this was a classic reincarnation tale, there would already be some region or country with the culture of eating rice so this portion would not be difficult. But in this, Phi, Rondo Forest, there was no such culture. In fact, Michael, pseudonym, mentioned that no one lived here except for Rio. Nevertheless, he had to decide on a direction. First, tomorrow let's go to the wetland and secure a little more wild rice. I can try to harvest the entire plant, create paddy fields around the house and transplant them. It seemed that he was already determined to create a paddy field. As for what I harvested today, let's try to somehow extract the rice and cook it. The first was threshing. Obtaining rice from the ears by threshing, from the Edo period to the Taisho period, it was done by historical threshing machines but, it wasn't needed. Inside the hemp bag, the rice ears had fallen off. This was one of the characteristics of wild rice, that the ear would fall off with just a touch. Because of that, it would make harvesting difficult but this time he didn't need to worry about it. Oh, oh, they came off on their own. Lucky. Rio's knowledge of it was just to that extent. The rice that he obtained should normally be dried well. 
In Japan these days, it would be dried in a large dryer for more than 10 hours to remove most of the water. For now, I can set aside the amount I'll eat today and not dry them. Next would be hulling, in other words, peeling off the skin that covers the surface of the rice. He tried doing it grain by grain. The size was around the same size as the rice found in Japan. I recall it is called Japonica rice. I thought it would be indica rice, but if it is similar to Japonica rice, I guess I can cook it the Japanese way. He was quick to jump to conclusions even though he was not even able to hold the rice yet. In current earth, the established theory was that the origin of rice cultivation was in the China Yangtze River Basin more than 10,000 years ago. Of course, it was the aforementioned Japonica rice. It was said that the practice was brought to the West and gave rise to the Indica rice variant and Japonica was the first rice strain to be cultivated. He picked up the rice grain and tried peeling the husk with his nails. It is surprisingly easy to remove. At worst, I just have to peel them one by one. Just how many hours was he planning to spend on hulling rice? Or was this Japanese commitment to rice? Was there any better way to peel the husk? Ryo pondered. The methods Ryo could use were limited to water attribute magic. Among them, ice would probably be the most applicable. Then he remembered the ice roller that he used when tanning the lesser boar skin. That time, he used it to press the tanned leather to soften it. This time, he would be using it to peel instead of press. He wondered if by using two ice rollers and increasing the number of revolutions, could he peel the husk through the momentum when he put the rice grains between the rollers? He made the ice rollers with water attribute magic and made them rotate in the air. It should be possible if he was able to control the magic well. The rollers were ready. He placed an ice box at the end where the hulled rice would fly toward. First, he tried to pass five grains through the roller. Gary. The husks were peeled off. They were peeled but, the rice was crushed too. We will, it shouldn't affect the taste even if it is crushed. After that, he continued to pass the rice through the rollers. It seemed that the size of the grains varied considerably so if he tried to match the roller with the smaller grains, it would crush the larger grains. If he matched the larger grains, the smaller grains would just roll off the roller. After combining compromise and pretending not to see, he managed to finish about 2 go, 0 0.3608 liters, worth of hulled rice. Phew, this is even more difficult than fighting the assassin hawk. Next, he had to cook it. To boil the rice. In the house Michael, pseudonym, prepared, there was a stove. And there were two pots with wooden lids to be used on that stove. Rio was planning to use that to cook the rice. First, he washed the pot clean. Then, he also washed the rice in an ice bowl. When washing, he could see the rice bran come out from the rice harvested from the wild rice. He placed the rice in the pot. Placing his hand on the rice, he added water until the back of his hand was submerged. To be honest, Rio had no idea how much water was needed to cook wild rice. As such, he used the knowledge he had from Earth. Then, he covered the pot with an ice lid. He made a slightly heavier lid so that it would not fly off from the pressure. In Rio's parents' house, they did not use electric rice cookers to cook rice but with a pot on a gas stove. Because they believed that it was tastier that way. However, since he never controlled the strength of the fire on the stove, Rio had completely no idea how to do it. But. There was common sense in the world to cook delicious rice. First let it simmer in low heat, then shift to high heat to bring to a boil, and don't take the lid off even if it cries like a baby. That said, Rio did not know how many minutes it should take before he shifts to higher heat. For now I'll try 300 seconds. I'll increase the strength of the fire after 5 minutes. Handing fire was already his specialty a water attribute magician who is good at handling fire. That seems to give the impression of a jack of all trades but master of none. In total, it took 20 minutes to cook. 
After extinguishing the fire, he waited for a while. It seemed to be steaming. After steaming for about fifteen minutes, finally. Rice is now served. After a large amount of steam puffed out, there was white rice, or rather yellow rice. We will, a slight difference is understandable. With an ice bowl in his left and rice scoop in his right hand, he calmed himself down and slowly scooped into the bowl. He canceled the scoop and formed two ice chopsticks in his right hand. Now then, thank you for the meal. It's a little sticky and different from Japanese rice, and the taste spreading in my mouth is also different. But this is undeniably rice. Rio trembled with joy and wholeheartedly scooped rice into his mouth. There was a figure of a water attribute magician eating rice while crying. WMV One C Zero 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 Nine, Chapter Zero 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 Nine Wood Processing. Now that I've gotten my hands on rice. I kind of want to have miso soup, but that is probably impossible. Rio previously speculated that the house was located between the equator and the Tropic of Cancer, judging from the surrounding conditions. In fact, he harvested pepper and wild rice to back that speculation. Well, there was something essential in making miso soup, and that would, of course, be miso. Soybeans were needed to make that miso. But the origin of soybeans was from East Asia, such as Japan. The Rondo forest was too hot, and the humidity was high. Soybeans grow easily in well-drained land. Therefore, when soybeans are sown in a field, high ridges are created to allow good drainage. With those conditions, it probably doesn't grow in the wild. Well, I can't help it. It's already good fortune that I obtained rice. The barrier with a 100-meter radius around the house was large enough for regular life. However, if he planned to create a field, it was too narrow. It seems like I will have to make it outside the barrier. Moreover, if I do so, I will have to cut down the trees and clear a space. Cultivating new land quickly with magic and sword. A pity that water jet can't cut trees yet. On Earth. People would usually cut trees with a chainsaw. At sawmills, a giant rotating saw would be used to cut the wood. Perhaps instead of a water jet, I could make a rotating saw made of water and use it as a long-range attack. He imagined it in his head. The image of a circular saw with a 10 centimeters radius forming on his right palm and starting to rotate. Water saw, just like he imagined. A rotating saw made of water was formed. Now fly forth, Basha. The moment it left his hand, it splashed to the ground. Ah!、Uh, he collapsed to his knees and hung his head. Rio remained frozen in that posture for about ten seconds. He spoke while maintaining that posture. Let's think through the process. Generate water. Rotate the water that formed. Make it fly. Hmm, a three-step procedure. I guess I still can't perform a three-step procedure. He verified while hanging his head down. But then Rio abruptly stood up. Not yet. It is not yet the end. Spitting out the phrase of some scarlet comet, Rio approached a tree outside the barrier. Then he cast once more. Water salt. However, this time, instead of letting it fly, he maintained it in his palm and struck it against the trunk of the tree. Gawian. It successfully cut through the trunk at the same speed as a chainsaw. This looks useful when processing wood. That said, at present, even if he cut something, he had no adhesive or nails. Whereas with joinery without relying on adhesive or nails, yup, that would be impossible. The task would likely be too difficult. Rotary motion. Rio suddenly froze. Eh? Isn't something strange? The ice roller that he used when tanning the leather of the lesser boar came to Rio's mind. The process of the ice roller was gathering the water molecules in the air, freezing the gathered water molecules, rotating the frozen roller. A three-step process seems like it. But it worked. 
there was a major issue in his understanding. Icicle lance. He formed an icicle lance in his right hand. Rotate on the spot. It rotated like a flying bullet. Fire. Sure. But. As usual, it fell to the ground. However, today Rio was not depressed. He generated an elongated ice bowl in his left hand. He filled it with water. And targeting it as it was filled with water. Icicle Lance. The icicle lance was created while still attached to the ice bowl. Fire. The ice bowl flew forward at considerable speed. That was breathe. He adjusted his breathing. Don't worry, I can fire it. I am different from the past. That was close to self-suggestion, but it was very important. Because that had crushed a hardened misconception within Rio's imagination. He imagined in his head. Generation of the icicle lance. And the image of sending that spear flying from his right hand. He repeated over and over until he could almost see an illusion in front of his eyes. He imagined it clearly. Icicle Lance An icicle lance was formed in front of his right hand. Fire It flew forward with great speed. This I don't know when it started but at the very least, before I tanned the leather, I had the means to fire it forward. The image was crucial in magic for good and for bad. The thought that I can't fire the icicle lance was stuck inside Rio's mind. Of course, he probably couldn't have fired it the first few days after reincarnating. However, as a result of the training that followed, he learned the technique to fire it. But it seemed that the thought that he could not fire impeded him. Could that be called a mental block? What did I work so hard for? That said, I can be sure that I acquired a lot of power. This is a win. The next day, Rio was in a desperate situation. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0010 Chapter 0010 Assassin Hawk 2 The day after he succeeded in firing the icicle lance, Rio went hunting in the eastern forest as usual. He could now send the icicle lance flying. To be honest, he could win even against a greater boar. That's what he thought. He was filled with confidence. He felt more motivated than ever before. However, it was not a greater boar that attacked Rio. Invisible wind attribute magic attacks, air slash, were flying at him from the front and back. Even though one was already troublesome. Omnidirectional ice wall. An ice wall one meter wide and two meters tall covered Rio's front, back, left, and right to defend against the air slashes. Rio held the front part of his knife tipped bamboo spear that had broken off from the middle with his right hand. The part from the middle to the end, the butt end so to speak, had already been dropped somewhere. The ice wall was transparent. As such, he could see the other side of the wall. An assassin hawk was flying in front of his ice wall. An assassin hawk with a closed right eye due to injury. That was the assassin hawk that Rio almost died to. Moreover, another assassin hawk was flying behind Rio. Both hawks maintained their distance from Rio and only attacked with air slashes. Furthermore, the nasty fact was that one of them always remained in and attacked from Rio's blind spot and most of the time the one-eyed assassin hawk would face him head-on while the newcomer assassin hawk would attack from his blind spot. The ice wall in front cracked after receiving the third air slash. At that moment, Rio raised his left hand at the one-eyed hawk, and countless lines of water shot out. Water Jet 32 But with some uncanny aerodynamic characteristics, as though it performed instantaneous lateral movement, it dodged by moving out of the effective range. And then, the ice wall protecting Rio's back also broke after receiving the third air slash from behind. To be honest, Rio had not had the chance to catch his breath. After all, he had been running around to avoid the air slashes from front and back while trying to retaliate. However, 
Putting aside avoiding his opponent's attacks, Ryo's attacks were all dodged like the example given above. His bamboo spear was sacrificed to defend against an air slash that he couldn't avoid, and he withdrew like a turtle into his ice wall shell to regain his breath but the ice wall broke with three air slashes. Every time his ice wall broke, he would counterattack only once before regenerating the ice wall. I want to flee but... I'm sandwiched front and back and have no path to escape. The newcomer was perfectly behind Ryo, that is, it was going around Ryo's blind spot and attacking while denying his retreat path. Ryo honestly did not know how much magical power he had left. At the current pace, he could probably persevere by repeatedly casting ice wall and water jet but he was getting tired. Tiredness will lead to mistakes. It was a battle against the inevitable fatigue. And he would die if he made a mistake. That in turn caused even more fatigue to accumulate. What should I do? He regenerated the ice wall and organized the situation. Until now, Ryo had only shown his ice wall and water jet. And he knew that it could avoid a simultaneous salvo of 32 water jets. The victory condition this time was not to defeat the enemy but to escape into the barrier. To achieve that, it may be better to deal damage to it such that it would withdraw like the last time, even if the damage wasn't fatal. Should I lure it? The moment Ryo muttered that, the front and back ice walls broke at the same time. Ryo fired water jet 16 at the one-eyed hawk without delay. And then he ran. Of course, the one-eyed assassin hawk dodged the water jets. And then, Ryo thrust out this left arm while running and attempted to release magic. But at that instant, he stumbled. The newcomer assassin hawk dove toward Ryo as he stumbled. It must have been impatient because of the ice walls and air slashes. It charged in as if it was shouting I got you. But that was Ryo's aim all along. After stumbling, he rolled to the left and dodged the assault of the newcomer from behind. Then, Ryo thrust his half-length knife-tipped bamboo spear at the newcomer that was directly next to him. No, he was about to thrust but he stopped his spear and rolled further left. By a hair's breadth. The one-eyed assassin hawk struck the spot where Ryo was as though it saw through Ryo's trap. Furthermore, it didn't stop after its assault and immediately flew backward. It seemed that it had learned from its previous experience. Meanwhile, the newcomer assassin hawk also returned to the air. Jai Yai Jiu Jiu. The one eye seemed to be lecturing the newcomer. Perhaps it was telling it not to let its guard down. And once again, the one-eyed faced Ryo directly and the newcomer positioned itself in Ryo's blind spot behind him. They were both twenty meters away from Ryo. Ryo slowly stood up without breaking line of sight with the one-eyed assassin hawk. Omnidirectional ice wall with additional ceiling. Seeing it, it felt like the newcomer assassin hawk was sneering. It was dangerous a while ago, but it was disappointed that he reverted to this method. Newcomer Kuen, you are already dead. I want to say that aloud but the one-eyed guy has a good intuition so I'll refrain. You will move to that spot without fail by centering on me. The instant Ryo had that thought. Icicle lances rained over the newcomer's head. There were 256 lances. It was a rain of shining ice that fell with a radius of 30 meters centered on the newcomer assassin hawk. Jaiya. The newcomer tried to move and dodge, but the range was too wide. Multiple lances injured its wings and it was knocked to the ground. All of the icicle lances were formed in midair and fell by free fall. Even if he could fire icicle lances now, he could only consciously control one at a time. That one lance had already been formed outside the ice wall. Fire. Without string, it pierced the head of the newcomer assassin hawk that had been knocked down. Gwa! The one-eyed assassin hawk screamed out. Its eyes glaring at Ryo showed the same hatred, no, even more hatred than the previous time. Their eyes met for just a few moments. The one-eyed assassin hawk turned around and left. Phew! 
I somehow survived. But this icicle lance from the air, free-falling spears of light looked quite cool. All right, this shall be one of my decisive techniques. Although it was a tough battle that he was prepared for death, he was completely fine when it was over. Ryo managed to survive the battle with the faded assassin hawk but the challenges were apparent. It was the need to strengthen his physical aspect, or rather, his physical body. In the early stages of the battle, he ran around and caused his breathing to become rapid and it took a considerable amount of time to regulate his breathing. This time the one eye focused on maintaining a distance as it attacked so he was able to buy time with ice wall but that would not always be the case. Stamina is important, Rio said with a clear voice. The next day onward, the flow of a day in Rio's life changed a little. First, after waking up would be some calisthenics. He would do it for 30 minutes. Flexible muscles would prevent injuries. Rio had, by no means, a flexible body but he knew that flexibility would be achieved by anyone if they did it every day. After that lunch, lunch was essential. The foundation of a day. He ate a proper meal. After eating, he would read or practice magic until his digestion was complete. After about 30 minutes, he would run around the outer edge of the barrier. Walk. Earnestly, walk. While using magic to create ice and water in his hands, he would run, and when he got tired, walk. In the afternoon, once every two days, he would leave the barrier and hunt in the eastern or northern forest. Since then, he had not encountered the one-eyed assassin hawk. But Ryo knew that the battle would eventually have to be settled. It was not a theory. That was just how it was. After hunting and procuring food, he would return and practice magic. On the days he does not go out to hunt, he practiced magic. And before entering the bath, he would perform 1,000 swings. Not with a baseball bat. He would use a bamboo sword cut out of bamboo, adjust the weight with ice, and swing it. Ryo attended the kendo dojo from the first grade of elementary school to the winter of the third grade of junior high school. He joined with an attitude to play. He had never participated in any competitions either. During junior high school, while his friends were participating in school club activities, Ryo would be part of the go-home club and visit the kendo dojo in the district martial arts center on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The martial arts center coach was a junior high school student. When Rio became a high school student, he was advised to practice at the prefectural police headquarters but he refused. He didn't hate kendo but he did not want to do it that seriously either. His reflexes were decent. He liked baseball, soccer, and basketball. Whether it was watching or playing. But he couldn't get into anything. Rio was never completely absorbed in doing anything for his life. It wasn't as though he hated working hard. He knew its value. So he tried doing whatever came to mind. He wrestled with hard work. And then he was able to do it. After that, even though he didn't exactly lose interest, he never tried to push to the limits. Rio was by no means a genius. Still, he could get most things done to a satisfactory degree if he put in some serious effort. However, after coming to this world, that changed a little. The experience that transformed Rio was, magic? He may not have a teacher but that might have been for the better. It might have been better that he didn't have anything such as a spell book. For the first time in his life, Rio was absorbed in using magic. He couldn't get good at it easily. There was a mountain of things he didn't understand. But that was fine. And there were many other things needed to make the most out of that magic. He almost died because he didn't have stamina. His bamboo spear breaking in half made him realize his lack of skill. Stamina could be acquired by running. Anybody could acquire it just by running. The methodology had already been established on Earth. But there was something to be aware of. That would be stress fracture. The bones below the knee could break. Calcium intake was required but, 
he didn't have milk which boasts the best absorption rate. In that case, small fish with the bones included would have to eventually be the main means of acquiring it. Was there any other way to prevent stress fractures other than food? Of course. That was calisthenics, stretching. Flexibility is versatility. So today, he ran as well, he walked when he was tired. But he didn't stop. He kept walking. He kept moving to strengthen his cardiopulmonary function. Stretch, run and walk. Just by continuously doing that, anybody could gain stamina. The issue apart from stamina was his skill with the bamboo spear. But he'll give up on that. In the first place, he decided on the knife-tipped bamboo spear because he wanted to deal the final hit from a longer distance. He had never even seen a video about how to handle a spear. Then what should he do? Instead, he had done kendo before. He had not held a bamboo sword in the last five years, but he did in the past for nine years. His body still remembered it. Swordsmanship and kendo were different things. That was probably true. However, kendo did not begin from nothing. Its origin was obviously from swordsmanship. In that case, the thing Ryo had to do was not difficult. All he had to do was reverse the flow that changed swordsmanship to kendo. It was not an easy matter but it was possible. Well, it didn't matter even if he couldn't. Fundamentally it was a sword meant to be used as a means for magic. His main forte was water attribute magic and Ryo was a water attribute mage after all. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0011 Chapter 0011 Endurance Ryo was running today too. Or rather, he was walking today too. Because the sun rises quite early, even though it was in the middle of the morning, he had been moving continuously for quite a considerable amount of time. About five hours on earth time. However, he did not always run at a constant speed like in a marathon, and sometimes added in some interval running. The outer edge of the barrier was about 600 meters and he ran quickly for two laps, did a slow pace run for the next lap, and walked for the subsequent two laps. Tien, he took five hours to travel three kilometers? Even by walking the entire journey it shouldn't take five hours x. By doing so, even though he walked, he still moved for at least five hours. And as he moved, he trained magic too. After morning training, Ryo's body was already at the peak of fatigue. But he could not collapse then. First was icing. He cooled the elevated temperatures of his muscles. That was truly living up to the name of a water tribute mage. He created a film of water encased in ice and cooled his muscles. About 15 minutes of icing would cause blood vessels to contract. After the icing is done, the blood vessels would dilate once more due to rebound and cause more than usual fatigue substances to effectively flow through the blood. Then, he cooled down with calisthenics. That also helped to prevent injuries, probably. At noon, he would eat the rest of his breakfast. When making breakfast, he would prepare two meals since the preparations wouldn't change much if he made one or two meals. Then, it was finally time to hunt. It was a hunt but, lately it became almost like a routine. Naturally, he would not fall into a pinch against lesser rabbits, or lesser boars. There wasn't much difference against normal rabbits, and normal boars either. Of course, that didn't mean that he let his guard down and there was no telling what could happen if he came across an assassin hawk. In that line of thought, it showed that the assassin hawk was truly a nasty enemy for humans. Until now, he had been struggling with his morning training regime which affected his afternoon activities but after getting used to it a little more, Ryo wanted to expand his activities a little more. For now, it was either the east or north, and eventually southwest, the sea. Yup, eventually he would have to go to the sea. Since he needed to procure salt. Water and salt are absolutely necessary for human life. 
He could produce water infinitely, but he couldn't do so with salt. The miracle of God that turned Lot's wife into salt in the book of Genesis. Rio could not do that. Or rather, it would be terrifying if he could. To be honest, it would be safer to go to the sea and get salt normally via salt farms or other methods. The salt that Michael, pseudonym, prepared was enough to last for more than a year at the current pace. However, for Rio who has never done salt farms or other methods, he wanted to know how much time it would take to obtain salt. He wouldn't want to panic when he was about to run out of salt. Besides, there was a possibility that he could eat seafood for the first time in a long time. Rio loved meat but he didn't hate seafood either. It had been around two months since he started his training menu to build endurance. Finally, his morning routine did not affect his afternoon activities. All right, let's go a little further today. First, I'll need to leave a landmark. After saying that, Rio began building an ice tower within the barrier. It looked more like a flagpole rather than a tower although it was about 100 meters tall. When seen from a distance, it was a beautiful sight as the sun rays reflected off it. With this height, I should be able to see it from most places. Although Rondo Forest was a dense forest, there were still quite a few locations that could be called gaps in the forest. With this height, it should be visible from about 2 kilometers away. For the time being, if he uses this as a landmark, he wouldn't make a mistake in the direction to return to. Although it was about 100 meters tall, it was quite suitable since it was made with an emphasis on speed. The thickness of the tower was about 3 meters in diameter and was a cylinder shape. It was a shape that wouldn't fall over easily but, with Rio's magical power in effect, he somehow knew that it would not fall. This is different from the laws of physics that I know. As Rio's magical ability rose, he felt the differences from Earth. Or it may be more accurate to say that the phenomenon that cannot occur on Earth has become possible. However, Rio still had very little awareness of it. His expedition tools were the same as usual. His loincloth and sandals. His usual knife-tip bamboo spear and hemp bag. He swung a bamboo sword like bamboo every day but he did not have a weapon that could be used as a sword. For the time being, this new knife-tip bamboo spear had to remain as his physical weapon. No matter how many times it breaks, he could just replace it as long as the knife portion is intact. Extremely economical. All right, let's head northeast. There was quite a wide expanse of wetlands to the north. He didn't know the eastern end of the wetland laid so he tried setting his course for northeast. It would be fine if he traveled and still came across wetlands. That would confirm that the wetland extends considerably from east to west. There was no particular change for about one kilometer from the barrier. The only monster he encountered was a lesser boar. As for the harvest, he obtained about ten Ichizuku and red fruits called lindo that resembled apples. It looks and tastes like apples. I can make apple pies with this. Of course, I can't bake though. He was having a one-man comedy act. After reincarnating, Rio was clearly having a lot of monologues. After securing about ten lindo, he continued further northeast. About two kilometers from home. Perrin. The ice wall behind him broke with a single blow. This was an expedition into the depths of the Rondo Forest so Rio didn't know what would happen and constantly moved with a thin ice wall behind him. Although he called it thin, it was strong enough to withstand two shots of the Assassin Hawk's invisible wind attribute attack magic air slash. And it was broken with one hit. His body moved before he could think. He dove diagonally to the right, fell with his shoulder to the ground and made a full turn after softening the fall. He got up and chanted as he looked behind. Ice armor! His chest, waist, back of his hands, and legs were equipped with armor made of ice. For now, to prevent instant death upon hit, he found it better to have simple armor even if a full plate mail was not possible. Looks like a cobra. Kite snake? 
it could deal direct attacks by swinging its tail like a whip. Or an air slash could be generated from the tail movement. And its ultimate weapon was the venom from its mouth. How troublesome. It looked just like a cobra as Rio muttered. And like a cobra, it had a hood on its neck. But its size was unusual. He couldn't tell its total length, because it was coiled. The position of the hood was about three meters from the ground. He had to look up quite considerably. It was likely a direct attack from its tail that destroyed the ice wall with a single blow. He experienced air slash many times when facing the assassin hawks. It was a rather troublesome attack because it is invisible but it shouldn't be possible to break his ice wall with a single blow. At the very least, its tail attack could reach his current position so he was already in the kite snake's range. He poised himself and decided that he had to regain the initiative. Ice wall you shape. The ice wall surrounded the front, left, and right of the kite snake. Originally he used the ice wall U-shape for retreating but now he could use it this way too. And while chanting internally, Ryo jumped backward as soon as the ice wall was created. The ice wall could at least survive one tail attack. In the meantime, he would fall back and leave the kite snake's range. However, the kite snake's movements exceeded Ryo's expectations. Instead of breaking the ice wall, it bypassed the ice wall and chased after Ryo as he retreated. As expected of a snake, it moves so fast on grass but... I spawn. He froze the grass and turned it into an icy road. The kite snake, who got on the ice spawn with strong momentum, could no longer stop itself. Icicle Lance 16 It could already be called Ryo's specialty, the ice spawn plus icicle lance. Sixteen icicle lances formed at an angle of three hundred from the ice spawn to meet the sliding kite snake. Bikin. What? A boar would be pierced through but the kite snake snapped the icicle lances. Yes, with the tail attack that broke the ice wall initially. Ice wall. Its sliding momentum was not stopping. In other words, the distance between it and Rio was shortening at every moment. He first tried to stop that with an ice wall. But, Bikin, it broke once again from a tail attack. Right. Ice wall five layers. Instead of the usual thin ice wall he always deployed, a five-layer ice wall with a width of three meters, a height of three meters, and thickness twice as usual was formed. That was a spell completely geared for defense. Gaken. Dogo. It tried to break it as it did before with its tail, but it could not break it with a single blow, and only cracked the first layer. Its sliding body slammed into the ice wall and stopped. But Ryo could not catch a breather. As soon as it found that it could not catch Ryo by sliding, the kite snake manipulated its tail outside the ice wall and approached Ryo. All the while releasing air slashes as well. Ice shield. A shield similar to a tennis racket was created in the air to prevent air slashes. However, that allowed the kite snake's tail to close the gap. It was a fatal mistake in choice. Ice Wall 5 Layers The Ice Wall 5 Layers was the most robust of all the defensive spells that Ryo had. However, while a normal ice wall took below one second to form, the Ice Wall 5 Layers took close to one second. Normally it could be said to be sufficiently quick, but in such a close neck battle, one second was not quick at all. And that was revealed this time. Although he chanted for ice wall five layers, it did not form in time. Even though it reduced the kite snake tail's momentum, it barely reached Ryo. Ga. Ryo's chest armor shattered. He jumped backward to reduce the damage so he didn't end up with a hole in his chest although he might end up with a terrible bruise or a cracked rib. But Ryo did not feel the pain. Like a battle junkie, it seemed that his brain was filled with adrenaline. He raised his left hand and chanted without a second's break. Icicle Lance too. 
The icicle lances fired from his left hand drew a trajectory and crossed the ice wall to aim for the kite snake's head. To intercept it, the kite snake quickly pulled its tail back. And it intercepted it. Ryo finally succeeded in retaliating. Ice armor! He regenerated the cracked chest armor. Without it, he would have died. Currently, Ryo was 15 meters away from the kite snake. There was an ice wall five layer in front of the ice snake. Its height and width were three meters. Below the kite snake was the ice bond, but only about two meters in radius. The kite snake had its hood out. It was about three meters in height, and the ice wall was just about the same height. I retaliated, but I don't want to engage in close quarters fight again. The kite snake's tail was too vicious. It could shoot air slashes from a distance, and if you got close to it, it had the physical strength to destroy his ice wall in a single blow. However, the kite snake had the next move. It leaped while its hood was flared. What's with that? It leaped over the ice wall five layers and closed in on Rio. Ice spawn. However, before it reached the ice spawn, the kite snake moved sideways as if saying that it had already seen that technique before. It changed from a direct attack to a curved attack. It shot air slashes continuously while moving. Ice Shield 4 Ryo intercepted the attacks with four floating ice shield as the kite snake approached while moving left and right as if trying to faint. And finally it released venom from its mouth. It was a far more widespread poison attack than Ryo had imagined. The range was too wide that it was impossible to escape from. Normally that would be checkmate. However, Ryo was not normal. And he was a water attribute magician. Squall. The instant he chanted, heavy rain common in Southeast Asia occurred locally. Centered on the kite snake in front of Ryo. The heavy rain battered the venom in the air and flushed it to the ground. That was probably the first time it encountered such a counter. Although it was a different race, Ryo could tell that it was surprised. Boiling water. He chanted toward the kite snake drenched by the squall. His target was the water from the squall on the kite snake as well as the water puddle below it. He used to take a few minutes to boil water but now he could do it in less than a second like any other magic. In other words, the kite snake was forced to bathe in boiling water all over its body in an instant. Jiaoyi! As it screeched, he targeted the wide open mouth. Icicle lance! And fired a thick ice spear. The icicle lance pierced its oral cavity, and the kite snake died. Ryo unconsciously fell onto his backside and remained seated. Fu. I was saved by bathing. This boiling water technique, I wouldn't have learned it if I didn't want to have a bath. I must thank Michael, pseudonym, for preparing the bathtub. Zukin. While feeling relieved, Ryo started to feel the pain in his ribs from the kite snake's strike. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0012 Chapter 0012 Plow Ryo somehow managed to reach home. He froze the kite snake corpse and kept it in the storage. He didn't think of eating the snake. Even when his university friend from Southeast Asia told him it looks pale but it is quite delicious, he didn't feel like eating it. But there was a possibility that he could use it as some kind of material, like those snakeskin wallets or bags on earth. A bag, huh? Well, there's no issue with the hemp bag, and more importantly, I don't have thread or string. I could use ivy as a replacement for string but I would need it for clothes as well. Regarding clothes, it was still extremely difficult to achieve this in his slow life in Rondo Forest. As for food, apart from the Ichizuku, he also obtained the rindo that is similar to apples during this excursion. It was a long sought after new fruit. Enriching his food choices was important in achieving his slow life. That said, my encounter with the kite snake was a close shave. That was the first time Ryo encountered a monster that used poison. Although it was described in the monster encyclopedia, 
Beginner addition to spit poison, the area of the poison, so large that it could be called a poison mist, was completely outside his expectations. The squall that I made for watering ended up playing an important role in the fight. I seriously don't know what would end up being useful in which situation. The water attribute magic squall that brought down the kite snake poison spread across the air and washed it away was originally imagined as water coming out of a watering can. Well, the water pressure was a little stronger, the volume was greater, and the area was wider. That squall was meant for the Ichizuka from his previous harvest that he transplanted. Although he could find it if he entered the forest, it would be nice if he could pluck them from his garden when he has cravings for it at night. He planted them for such simplistic reasoning. Of course, it was natural cultivation without any pesticides, chemical fertilizers, or organic fertilizers. Since it was tastier that way. It definitely was not because he didn't have any of that. Definitely not. If he was pursuing mass production then a large amount of fertilizer might be a better method. But for a slow life, that was not necessary. However, there was a field of food that was not progressing well even if he took it slowly. It was his field. He had stored a fairly large amount of paddy rice that was for planting or eating. They were all obtained from the wetlands in the northern forest. However, what Rio wanted was to improve it with a field. And for that, he needed to make a paddy field. He needed it, but if he could use earth attribute magic, he might have a spell like plow. Even without that, he could make a hole and plow manually. But Rio only had water attribute magic. Land reclamation without earth attribute magic, without farming tools like a hoe or plowing horses. He could not imagine himself succeeding with those restrictions. For the time being, he tried launching icicle lances at the planned paddy field site. Icicle lance too. It was barely noticeable. Let's drop it from the sky. Icicle lance 128. 128 icicle lances formed in the sky 20 meters up and free fell to the planned paddy field site. Zusa zusa zusa. They pierced the ground. Yeah, pierce, that's all. I wonder if there is a way to make them rupture after piercing. He was about to imagine one of the lances exploding. Before that, I should set up a shield. He was standing in his garden within the barrier so he didn't even have his ice armor on. Ice wall five layers. It was the sturdiest shield he had and he separated himself from the planned explosive. The ice wall was originally transparent as well so it didn't impede his work. Once again, he made a mental image of one of the icicle lances exploding. Bikin. Exploded, or rather, the ice shattered and scattered around. That wouldn't help with the plowing. He targeted two icicle lances and imagined them exploding into even finer ice crystals. Tashin. The ice shattered and scattered around once again but, compared to before, the scattered ice was smaller. I knew it wouldn't help with plowing. He guessed that having the ice shatter was insufficient. Instead of shattering, he wanted them to explode. If it is an explosion with water, I recall the experiments that caused water to explode by adding sodium metal. But that was not realistic here. In that case, steam explosion. A steam explosion was a phenomenon that happens when a high-temperature substance such as magma comes into contact with a low-temperature substance such as groundwater, causing the water to instantaneously become water vapor and explode. The explosion phenomenon occurs because when water turns into water vapor, its volume expands by 1700 times. But I don't have any high-temperature substances. No, if I instantaneously convert the icicle lance into water vapor, it should cause the same phenomenon as a steam explosion. It could be done with the same image of increasing the vibrations of the water molecules as when he first made boiling water. Increasing the vibrations would cause the temperature of the substance to increase. Once it goes beyond 100 degrees, it would turn into steam. If more heat was added to the steam, steam that goes beyond 100 degrees would reach a state called superheated steam. 
On Earth, there were microwave ovens on sale that functioned using superheated steam. In that sense, it was a very common phenomenon. He tried it with all the remaining 126 icicle lances, but he couldn't make them explode. At a glance, it felt like he could easily cause a steam explosion, but unfortunately, his fundamental knowledge was flawed so a steam explosion would never occur. Ryo's chemical knowledge was insufficient. In the first place, an explosion was a phenomenon that occurs as a result of a sudden generation or release of pressure. If it's ice, yeah? Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0013 Chapter 0013 Close Combat Initiative Failure is the mother of success. Rio would not be discouraged from failure. For now, I'll put aside the creation of the paddy field. Right, he just had to postpone any problems without feeling discouraged so it was fine. In the fight with the kite snake, he could not stand his ground in close combat at all. To be accurate, it was the close combat with the kite snake's tail. In other words, Ryo found it hard to defend against or avoid his opponent's attacks. Well, he hated doing that so he made it such that he could safely hunt from a distance so it could be said that the outcome in close combat was expected. Until now, he had been training the means to attack from a distance. Training regarding his activation time, magic control, and such, there were still many things to do. In the first place, generating ice wall five layers took one second and there was only one reason why I received damage. I just have to generate it even quicker. And also ice armor. Ryo somewhat prepared it as a defensive spell with a suitable armor in mind but it was quite effective. Or rather, without it, Ryo would be dead. Although it makes me look like some saint knight, it isn't hard to carry around and I should train to immediately equip it directly before battle for unforeseen circumstances. Ah, uh, I could increase the weight of it and wear it when running. It might be good training. He failed to realize that his thought process had completely deterred to a muscle brain root. That said, it would train his stamina and having that base endurance would aid to not run out of stamina during battle. No matter how excellent he trains his technique, he would not be able to utilize it without stamina. Along with his daily calisthenics training and running, Ryo would perform practice swings without fail. The bamboo blade about one meter long and weight adjusted with an ice coating. Originally a bamboo sword is made of four pieces of bamboo split into eight pieces but Ryo was using the bamboo in its original form. He just looked for bamboo that was a comfortable size to grip and cut it about one meter long. Of course, it didn't have a wrist guard but he had held a bamboo sword for nine years. His body remembered the rough length of the handle. Regardless of kendo or swordsmanship, bamboo sword, or Japanese katana, the grip was the same. The left hand would grip close to the end of the handle, while the right hand would grip close to the wrist guard. Both fists would not stick to each other. There would be space for another fist between the two fists. It was fundamentally different from holding a baseball bat. The usage was different. The difference was that, for a bat, it is important to transmit power to the bat, whereas for a bamboo sword or katana, control was more important. Because of that, the length of the handle was always 8 cn or 24 centimeters regardless if it is for the Uchigatana or the longer Tachi. It is believed that this was because it has long been recognized that the length was just right for swinging a sword. Incidentally, the so-called two-handed sword in the West was gripped and swung by having both fists stuck together. Just like a baseball bat. If power was the focus, stick both fists together, and if control was important, separate both fists. As mentioned earlier, isn't it the same for baseball bats? When swung normally, both fists would be stuck together to convey more power. However, if there was a need to move the bat more precisely, that is, when they want to perform a bunt, they would have both fists apart and have one fist in the middle of the bat. How the target is moving and how to use the item held was determined from the stage of holding the item. 
Fundamentally, the bamboo sword or the Japanese katana were held and supported with the left hand. The right hand is just lightly holding it, or not entirely, the right hand also determines the trajectory of the blade. For the left hand, the little finger and ring finger were important for grasping, similar to how it is in baseball, but they were fingers that are rarely used in daily life. For that reason, repeated practice was important. After swinging practice, head, wrist head, torso and thrust. TLN, these are kendo moves. He retraced the movements he learned in the dojo many times. Grip loosely with the left hand except for the two fingers and squeeze only at the moment of impact. As with boxing jabs, you won't be able to speed up if you're always using all your strength. Therefore, only swing your arms loosely without putting too much strength and grip your fist only at the moment of impact. In the end, as it is related to the movement of the body, there were many things in common for various actions. Not only in the handling of bamboo swords and bats, but also in judo and sumo, the little finger and ring finger play the most important role after catching the opponent. It is the same in all Japanese martial arts, Chinese martial arts, hand-to-hand -hand martial arts, it is normally relaxed and grasp only at the moment of impact. By repetitive practice, it is best if you can do it until it is imprinted in the cerebellum as motor memory, not in the cerebrum as a conscious action. And that is what many people on earth achieved, whether they are martial artists or athletes. That was sure to be the same in, Phi, as well. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV 1C0014 Chapter 0014 I'm Craving River Fish I feel like eating fish once in a while. Rio muttered to himself one day after finishing his morning practice. Grilled fish would be nice. I'd love to have it grilled with salt. To be honest, I want to drizzle some soy sauce. But that is just wishful thinking since I don't have soy sauce so I'll compromise on that. All right, let's have salt grilled fish tonight for dinner. Now that he had decided on it, he should take action immediately. There was no sea here but river fish should suffice. That was because the images that came to mind when Rio imagined salt grilled fishes were grilled sweet fish and rainbow trout. His choice for the tool to catch fish was his usual knife-tipped bamboo spear. I actually wanted to have a barbed tip that curved back at the end like a harpoon but I'll have to give up on that. Fishing was previously something that Rio would never opt for. This time I won't need the hemp bag. With the knife-tipped bamboo spear in his hand, Rio headed toward the river located to the south of his home. This was absolutely not because he wanted to have fun. Right, definitely not. Probably, not. At that time, it so happened that there was a crocodile at the river bank. It was not listed in the Monster Encyclopedia, Beginner Edition. Therefore it was probably an animal, rather than a monster. Naturally, on Phi, there were millions of types of existences that were not monsters, or in other words, ordinary animals. The difference between monsters and animals would be the small stone called a magic stone, located near the heart of monsters. In addition, depending on the species, some monsters were capable of using magic, and most of the time, monsters were more violent and stronger than ordinary animals. For that reason, in Rondo Forest where strong monsters roam, most ordinary animal types had been exterminated. That was the reason why Rio had not seen any animals in Rondo Forest until now. However, now, there was an animal in front of his eyes. Even though it was a huge crocodile-type animal over 5 meters in length, it was still an animal. According to a famous Japanese book on Earth, How to Hold a Crocodile, the way to go was to approach it from behind. It was a book a friend showed Rio when he was a primary school student. That probably won't come useful, Rio thought to himself so he didn't read it properly. Now he regretted it. There really was no telling what would be useful where. Well, I don't necessarily have to catch it. Right, it wasn't as though the crocodile was coming toward him. 
It had not noticed him yet, so he just had to secretly move upstream such that it doesn't notice him. Ji Yawa Guaman After moving about fifty meters from the crocodile, Ryo heard the cries of beasts. It seemed that the crocodile he saw just now was fighting something. Despite going through the trouble of gaining a distance from it, now he was curious as to what the crocodile was fighting. He tried to secretly catch a glimpse. After creeping closer to look, Ryo saw a bull charge at the crocodile and pierce it with its horns, raising it above its head. The crocodile seemed to have breathed its last breath. Horn bison, as the name implies, I have to watch out for its horns. They often appear around rivers and swamps. I have to be aware of its charge using wind attribute magic to wrap around its body. Oh. Right, let's try my new technique. Ryo raised his left hand above his head and chanted. Guillotine. An icicle lance with a guillotine-shaped tip flew into the sky from his left hand and gained sufficient acceleration before dropping onto the horn bison's neck from directly above. All right, success. Ryo grinned. The horned bison's head was decapitated with a single strike and fell into the water as blood spurted out from its neck. Maybe I can use it to practice tanning cowhide. Rio slowly approached the corpses of the horned bison and crocodile as he muttered that. However, Rio then saw a scene. Basha Basha Basha. The horned bison head and crocodile body that fell into the water seemed to become smaller and smaller. H.N.? Hmm? What's happening? He quickly gripped the horned bison's torso and tossed it onto land. Even then, there already were several fishes biting it. These seem like piranhas. They aren't listed in the monster encyclopedia but carnivores. They are probably related to piranhas. The piranha-like fishes had a body length over 40 centimeters and possessed violent-looking teeth. For the time being, he stabbed at the ones biting to the horned bison with his knife-tipped bamboo spear. Then, he froze the entire horned bison torso. During that time, he caught glimpses of the horned bison head and crocodile body in the water become smaller, before disappearing. The piranhas, which seemed to have been attracted by blood, disappeared and the river returned to its previous tranquility. I definitely can't play in the water here. Rio swore firmly in his heart. The hunt ended in less than an hour but the sight of the piranhas was quite shocking. After all, the smell of blood attracted all kinds of monsters. He had to keep that in mind. He took the horned bison and piranhas and stored them in the storage in their frozen state. Now then, he managed to acquire fish in this round's hunt. It was different from the sweet fish and rainbow trout that he imagined but it was still river fish. For dinner, he would salt grill the piranha and one great possibility was born. He had fish. He had salt too. And he didn't have soybean. Yes, that black liquid that can be said to be the heart of Japanese. Soy sauce? The possibility to acquire that was born. But he did not have soybeans. Originally soy sauce was born from miso, which is fundamentally made with soybean. Yes, he didn't have soybeans. Although he didn't have soybeans, there was a method on earth to acquire soy sauce without soybeans. That was fish sauce. As the word reads, it is a soy sauce made fundamentally with fish. Compared to the soy sauce Japanese people are familiar with, it has a stronger aroma and often has a stronger taste. But it was used for local cuisine all over Japan. In other words, it was compatible with Japanese food. It might not make it for tonight's piranha salt grill, but someday, he could look forward to drizzling some soy sauce. Yup, I have to do this. The method to make the fish sauce was extremely simple. Pickle the fish with salt. That's all. All he has to do was wait a few months for it to ferment naturally. The question would be what barrel to ferment them in. Barrels made with water attribute magic could be created in an instant. The shape and size were up to him too. 
but it would be an ice barrel so it would be cold. For most storage, that coldness was not an issue, in fact, it was a huge merit. But fish sauce required fermentation? A certain temperature was needed to allow the fermentation to occur to give rise to fish sauce. If the ice container was too cold, fermentation would not occur. At the very least it had to be above room temperature. Because of that, the first step was to create a wooden barrel. Naturally, Rio had never created anything like that in his life. Even if he tried his best, the bottom might come off or the contents might leak out. For the time being, it would be great if there was a barrel-like tree somewhere. I see the candidates. Yes, this was Rondo Forest. Some of the trees had grown to be unimaginably thick as compared to those on Earth. And they were right next to the home barrier. The diameter of the trunk was approximately 2 meters, 10 meters in height. It was a coniferous tree like cedar and cypress. With heavy machinery like those on Earth, no, it might be quite troublesome to cut down a tree of that size even with heavy machinery. Furthermore, Rio did not have any heavy machinery on hand. But in exchange for heavy machinery he had, magic? Yes, he could use water jet to cut through, but that was still impossible. Although he had been practicing water jet ever since he came to, Phi, it still did not possess the strength to cut down trees. However, Rio had other means. Yes, the guillotine? That beheaded the horn bison in one hit. Guillotine? Sashin. The guillotine dug roughly a meter into the trunk before stopping. We well, I didn't expect to cut it down in a single hit. He didn't sound very convincing but he continued to chant. Guillotine? He fired off consecutive shots of the guillotine. Finally, he managed to slice through and the conifer fell along with a resounding boom. There was quite a lot of deforestation around the area affected but Rio didn't mind it. From the fallen coniferous tree, he chose a one meter long section that would become the barrel and started cutting. Guillotine? Guillotine? Here, he used the same consecutive shots of the guillotine. With a diameter of two meters and height of one meter, visually it looked like a splendid but slightly large table was carved out. Next would be to carve out the interior to shape the barrel. The tool of choice was the water saw. The water saw that he once failed to shoot out as an offensive spell. He probably could use it as a ranged offensive spell now similar to the icicle lance, but now he didn't require that effect. Water saw. On his right palm, a rotating saw made of water was generated. And he proceeded to carve the cutout section of the coniferous tree. It cut at a speed comparable to the chainsaws on earth. There was almost no resistance and no material stress either. It took about an hour before he finally managed to carve out a satisfactory shape. Visually it looked like a private open-air bath made of cypress wood and luxury hot spring ends. He moved it home by creating ice bond underneath the fermentation barrel. It was truly a convenient spell. Even though the content has been hollowed out, Due to the large size, it should weigh considerably heavy. And then, Rio noticed when he brought it home. This barrel, where should I put it? Yes, it was too big to fit through the door. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0015 Chapter 0015 Fish Sauce and Presents For the time being, he placed the fish sauce barrel underneath a large tree. On earth, it is common to line up jars for fermentation outdoors. Yup, I'm sure it will be fine. Rio forcibly convinced himself. First, he spread plenty of salt at the bottom of the barrel. And then above that, he spread the minced up meat from four thawed piranhas. Then, he added more salt to cover all the piranhas. Above that, he arranged wide leaves similar to banana leaves to prevent them from dying out. And then, for a lid, he covered the barrel with wood from the same tree used to make the barrel. That was the end. He completed his fish sauce barrel. If it goes well, he would be able to collect fish sauce in a few months, 
probably. Finally, he would be able to eat salt-grilled fish and white rice. At first, he expected sweet fish or rainbow trout, but due to various circumstances, it had now become grilled piranhas. Nevertheless, it was shockingly delicious. Although Rio generally loves meat, he occasionally wants to eat fish. He decided that he would go to the South River if he ever wanted to eat again. After all, he knew that if he threw an animal in, the piranhas would gather. It was a laid-back life with a satisfying dinner, a leisurely dip in the bathtub, and finally some magic practice. Generally, he would focus on creating ice until he fell asleep. By creating ice, even if he suddenly fell asleep, the ice would not melt and soak the surrounding items. Rio believed that the magical power lines were still connected even while he was asleep. If it was water, eh? Would water actually soak into the other items? I somewhat had that image so I didn't try it. For example, when he created water ball and fell asleep while moving left and right in the room, the water ball would fall to the floor and drench the floor in the shape of the water ball. He had that image in his head but, there was an instance when he created icicle lance and practiced moving it in his room but he fell asleep. The next day morning, when he woke up, the icicle lance was still floating in midair. In that case, it meant that the water ball could maintain the state of floating in midair too? That said, there are a lot of what-ifs so I'm afraid of trying. He still didn't understand many aspects of water attribute magic. Tomorrow, I'll carve out plenty of boxes from the tree I cut down today. He had made ice boxes using water attribute magic and placed all kinds of things in them, but if some kind of trouble occurred and he wakes up with complete magical power depletion, all the ice boxes would melt. If the magical power line was cut or there was a disruption in the supply of magical power, they would turn into regular ice. Although they would not immediately turn into water, he would prefer if they did not melt. Yes, he already experienced it once. His rescue of the blue pepper fruits that were flooded. There was still some time so he realized that he could start carving some now, but the forest at night is still scary after all. That's right, regardless of what era or which world, the forest at night was not a world for humans to live in. That probably would not change on Earth or on, Phi. Fundamentally, people rely on visual information and auditory information to understand their surroundings. The darkness of the night robs people of their visual information. Understanding the situation based on only auditory information was not possible for ordinary people. Many living organisms, monsters and animals included, have better hearing than humans. Furthermore, there are living organisms such as snakes and bats, and the likes that can obtain information using organs that humans do not possess. In the darkness of the night with such organisms present, Rio felt that it was not a place for humans to enter at least for now. Now that I think about it, there are people who can perceive presence? But what exactly is it? He could somewhat understand the concept of a sixth sense. A subconscious decision based on past experiences and memorized information which is then processed by the brain. Rio had that understanding. Intuition, or some kind of discomfort. However, presence, sensing the gaze from something you can't see, he couldn't understand that. If I could use wind attribute magic, I might be able to create a spell to sense presence or hidden enemies. The principle of passive sonar. Unlike active sonar, that fires a pinger from yourself and searches for the position and surrounding situation from the information that is reflected, passive sonar, acquires information from the changes in the surrounding born from the movements of the opponent without actively releasing anything. Because nothing is fired off, the opponent can't detect your presence. That mentioned above is used by submarines underwater, but it may be possible to know the opponent's information by using airflow in place of seawater. It felt possible with wind attribute magic. Of course, Raya was a water attribute mage. Like performing a breakdown rush, I'm a little envious of wind attribute mages. Breakdown rush, something like? 
releasing sonic blades from three body clones and assault techniques that can pursue the foe? Of course, ordinarily, wind attribute mages are incapable of performing such feats. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0016 Chapter 0016 Greater Boar A couple of days after eating the salt-grilled piranha. Today was once again a day to hunt in the afternoon. The location was the usual East Forest. A place with many lesser rabbits and lesser boars. Occasionally normal boars will appear but now, they were not a threat to Rio. He still had not planned out a strategy to win against assassin hawks but he probably wouldn't lose as long as he fights on land. I am by no means being conceited. The moment those words came out from his mouth, a greater boar appeared in front of his eyes. But now, even a greater boar was not a threat to Rio. Russell, he heard some rustling behind him. Twisting only his head to look behind, he saw another greater boar. Isamer. That instant, he lost sight of the two greater boars in front and behind him. Ice Wall Five Layers Ice Wall Five Layers were created in front and behind him. The formation speed was 0.1 seconds. He had been increasing his creation speed daily. But even that barely made it in time. Around the same time the Ice Wall Five Layers were formed, the greater boars rammed into them from in front and behind. One side had a lowered posture to target Rio's feet. The other side had a higher posture targeting Rio's upper body. They were clearly coordinating their attacks. The destruction from the charge of the greater boars reached the third layer of the ice wall five layers. The force generated from the charge was terrifying. Rio leaped out sideways from the ice walls to his front and back and chanted at the same time. I spawn. Both boars were close to Rio's former spot. He could seal their movements at the same time by making the floor they stood on slippery. But even if he sealed their movements, the greater boars had another means of attacking, right, the option to attack from a distance. That aspect was completely different from the lesser boars. The two greater boars created countless gravel, truly a number that couldn't be counted, in the surroundings. What, these numbers? Ice wall five layers, ice wall five layers, ice wall five layers. Since it was a competition by numbers, he overlaid multiple ice wall five layers. The gravels were fired. They struck the ice wall and formed mist or dust, worsening the visibility. At that moment, Hyun. A gravel collided with Ryo's right flank. Guha. And another on his left shoulder. Ugh. Omnidirectional ice wall dot. Making use of the reduced visibility, the greater boars bent the trajectory of the gravel. It struck Ryo by twisting around the corner of the ice wall five layers. I didn't expect them to be capable of bending the trajectory. He received damage due to the lack of combat experience. His torso armor and left hand armor shattered from the impact of the gravel. Ice armor. For now, he regenerated his armor. But he didn't have time to relax. The omnidirectional ice wall was just a single ice wall. It did not possess the endurance of the ice wall five layers. That said, the greater boars were incapable of moving due to the ice bond below their feet. They shouldn't be able to move. Shouldn't be. Can they really not move? Greater boars have feet capable of generating the force of a charge that approach the speed of sound. That was naturally the power and speed of hooves that can dig into the ground. Perhaps with time, they would be able to stand on the ice with claws and run. The previous time he hunted a greater boar, it certainly did fall down a couple of times on the ice spawn. However, it would be too hasty to think that all other individuals will slip and fall just because of that one individual. Even for humans, some would fall in an ice skating rink, and some could even jump without any issue. First, it was troublesome to have two opponents at the same time. He should defeat them one at a time. Which should he aim for? They attacked from the front and behind. 
Similarly, with the one-eyed assassin hawk, the one attacking from the front is probably the leader or has more experience. In that case, he should first defeat the one that attacked from behind. When facing multiple foes, one usual tactic is to hit the head of the enemy and cause confusion. However, attacking the weaker foe and shaving off their strength before targeting the tougher foe toward the end was another common tactic too. This time he chose the latter tactic. A foe with less experience would probably take longer to get used to moving on ice. Omnidirectional Ice Wall Release he went around the left side of the overlapping layers of ice wall five layers. In his vision was only one greater bore that was slipping constantly on top of the ice bond. The other was missing. It was probably wrapping around the overlapping ice wall five layers. So you are the first target. Icicle Lance 16 16 icicle lances formed above the fallen over greater bore. And the one that is wrapping around would probably appear from behind me? Rio muttered and quickly chanted. Ice wall five layers icicle lance two. Two icicle lances were formed on the other side of the ice wall five layers and were on standby for firing. At that moment, the sixteen icicle lances above the greater bore pierced it and caused it to shriek. Jaya triple A! Shocked by the cry. The other greater boar appeared from the location Rio anticipated. Fire. However, the two icicle lance struck its sturdy nose and shattered. The greater boar's vision was momentarily obscured by the shattered ice. Water Jet 64. Numerous water jets formed not from Rio's hands but the area around the greater boar's face. Their targets were the greater boar's eyes, ears, throat and other locations that were imaginably less sturdy. Bad visibility from the shattered ice and point-blank water jets. How would it avoid the ultra-fine jets of water that was formed 30 centimeters in front of its eyes? At a distance that can't be avoided and having jets of water form at its escape route, it was impossible to avoid. By robbing its sight and hearing, it would fall into panic and he would deal the final hit. That was the procedure Rio had in mind but the process went amiss. Instead of falling into panic, the greater boar died. The water jets that entered the eyes, ears, and throat directly pierced its brain. With its brain pierced dozens of times, there was no saving it. Eh? I defeated it. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0017 Chapter 0017 The Other Water Jet Even though it was called a greater bore, it seemed that attacks targeting the ears and eyes could easily reach the brain. That said, it was quite a surprise for Rio to not need to deal the final blow. Perhaps the power of my water jets increased? After returning to the barrier, Rio quickly set out to test it. He planned to use the corpses of the greater boars he just hunted. For a greater boar, the thickness of the skin above the neck and below the neck was completely different. Because that charge was one of its primary means of attacking, the head including the nose was extremely tough. However, in comparison, the areas below the neck were not that tough. Even its feet were not that sturdy. He aimed at the greater boar's right foot. Water jet. Flash. The greater boar's right foot was sliced off. Oh. He had lived for a couple of months since reincarnating in, Phi? The water jet that he arbitrarily decided to be the, true attack magic for water attribute. When he first reincarnated had finally displayed its true value. If I target a tree. John. He succeeded in cutting through, but not in an instant. Until now, when fired at a tree, he could only carve or scrape it but cutting through was impossible or so he imagined but, it seemed that he had overcome a wall. In the first place, a water jet was ordinary water fired out at an extremely high pressure and speed. Therefore, the water shot out was of course physically ordinary water. Such water jets had become a major method for processing various materials on earth. First, heat would not be generated because it was water. 
In other words, it would not cause the material to change due to heat. For example, the phenomenon where plastic and such would melt and drip would not occur. Because of that, poisonous gas would not be generated either. It was possible to process soft and thin materials without causing them to crack too. It could also process composite materials and laminated materials. In Rio's company, they had a five-axis controlled water jet machine. Because of that, Rio had some knowledge about it. Of course, he had never used it before. An employee would not get permission to use it. In that regard, even the vice president had no choice but to obey the judgment of the worksite. That Rio, who could not use a water jet on Earth, was using a magically produced water jet freely. Furthermore, he finally started to see visible results. Rio was more excited than that time he could make the icicle lance fly on its own. But at the same time, he was calm. Rio knew. There was another dimension to a water jet. He had to experiment. He was able to cut through a greater boar's foot. He could slice through tree trunk too. Then, what about stone? Typically the water jet is recognized as capable of cutting through anything. That was correct. That included rocks and stones. He had seen animation in the past where it was used to cut out gravestones from granite which is considered tough among stones. Rio shot it toward the stone enshrined in the courtyard. Water jet. It more or less carved it a little at a time. If he continued for an hour, he might be able to cut through it. However, that was a far cry from the cutting image of a water jet. Yes, this water jet could not cut rock. This water jet could cut soft items but could not cut tough or solid materials. It was not suitable for cutting stone, metal, concrete, or glass. But Rio was not disappointed. Since this was within expectations, this water jet would be used to cut soft materials. It could be used on animals, monsters, wood, and food. And another kind of water jet existed and that could be used to cut tougher materials. What was another kind of water jet? It was a water jet using not just water. Typically it was called an abrasive jet. On earth, when used to cut tougher materials, they were not cut with just water. Tiny, abrasive agents were mixed from the water outlet and sprayed at the object with water. Water, which approached the speed of Mach 3, and the abrasive agent would cut the object by shaving, and the material used for the abrasive agent was always the same. Garnet powder? Garnet, right, that gem called garnet. Although it was categorized as a gem, since the amount used was extremely small, the cost was not that high. In the first place, powder form garnet was commonly excavated and was extremely cheap. Furthermore, garnet used as abrasive agent could be reused multiple times. The reason why garnet was used as an abrasive agent was mostly due to its hardness. Of course, sapphire, ruby, and naturally diamond were harder but using those would be unprofitable. In addition, the shape of the crystal was also a reason. Garnet was a rhombic dodecahedron or octahedron. In short, it was very close to the shape of a sphere. The principle was that the closer the grain you used to hit a target was to a sphere, the easier it was to shave off the area as targeted. Now then, while it was established that the abrasive agent used was garnet on earth, he did not have it available on, Phi. He could not obtain garnet or such, at least, Rio could not think of a method to obtain them. In that case, he needed another abrasive agent other than garnet. That was when Rio thought of it. Ice. Yes, he could use tiny ice as an abrasive agent. Ice was definitely not tough enough to be used as an abrasive agent. That was, if it was regular ice. But Rio realized that ice made from water attribute magic had the characteristic of becoming harder the more magical power put into it. Of course, he did not have the leeway to do so in battle so they always end up shattering. The problem was needing considerably small ice crystals. 
Rio had seen the water jet or abrasive jet used by the company. The abrasive agent garnet was pretty much small enough to be called a powder. He had to create a large amount of ice of that size and not let them melt in water. First, he created tiny ice crystals. He took two water H2O molecules and bound them with hydrogen bond. The result was too small. In fact, it was completely impossible to see. For now, he tried connecting 30 molecules. He felt as though he could somewhat see it. No, that was his imagination. It was still not enough. Such trial and error continued until he went to bed. Even when he was starting the fire for dinner. Even when he was eating dinner. Even when he was in the bath. He connected a couple of water molecules to try to reach an optimal size. The discovery of the optimal solution to that question continued. But before he could find the optimal solution, Rio's magical power was about to be depleted. Good night. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0018 Edit July 2, 2021 Devil Change to Akuma Chapter 33 showed that they are different, although the translation of Akuma equals devil. Extra chapter thanks to my Patreons. Chapter 0018 Abrasive Jet The next day. Rio was searching for the optimal solution during his morning training run. I thought about it yesterday and this magic control at the molecular level uses a tremendous amount of magical power. As with most matters, detailed work is strenuous. It seemed that the detailed operation of magical power was not easy too. After running for more than five hours, the morning training was finally over. However, he still could not find the optimal solution for the size of the micro-ice crystals to be used as the abrasive. At the moment, he could only achieve between 60,000 and 160,000 molecules. But Rio's magical power was reduced to the point of on the verge of exhaustion just from the magical power operation in one morning. It was not expressed numerically but he somehow got the feeling that he was about to collapse. Let's take a break from this magical power operation in the afternoon. All right, it shall be practice swings and readings. Rio, who now would feel sick if he didn't move his body, was pretty much a muscle brain. He slowly, one swing at a time, devoted his entire body to the motion. It was basically a slow life so, he didn't have to rush. The Monsters Encyclopedia Beginners Edition? That Michael, pseudonym, prepared in the house covered quite a number of monsters. Naturally, as a Beginners Edition, there were bound to be intermediate and advanced monsters but Rio had not encountered any until now. However, in the last two pages of that, Monsters Encyclopedia Beginners Edition, there was a page called Unique Compilation, and there were two monsters listed there. The first was Dragon. The other was Akuma. The handwriting of these two types of Unique Compilation was different from that of the Beginners Edition. Perhaps Michael, pseudonym, added them. Dragon, one of the pinnacles of life on Phi. Found in the entire world. Lifespan, thousands to hundreds of thousands of years. Strength, entire spectrum from weak to strong, the strong ones can erase a city by itself before breakfast. Remarks, escape if encountered. Although there is a high chance that you will not be able to escape. Yup, it basically tells me that it is unbelievably strong. Encountering one is practically the end. The monsters in, beginner's edition? has explanations on their signature moves and such but nothing was written for the dragon. It's probably because the reader is not at that level. Akuma, not fallen angels. Origins are unknown. Found in the entire world. Lifespan unknown. Strength, entire spectrum from weak to strong, the strong ones can erase a city by itself before breakfast. Remarks, pray that you do not encounter one. Michael, pseudonym, probably wrote this, he said that he worked to manage this world, but despite that, the origins are unknown. 
and the final remarks are pray that you do not encounter one. What? I wonder if people who are aiming to be the strongest in the world would want to fight against such beings. It seems impossible. Yup, it's definitely impossible for me. The trope for another world reincarnation is to aim to be the strongest in the world but that is merely a trope. Let's leave it behind. It has nothing to do with me. My aim is for a slow life. After a night's sleep, Ryo's magical power was restored. Today was the day to tackle the problem of the abrasive jet. Yes, he swore firmly to his heart. An hour after swearing. The optimal solution is 90,000 to 100,000. He finally solved it. Thufafi, I won. Yes, Ryo won. All that was left was to generate a large number of ice crystals formed from a combination of these 90,000 water molecules. Normally even that was difficult enough. But for Rio, although he was unaware of it, his manipulation of molecules had greatly improved his mastery of magic control. In just 10 seconds, he produced a heap of ice abrasives on his left hand. He made an image in his head. He imagined cutting rocks while mixing the abrasive on his left hand into the water jet little by little. Abrasive jet. When Rio chanted, a thin line of water stretched out from his right hand and met a one meter wide rock in front of him and passed through to the other side with almost no resistance. He brandished his arm to the side. Karen. The rock was cut. Success. Finally. Rio acquired a water sword that could cut through rocks. On Earth, ice abrasives did not have this cutting power. The reasoning for that was because, ice is fragile? Garnet was excellent as an abrasive because of its, hardness? In the past, there was a Japanese researcher who tried utilizing garnet, ice, or walnut shells as abrasive, around the time when abrasive jets just started being commercialized. The conclusion was that the other materials apart from garnet were unsuitable for practical use. Since then, several experiments and papers have been published and much verification have been conducted such as the size of the abrasive material, the phenomenon occurring at the contact point, the optimal hardness of the various parts and such, and the machines were still evolving day by day. These were the water jet and abrasive jet. However, Rio's magically hardened ice that Earth researchers could never achieve was proven to be a sufficiently practical material as an abrasive. It could be said to exist purely due to the presence of magic on, phi. Magic creates possibilities to do things that were not possible on Earth. On Earth, matters that are theoretically possible but still impossible to realize could be made possible using magic. Rio had shown that possibility. Of course, Ryo himself was completely unaware of it. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0019 Chapter 0019C Heaven and Hell Ryo had completely mastered water jet and abrasive jet. Hunting with magic could be said to have become considerably easier. When that happened, an insatiable ambition for something that has not yet been conquered was born. Yes, it was the sea. A sea was 500 meters to the southwest of Rio's home. Michael, pseudonym, told him. Once he was accustomed to water attribute magic, he could harvest salt from seawater. Although his salt stockpile was used quite liberally for the fish sauce barrel, he still had enough to easily last him for another half a year. However, it was necessary to verify how much salt could be harvested from the sea. Furthermore, there was also seafood. He could certainly eat fish by catching freshwater fish from the river, although they were piranha-like fishes. However, saltwater fishes from the sea had their distinct tastiness too. Moreover, there were shellfishes, sea urchins, squids, octopuses, and such. Well, he'll have to dive to get them. But that was okay. He grew up in the country so he was good at swimming. To the southwest, after 400 meters from the barrier, a white sandy beach stretched across his sight. It was a scene exactly like Phuket Island or Bali Island. Of course, 
Ryo had never been to those places, he had only seen images of them. Images are important. He forgot the time for a while and just stared but he suddenly pulled himself back. Salt, I have to try harvesting it. First, he created a one meter diameter ice bucket and an ice pail to scoop up seawater. Scoop up seawater with the ice pail and pour it into the ice bucket. Pour. 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 After the bucket was mostly filled, he imagined removing the water from the ice bucket. Dehydration. The water was removed, leaving white grains and slightly colored grains. He licked the white grains. Yup, it's salty. This is salt. Success. And these with the color, oh, this is sand. Because he gathered seawater from near the sandy beach, the sand floating in the seawater was poured into the bucket. So I can acquire just salt if I gathered water from somewhere further away from the beach. Since it was an experiment, for the time being, he dumped the ice bucket and the salt in it into the sea. He aimed for the rocky area that could be seen to the north. It would be great if I can get my hands on some seafood. When he reached a rocky spot, he took off everything he was wearing and jumped into the sea without hesitation. A mesmerizing world just as he had imagined came into view. The water was crystal clear and he could see the bottom of the sea. There were colorful fish, coral, and other marine life that Rio didn't recognize. And then, Rio found one. A delicious-looking fish. He returned to the surface of the sea to take a breath before kicking the surface once more and headed toward the bottom of the sea. In his right hand was his trusty knife-tipped bamboo spear. The white fish was about fifty centimeters in length and looked like a sea bream. He pierced it with one thrust using his knife-tipped bamboo spear like a harpoon. It was a brilliant stab. However, in that instant, the world changed. At the very least, that was how it felt to Rio. The sea that was heaven to him up until that point had transformed into hell in an instant. Rio was floating. And he had forgotten. That this was not earth. This was Phi. Yes, it was a sea inhabited by monsters. The instant Rio killed that sea bream like fish in the sea, he had become the sea's enemy. The colorful fishes fled and Rio was forced to realize that the world had changed. This is bad. I should run. But it was too late. When Rio turned around, there was a school of fish called the bait ball. The bait ball formed when sardines swarm in a spherical shape to counter tuna and other predators. Sardines may still appear cute but the bait ball forming in front of Rio appeared to be formed by monsters. Yes? appeared to be? Rio did not recognize the monster. There was not a single sea monster recorded in the Monster Encyclopedia Beginner's Edition. There was just one line. Please refer to the Monster Encyclopedia Seaweller Edition for monsters that live in the sea. It affirmed that there were monsters in the sea and that there were quite many types such that a separate book was made. At this point, Rio's chances of winning were much lower. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Just like the phrase from Sun Tzu, Ryo always had information on the enemies he battled so far. Because he prepared using the Monster Encyclopedia Beginner's Edition? Even when he faced that assassin hawk, he was able to fight because he had information. But now, he had no information on his enemy at all. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained you will also suffer a defeat. His chances of winning had dropped to 50% instantly. There was also such a phrase in the world of war. Opportunities of time vouchsafed by heaven are not equal to advantages of situation afforded by the earth, and advantages of situation afforded by the earth are not equal to the union arising from the accord of men. Putting aside the opportunities of time vouchsafed by heaven, the opponent had a geographical advantage. The sea was the home ground of sea monsters. Rio, who couldn't even breathe, was nothing more than a foreigner. Harmony of men. That splendid formation of a bait ball, 
showed that their communication was perfect. There seemed to be no chance of winning. The smartest thing to do in a tight situation is to retreat. However, that was when Ryo noticed something strange. I can't kick the water. I can't even push the water with my hands. His body was not sinking. But he could not grab the water and was unable to move. Ryo was a water attribute magician. Even if he was a foreigner in the sea, he couldn't understand the situation where he could not even grasp water. The enemy did not wait idly as Ryo fell half into panic. Monsters charged out from the bait ball like a missile or torpedo and flew toward Ryo. Ice wall. It was hard to comprehend forming an ice wall in the sea but for the time being, as he couldn't move to dodge, he had no choice but to defend. However, after a couple of the monster torpedoes deflected off the ice wall, he lost control of the ice wall. It was stripped off in front of Rio and disappeared. My control of the ice wall was stolen? The monster torpedoes continued without interruption. Rio continuously created ice walls to defend against that but they were peeled off from in front of Rio and disappeared into the sea within a second of formation. Adding to the phenomenon where I can't grab the water, I see. They have taken control of the water around me. Rio was a water attribute magician and he had trained his magic control to quite an extent. Molecular control had significantly improved Ryo's magic control skill. However, this time the opponent was a bad match. Monsters in the sea, at the genetic level, they had the technique to use water attribute magic. They had used magic control of water attribute magic as part of their lives for generations. Even though he trained at an unrivaled level, Ryo, a newcomer who just became a water attribute magician just a few months ago, could not match up to them. Moreover, the enemy numbered in the thousands. Since they formed a bait ball, he could not see their actual numbers but it was probably at least a thousand. The formation of ice walls barely defended against the monster torpedoes. Although they were dispelled almost immediately after formation, he formed them just before the torpedoes collided so the ice walls that had served their purpose could be dispelled. Defense was not an issue but the problem was oxygen. Because of his daily training, he could last for about four minutes without breathing. However, in this situation, it was only four minutes? How should he overcome it? For the time being, the water around my limbs, I wonder if I can put them under my control. When he tried to use magical power to touch the seawater around him, he felt a repelling force. It was a similar sensation as when he previously tried to thaw the meat frozen in the storage by Michael, pseudonym. However, the force was much stronger this time. At the very least, for now, it seemed unlikely that Rio would be able to snatch the control back from the opponent. As expected of monsters living in the sea. Or perhaps it was due to the numbers. At any rate, there was no chance of winning by scrambling for magic control. He specifically explored the seawater under the control of the enemy. It's limited to around my hands and feet, huh? And it is quite thin. Well, even if it is thin, I can't grasp it so isn't it a fairly efficient method? It's a shot in the dark but I have no choice but to try. The principle should be the same as water jets so it should work. He imagined it in his head while continuing to generate ice walls almost unconsciously. The image of firing out water jet from the soles of both feet. However, this time, instead of the usual thin stream, it would be a thick gush. It was similar to when his water jet could not take shape in the beginning and was about the size of water coming out of a car wash hose, and he attached 32 to each leg. The momentum would be on par with the water jet. Water Jet 64 Immediately after chanting, Rio's body rose at once due to the repulsive force of the water jet that was ejected toward the seabed. He reached the surface of the sea in an instant. And he burst out of the surface with that momentum. But that was not the end. He took a breath and once again plunged his head into the sea. He was aiming for a surprise attack on the bait ball from directly above it. Sure enough, 
The bait ball was confused due to Ryo's sudden rise and disappearance. No matter how perfect the group of monsters can communicate, they could not deal with situations that they had never experienced before. Ryo plunged directly from above while they were in that state. And then, he thrust his knife-tipped bamboo spear many times. And added in some side-sweeping motions. He expected some resistance when swinging the spear in the sea but it was not that much. It damaged quite a number of the monsters. It seemed that the monsters were able to handle powerful magic control but their physical endurance was the same as an ordinary fish. With a single sweep of a bamboo spear, they fell out. It took less than a minute for the bait ball to crack and the monsters that formed it to flee. Phew, I somehow did it. Ryo let his guard down. The enemy was not just one group. The entire sea was Ryo's enemy. The best option would have been to escape to land the first time he reached the surface. That said, it was too late. From the shadow of the rock next to him, a shrimp about a meter long appeared. Only the claw on its right arm is unusually large. What's that? Bubbles? A moment later, Ryo lost consciousness. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0020 Random Extra Chapter Release Enjoy Chapter 0020 Magic Control Ryo woke up. He was still alive. He had lost consciousness for just a few seconds, probably only one or two seconds. That could be deduced because the bamboo spear that he released upon fainting was still right next to him. Why was he alive? Although he didn't know the answer to that, it wasn't the moment to think about it. The shrimp that was in the shadow of the rock was now confronting a crab. Ryo was no longer on its mind. Ryo reached out to grab the bamboo spear and rose to the surface instantly by using the water jet propulsion he used to escape from the bait ball. He flew straight out of the sea surface and crash landed on land. He hurriedly put on his sandals, picked up his waist cloth and ran toward his house as quickly as he could. Only after he entered the barrier did he take a breather. This time I survived. That said, I'm so weak, a water attribute magician's control of water was taken away from him. Ryo was depressed. In the first place, he completely did not imagine that the product of an opponent's magic could be hijacked. I'm guessing that only those made from the same attribute of magic can be hijacked, but if it can be done against other attributes, that would be a threat. Leaving aside the thought of hijacking products of other attributes, it turned out that taking the product of another being's magic and making it your own was a skill that must be acquired. Otherwise, just like this time, his magic products would be snatched away at will, and his ice walls would be dispelled one after another. Of course, the goal was not to be under the control of the other party but, honestly, he had no idea how to prevent his control from getting taken away. Ryo called it, magic control, for convenience but he honestly still did not understand the fundamentals of, magic control. His first experience was when he tried to thaw the frozen meat produced by Michael, pseudonym, and his magic was repelled. Adding to that was today's battle in the sea with the bait ball. The seawater near his hands and feet seemed to have been placed under the monster's control. That was the second example. Both repulsions occurred when Ryo tried to apply a spell. And that, repulsion, was conveyed to Ryo's mind. How did he thaw the meat frozen by Michael, pseudonym? I felt for the concentration of magical power and disconnected the molecules. Then moved on to the bond next to it and then the next one, and the next one. The molecules that were in bonded turned from ice into water. He didn't actually do anything special but perhaps with more magical power than usual as he unraveled the spell Michael, pseudonym, cast one molecule at a time. In the case of Michael's pseudonym, frozen meat, he had the conviction that it could be thawed because Michael, pseudonym, prepared it so he believed he could do so and was able to concentrate on doing so. Fundamentally the circumstances in the underwater sea battle were different. First of all, 
There was no way to tell if it could be dispelled even if he concentrated on it. While having no conviction that he could dispel it, he would have to work on it at a molecular level, one by one, and all while he was in battle. That was impossible for him at the moment. Although it was impossible for him at the moment, the fact that there were monsters that could control their opponent's magic meant that he must acquire the ability to counter that. It was directly linked to his survival. How could he learn it? He felt that perhaps the right way of doing it would be to improve his skills in affecting the bonds and vibrations at the molecular level. Was there no other way? Right, there was an orthodox training when it came to magic control, or magical power control. In the case of earth magic, it would be something along the lines of making figurines. Gay, that would be for earth magic. Why did I choose water magic? The grass was always greener on the other side. All right, I will create Tokyo Tower with ice. He had seen it in some anime. The slime was doing it. The other thing to sort out is that shrimp. Ryo felt like he had seen it somewhere, but he couldn't remember. No idea. I'll put it on hold. Moving forward was important. Next matter would be why didn't I die? Shrimp San was satisfied with just knocking me out. No, no, that would be an overly convenient interpretation. In the first place, during that time, Ryo sensed that the entire sea was his enemy. And he felt that his sensation was not mistaken. The shrimp attacked Ryo immediately after the bait ball, so the assumption that Ryo was the enemy of all sea life was the most fitting. Of course, Ryo was reaping what he sowed for killing the sea bream like fish in the sea without thinking. Ryo, who was the enemy of the entire sea, fainted from the shrimp's bubbles. That meant that Ryo's presence or atmosphere, including his consciousness itself, disappeared. Perhaps, at that instant, he became an existence that was incapacitated and no longer an enemy? In that case, it was certainly possible that the situation became Rio was not an enemy of the entire sea, and the sea returned to normal, where the shrimp and crab battled for survival. Yeah, I don't know for sure, but I guess that might be the case. Nevertheless, I can only say that I was really lucky. There wouldn't be a second chance. There were so many things that he had to train. He might have become a little conceited from the fact that he defeated two greater boars and was able to use water jet at a practical level. The sea monsters taught him that he was still had a long way to go. Rio thought about it. There was no use feeling depressed forever. From the next day, he ran while practicing magic control. Well, that aspect was not much different from before. While running, he would either model a palm-sized Tokyo Tower with ice or construct a huge five-story pagoda with ice in the center of his running circle. Apart from that, Ryo also did some experimenting when hunting. His targets were the lesser rabbits that would become his delicious meal after that. In the case of humans, about 60% of their bodies were made of water. That should be the same for monsters too. Although there may be differences depending on the type of monsters, he could imagine that they had about 50% to 70% water content. If so, Ryo wondered if he could directly manipulate the Moisture? Within the monster's body. He imagined it in his mind. Freezing the moisture within the body of the lesser rabbit leaping at him, specifically the blood that was pumping in its body. Blood freeze. It was repelled. Just like when he tried to thaw the meat frozen by Michael, pseudonym. And similarly, Rio received feedback in his mind that it was repelled. This can be used for training. From then, whenever he hunted rabbits and boars, he made sure to practice freezing their blood before dealing the final strike. But he did not succeed in freezing their blood even once. Blood freeze was unsuccessful even on the blood that flowed out from their bodies. However, once the monsters died, the freezing could succeed. In that case, it becomes possible to freeze the entire body of the monsters. As an extension of the experiment, how about freezing a living monster? 
Or to be more precise, was it possible to freeze the water molecules in the air around the monster? Starting from the conclusion, Rio couldn't do it. It was still possible to freeze the space that was 10 centimeters away from the monster, but if he tried to freeze the water molecules in the space nearer than that, it would be repelled. In other words, the air around the monster may be, under the control, of the monster. Was that what they call personal space? In the past, he succeeded in forming dozens of water jets at a short distance to the greater bore and skewering it, but it seemed that he succeeded because they were launched 30 centimeters away from the greater bore. The more he tried, the clearer magic became. And now there was magic control. There's still so much that I must know. Rio vowed in his heart. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0021 Chapter 0021 Delahan Probably about a year passed since the time Real lost consciousness in the sea. Till today, he has not had success with Blood Freeze. That said, it would be impossible to succeed in just a year or so. Nevertheless, he did not skip any of his daily magic control training. Incidentally, he could now thaw the frozen meat prepared by Michael, pseudonym, in an instant. And that Rio, for the past few months, has been visiting a certain location every night. It was the shores of a lake in the central part of the large wetlands, beyond the northern forest. When the moon reaches the highest point in the night sky, it would appear. A headless horse ridden by a headless knight, an existence called the Dullahan. That Dullahan was not holding on to his head with his right hand. Why was there a headless knight in the Rondo Forest? Perhaps there was a prospering nation in the past where Rondo Forest currently stood. That said, he had not seen any signs of past human life, and he had not found any man-made objects. In Earth's mythology, Dullahans are Ireland fairies and are not a knight's apparition. With that in mind, Rio casually changed his assumption from there were humans here in the past to it might be a fairy or something that traveled into Rondo Forest. To Rio, the value of that Dullahan's existence was to be his sword mentor. Of course, since it was missing its head, it couldn't speak. However, when Rio holds up his sword, he calls it a sword but it is just a carved out wooden sword coated with ice on the surface to improve its durability. The Delahan would hold up its sword too. Somewhat along with the feeling of again? This troublesome fellow. Of course, it didn't have a head so this was entirely imagined by Rio. And so the sword fight began. In the first place, the Delahan was not recorded in the Monster Encyclopedia Beginner's Edition? In other words, it was either not a monster or not at beginner level. Looking at it from the standpoint of whether he could defeat it, the current Rio was probably still incapable of that. It didn't use magic. So Rio didn't use magic either. He only wore ice armor? That protected his body. But it was considerably strong in terms of just sword technique. Furthermore, he had to look up at it. I'll act as your training partner. He felt it convey that intent. Naturally, it didn't have a head so it was all in his imagination. The Delahan would turn away once it dealt three successful attacks that would cause fatal damage to Rio. Come again whenever you wish. It seemed to convey something along that line. Conversely, Rio didn't know what would happen if he dealt three fatal blows to it. In the first place, he had never even dealt damage to it even once. Recently, their battle duration had increased considerably. In the beginning, it was an instantaneous kill but nowadays, the battle would continue for about an hour. Of course, he still had a lot of discontents. In the first place, there was no other way to improve interpersonal battle, whether it is martial arts, wushu, or even in games, than to have repeated interpersonal combat over and over until your body personally gathers the experience, knowledge, and movements. In that sense, that was an extremely valuable experience for Rio who always performed practice swings on his own, but his opponent was a Delahan. To some extent, breathing was crucial in understanding interpersonal combat. 
Although it is important to adjust one's breathing, it is also important to read the opponent's breathing. But the Dullahan doesn't breathe. In fact, it doesn't have anything above its neck. As such, Ryo could not accumulate experience in reading your opponent's breathing. In addition, there is also something called footwork or footsteps. Footwork is important in any battle. In interpersonal combat, one could obtain important information with footwork and use it to predict the opponent's movements. That is the reason why kendo and kenjutsu practitioners wear hakama. By wearing a hakama, the opponent will not see your footsteps and will not be able to gain an advantage from it. The Dullahan doesn't wear a hakama so Ryo wanted to learn that too, but due to the overwhelming difference in combat ability, the Dullahan hardly moved from its spot. It looked as though a kendo master parrying children without moving at all. That's right, Ryo was still being treated as a child. In that case, I have to become stronger and make it move. Of course, there were benefits too. No matter what kind of martial arts or wushu you practice, by practicing on your own, the content will inevitably be biased toward attacks. But that was not ideal. Especially in Phi, where he was constantly in a life-threatening situation, neglecting his defense would be foolish. In that sense, it was quite practical to parry or avoid the Dullahan's attack before retaliating. However, Ryo still didn't understand much. But tonight Ryo was different from usual. His body movements were sharper than usual and he was able to accurately anticipate the Dullahan's attacks. Perhaps because of that, he parried the Dullahan's continuous attacks, was able to evade the final downward diagonal slash with a half step, and followed up with a slash at the Dullahan's right arm. Well, if the opponent was a human or an ordinary monster, the arm would have been sliced off but the Dullahan's arm did not fly off. At the same time, the Dullahan's sword that was headed toward the ground from the downward diagonal slash transitioned into an upward diagonal slash and struck Ryo's torso. Tonight, Ryo once again fell after the third fatal blow. There was almost no damage to his body due to the ice armor but he fell because of the mental damage. Normally the Dullahan would sheath its sword then and disappear after kicking the headless horse but today was different. It approached Ryo who had fallen and took out a knife with a distorted shape. The blade was about 10 centimeters long, the protrusion between the blade and handle called the hilt was also about 10 centimeters in total length but the handle was long, longer than 20 centimeters. Ryo noticed. The length of the handle was the same as the wooden sword he was holding about 24 centimeters long. Therefore, when viewed from the side, the knife looked like a cross. Ryo had never heard of such a knife. The Dullahan placed its left hand on the knife handle, and when it placed its right hand on the base of the blade, it moved its right hand beyond the tip of the blade as though there was an invisible blade. Then, a blade of water formed along with the movement of its hand. A water blade! And when the Dullahan put in magical power, it froze and became an ice sword. So that explains the handle length. The Dullahan dispelled the ice blade and handed it to Ryo. You're asking me to use this? When Ryo accepted it, the Dullahan kicked its headless horse as usual and disappeared. That was such a fantasy setting. Even on his way home, Ryo repeatedly formed the ice blade on the sword. Magic could flow through that sword without any stress to an astonishing level. As though it was made for Ryo. It could be said to be a sword made specifically for water attribute magicians. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0022 Chapter 0022 Once Again Into the Sea The sword fight with the Dullahan gave him confidence in fighting with a sword although at best he could get one hit in. Nevertheless, he gained confidence. He also had confidence that his magic control had improved considerably, although he had not succeeded in blood freeze yet. It was unclear if it could succeed in the first place. In any case, Ryo was thinking of verifying his growth. It was inevitable. Ryo had not entered the sea ever since that time he lost consciousness. 
He obtained salt by collecting seawater from land and evaporating the water but he never entered the sea. If he really wanted to eat fish, he would hunt river fish. Yes, the inevitable was undersea combat. The competition for magic control with the bait ball, he must win. At that time, he certainly did disperse the bait ball. But that was nothing more than a surprise attack he used to escape from the magic control. To live in, fi, that was not enough. In the end, the only way was to gain confidence by building on successful experiences. Rio stood on the rocky spot and glared at the sea. His appearance was the same as before. His only weapon was the knife-tipped bamboo spear in his right hand. Alongside his waistcloth and sandals on the beach was the knife he received from the Dullahan, the ice sword known as Murasane, named by Rio. He was particular about keeping the same equipment as before. Now here I come! He dove in and stabbed a nearby fish with his bamboo spear. He wasn't there to enjoy the scenery like the previous time. Since then he had trained further, and with the increase of his endurance came an increase in his lung capacity, but even then, his limit was at most five minutes. That was probably the human limit. In that case, he should start the fight as soon as possible. The instant the fish was speared, the world changed just like before. Like a repeat of the past, a bait ball came from the front. That was exactly his aim and Rio confirmed that he was in a situation where he could not grasp the water with his hands and feet. All right, then I will snatch the control of the seawater around my hands and feet back. Imagining it loosely will result in repulsion? However, for Rio who had gained greater magic control in an order of magnitude, just by imagining along with slightly more magical power, his hands and feet were able to grab the water. All right. I got it back. Next was Rio's turn. He imagined it in his mind. The scene where Rio freely controlled the seawater the bait ball was in and that the monsters that formed the bait ball were not able to move. The world is mine. The moment he chanted that in his mind, the bait ball began to distort. The monsters that made up the bait ball could no longer control their posture and movements. Does that mean I can freeze them too? Ice Coffin The distorted bait ball froze. Instead of freezing the monsters that made up the bait ball, he froze the seawater around them. On land, in the past he failed to freeze anything within 10 centimeters of the monster's body but now, against monsters that seemed to have strong control of water magic, he was able to freeze their surroundings. Rio was extremely satisfied with that result. He succeeded in neutralizing the entire bait ball without using his bamboo spear. Using the power of magic control that he had trained so far. Therefore, it was unavoidable that he was late in noticing the appearance of the huge squid in front of him. Just the previous time, the shrimp made him fall unconscious because he was careless after defeating the bait ball, but this time the same pattern appeared once more. Yup, that can't be helped anymore. The huge squid might be the legendary creature called the Kraken on Earth. Its total length was 40 meters. But his reaction was quick after he noticed it. Ice wall five layers. The moment it was deployed, something hit the ice wall and the ice wall broke. The ice wall five layers was broken in one hit. That was unexpected. Ice wall five layers. Ice wall five layers. Ice wall five layers. He deployed three copies of the spell. However this time, his control of the ice walls was robbed and they were dispelled the moment he cast it. The ice wall cast under magic control that he painstakingly trained was easily taken control of by the Kraken. Ice coffin. He used the area freezing magic that he froze the bait ball with to freeze the area around the Kraken. However, even though the ice was generated in an instant, it quickly dissipated and returned to seawater. The Kraken snatched control of it. This is impossible. Let's flee. Water Jet 32 Water jets sprouted out from the base of his feet, and he made an emergency escape. 
Even the Kraken did not anticipate that action. Escape was a success. He hurriedly put on his sandals, picked up his waistcloth and neurosame, and ran toward his home as quickly as possible. He could finally take a breather once he entered the barrier. The sea is terrifying. Even though I once again lost, this time to the Kraken that appeared afterward, I was able to win decisively against the bait ball. Right, I have certainly improved. It's just that it is too soon to face the Kraken. That is definitely a boss character that should only appear when I become much stronger. He was unpleasantly made aware of its level of magic control that was completely different from the bait ball. In other words, it was possible to raise his magic control even further, probably. As expected, I have to train further. I've been making a five-story pagoda but now let's make it a Tokyo sky tree. There seemed to be a huge mistake there but that was part of Rio. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0023 Chapter 0023 Paddy Field Development Rio was not always fighting. After all, his goal was to live a slow life. A slow life accompanied by constant life-or-death battles? With such a slogan, no one would even consider living a slow life in the countryside. First Spices He had dried the peppers he picked and finally made black pepper. That was extremely useful in meat dishes. In addition, salted or freeze-dried peppers are sometimes called green peppers? They are used as an ingredient in stir-fry in Southeast Asia, but Rio salted them to create the green peppers. Because when he tried to freeze-dry them, it just became dehydrated peppers. Only the dry was performed, and the freeze was ignored so the end product was dehydrated goods. However, the ones that gave him the most sense of accomplishment were the fruits. Ichizuku? That looked like a fig. Rindo? that looked and tasted like an apple, and mango, which he found recently that was exactly like mango. Those were the ones listed in the Plant Encyclopedia Beginner's Edition, but there were unlisted fruits too. Papaya, loquat, and even watermelon. He could understand finding wild papaya and loquat, but he never imagined that he would find wild watermelon. They were smaller than any species of watermelon found in Japan had almost no sweetness, and the external appearance resembled a melon more than a watermelon but, once cut open, the iconic red flesh could be seen. Rio was moved to tears when he saw the red flesh after cutting it open. Although the complete lack of sweetness also caused Rio to cry a different kind of tears. However, there was a huge problem in living his slow life. Till today, he had not found a single antidote grass. Failing to find it after searching so hard probably meant that it was an issue with the environment. Although it wasn't recorded that it grows well in cold regions. Perhaps the Rondo forest was too warm, or rather, the climate could be called an everlasting summer so it could not grow. And, as feared, that was true for soybeans as well. He couldn't find soybeans either. That said, he had replaced soy sauce with fish sauce. It was slightly different from the soy sauce that the Japanese eat, but it was a difference that could be found if you searched for soy sauces nationwide. There was no problem there. But there was no replacement for miso. As long as he couldn't get soybeans miso, Rio had already given up on it. And finally, the main carbohydrate, rice. Rio had a certain project in mind. Project name paddy field development in Rondo Forest. Just like the name implied, the idea was to develop a paddy field to grow rice. The same plan to establish a paddy field that he failed in the past. The plan where, without earth attribute magic or tools for creating a paddy field, he tried dropping icicle lances from the sky or causing steam explosions to cultivate the land. At that time, it was a complete failure and he put off the issue but it was an unavoidable problem that he eventually had to face head-on. And today was the day to face it head-on. 
First, he secured a square piece of land with 60 meters on each side that reached up until the very edge of the barrier. He made ice spears on all four ends and connected them by tying ivy. That would act as a replacement for the thread that indicates the water horizon. The inside of the ivy would be the paddy field. For the time being, the procedure for cultivating the paddy field was digging up the soil and crushing it into fine pieces to make it look like a field, and then supplying water to moisten the entire field. At that time, there would be holes underneath the soil so no matter how much water is added, it will not collect. While adding water, a tractor or cow would mix the mud and water and seal the holes underneath the soil. The previous time, he reached a deadlock at the very first step of digging up the soil. I am different from how I was before. This time, Rio was exuding a fighting spirit throughout his entire body. Ice wall. The inside of the ivy border was encased on all sides with ice walls. And then it began, the Symposium of Water and Ice. Icicle Lance 256. 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 Ice spears were created 40 meters up in the air one after another, and they free fell to the planned paddy field. High density, high speed, continuous bombing. If one spear was not enough, he could fire a ton of spears. Basically, a brute force solution. Of course, he didn't think that would be sufficient to solve the problem. Water Jet 128. 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 Thick water jets that were also continuously fired crushed the soil chunks into tiny pieces. Ice spears dropped from the sky and water jets were fired from a close distance. If seen from afar, it would probably be quite a surreal sight. But the actual situation was erupting soil, soil, and more soil. The soil blown upward was crushed by the water jets. That scene lasted for about 10 minutes. Hundreds of continuous creation was a strain even for Rio. He knelt and adjusted his breathing. He had never used such an attack in waves even against monsters. Well, it was probably possible because his target was the stationary ground. The common expression in battlefield reports was that the ground at the bombing site was scooped out but the original ground in Rio's paddy field could no longer be seen. As though it was scooped up, crushed, and mixed up and down by a tractor. Yeep, that's how it is done. The first step was complete. Next was to add water to moisten all the soil. In places like Japan with improved paddy fields, there would be faucets where you can get as much water as you wish by twisting it open. Of course, the people would continue to pay for land improvement fee for decades, generations and pretty much forever. Naturally, in addition to that, there would be a water usage fee too. Nevertheless, not having to worry about water was a great thing for farming. Famines are often caused by water shortages in the east and west. However, here there was a man who could provide water freely. What a pairing! Undoubtedly, the vocation of a water attribute magician is agriculture. Let's get this done in one go. Squall The squall that he used to wash away the poisonous fog from the kite snake and used to water plants such as the Ichizuku in the garden. It was quite a violent sight to see that fall onto the 60-meter-squared land. That violent sight continued for about two minutes. It was sufficient to cause the soil to become considerably muddy. There was some pooling of water as well. But if left alone, the accumulated water would quickly flow underground and it would return to an ordinary field. Normally, a tractor would be used here to scrape the soil and mud. But Rio didn't have such a machine. But of course, he didn't need one. Ice wall two-step. An ordinary ice wall was two meters high, but this ice wall two-step was twice as high at four meters tall. Of course, with that, it should be fine to prevent mud from flying out. Icicle Lance 256. Icicle Lance 256. 
Icicle Lance 256. Icicle Lance 256. Icicle Lance 256. He created icicle lances one after another at about 30 meters from the ground, lower than before, and dropped them onto the paddy field plot. The thought process was the same. If there was no tractor, firing a ton of spears into the ground would achieve the same purpose. Then, from time to time, he would chant squall to replenish the water and once again fired icicle lance to stir the mud. Rio continued to fire icicle lance for 30 minutes at a much slower pace compared to when he started the land cultivation. With this, Rio didn't actually know how much the stirred up bottom was clogged up. However, the mud seemed to have become quite fine. Finally, the mud surface in the water must be level. Otherwise, when the rice seedlings were planted, some of the seedlings will be submerged underwater in some places. Flooding and tilling the soil were extremely important steps before planting the seedlings. Right, they are important for the seedlings, eh? Seedlings. Rio was stunned. I didn't prepare seedlings. That's right. Usually, before preparing the paddy field, it was necessary to grow the rice husk into seedlings in a different location for a month before replanting the seedlings. But, Rio didn't prepare the seedlings. He felt to his knees crestfallen. The preparations for the paddy field today were completely wasted. And no, I was able to verify that I can prepare the paddy field so it was not a complete waste. Yup, it wasn't a waste. It shouldn't be. I hope it wasn't. With his head drooping down, Rio could not stand up for some time. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0024 Extra chapter as thanks for my Patreons. Chapter 0024 Final Battle Against the Assassin Hawk While hunting for meat in the East Forest is routine, it appeared in front of Rio. Ice Shield Rio sensed an invisible wind attribute attack magic coming from in front and intercepted it with ice shield. The opponent probably had no intention of killing him with that blow. It appeared. With its right eye shut. That assassin hawk? But its color is now completely black and more importantly, it seems bigger than before. Yes, it was the assassin hawk that Rio had life or death struggles with twice. The first time, he crushed the assassin hawk's right eye. The second time, he defeated the disciple that the assassin hawk brought along. To Rio, it was the first opponent that made him conscious of death. And not only once but twice. They both felt that they were fated enemies. But this time, it had a different dominating presence. Just like its physical transformation, there was a change in its presence or majesty. It felt as though it had a different aura around it. There's no mistaking that it has become considerably stronger. Did it evolve or something? At any rate, I won't be able to escape and I don't intend to escape either. Ice armor. Something invisible flew from one eye toward Rio. A strengthened air slash. Ice wall five layers. But the ice wall five layers were shattered in one hit. Furthermore, Air slashes continuously assaulted Rio. Rio evaded the invisible attacks. And even as he evaded, he never took his sight off one eye. One eye persistently attacked repeatedly from a long distance. And Rio dodged all of them. That exchange lasted for about three minutes. At the same time it released an air slash, one eye disappeared. Ice wall ten layers. A powered-up version of the defense specialized ice wall five layers. One eye charged in together with the air slash. A breakdown charge. What an enviable technique for wind magic users. TLN, to recap, the breakdown charge is Rio's own term. The previous time it was explained as having three clones firing ranged attacks and then following up with a direct charge. Although that is a technique that only monsters can use and something human wind attribute magicians can't. Just as one eye's charge was about to be stopped by the ice wall. Icicle Lance 16 
he shot icicle lances from the ground toward one eye. One eye dodged it with instant lateral movements that completely ignored aerodynamics. In that state, it swung its right wing against the ice wall ten layers as though a boxer releasing a right hook. Shit! Rio crouched down at once. Sherry. With a sharp sound, the wings cut through the ice wall and continued over Rio's crouched head. So it can fight in close combat too. Cold sweat ran down Rio's back from the terrifying sharpness of the wings. One eye continued to fire air slashes consecutively from a close distance. And Rio endured by continuously generating ice walls. Of course, Rio did not remain pushed back. Before it noticed, sixteen icicle lances had formed in the air. They free fell vertically from directly above it. It was the fastest ice spear that added gravity acceleration to the speed of a long-range attack. However, one eye showed that it could evade that as well. It flew backward as if it was lightly backstepping. As though it was conveying that I had seen that technique before. Yes, Ryo did kill one eye's disciple with icicle lances from the air. However, the speed of the spears was completely different from back then. For now, he had to return to square one. At that moment, the atmosphere around one eye changed. At the same time, the ice wall and the ice armor around him disappeared. G-U-H Ice armor The ice armor did not form even after chanting. Did it snatch my control? He quickly tried to regain magic control, but something was different. There was no repulsion sensation that would always be there in such cases. In retrospect, even when the bait ball and kraken took control, he could at least still create the ice walls. The created objects were taken control of. But this time, the creation itself could not be done. As if magic did not exist. Or magic was made ineffective. Don't tell me this is magic nullification. He didn't know if such a thing existed. However, it was best to think of it that way. In that case, it was pretty bad. Water Jet 16 As expected, the water jets did not form. It gained such a troublesome skill after evolving. At the very least, in the entry for Assassin Hawk in the Monster Encyclopedia Beginner's Edition, there was not a single mention of magic nullification. Meanwhile, one eye seemed to be accumulating something. Another new technique. It might be something dangerous from wind attribute magic. Wind attribute? No, no way. Was it a coincidence that he looked up at the sky and immediately let go of the knife-tipped bamboo spear he had in his right hand? Or was it due to his refined combat intuition from his daily interpersonal battle with the Dullahan? In an instant, the sky flashed and lightning struck. The lightning fell on the standing bamboo spear instead of Rio. However, Rio, who was right next to it, was blown away by the impact. But he immediately got up. If he showed even a small opening, one eye would charge in. It probably saw him sway as he got up. And it might have judged that his magic was sealed and that he no longer had a weapon. Or perhaps it was thinking that even if the thunder didn't defeat him, it managed to snatch his weapon away. One Eye charged in. Rio rolled to the left to dodge One Eye's assault and pulled out Murasame that was on his waist. The moment he pulled it out, he formed the ice blade and swung it sideways toward One Eye. That seemed to have surprised One Eye. It moved quite a fair bit backward. Surprisingly, even though it moved backward, it didn't retreat any further. It seemed to wish to settle the fight with close quarters combat. That was what Rio wanted. As long as his magic was sealed, he had no way of surviving apart from relying on close quarters combat. Furthermore, not all magic was sealed as he could still somehow create the ice blade on Murasame. He found it perplexing but that wasn't the time to think about it. One eye had the hook that could cut through all ten layers of his ice wall. There was no telling if it was hiding anything else. He had to sharpen all his senses. Yes, just like when he was facing the Dullahan. 
However, when he thought about that, he was relieved. That was what he had always been doing. As usual, look straight ahead. After a moment of stillness, while floating in the air, one eye released a right and left hook. Ryo carefully received it with Murasim. He did not dodge, but instead received it. He was confident that the ice blade on Murasim could defend against one eye's hook that could cut through ten layers of ice wall. Far from breaking, it didn't even chip. Something flew from between its beak toward Ryo's eyes. Ryo shook his head and dodged it. It was probably some form of air slash. An air slash that could be released with its mouth and not its wings. But he didn't dwell on it. If his thoughts were entrapped, he would not be able to see what he needed to see. Facing one eye in close quarters combat was quite troublesome. Air slashes from left right hooks in the beak and each feather could be shot like a shuriken. The speed of the shuriken was not fast but facing more means of attack from an opponent in close quarters combat, that alone was enough to be troublesome. Ryo would have been defeated a long time ago if he had not been devoted to defense. However, the diverse attacks including the shuriken were insufficient to break Ryo's defense. One Eye's attack and Ryo's defense had been ongoing ever since the start of the close quarters combat. Perhaps frustrated by his unbreakable defense, one eye's right hook was slightly overextended. Ryo took advantage of that. He intercepted one eye's right hook slightly ahead than usual in a place where it could not channel much power to and parried it away. Toward one eye whose posture was broken, he mowed down sideways near its neck. One eye flew further backward but Ryo stepped in and followed up with a thrust. While dodging even further backward, the air slash that it threw as a last resort with its beak was parried with Murasame, and he thrust three times consecutively. But one eye dodged them all. After one eye evaded the triple thrust, Ryo's assault paused momentarily. At that moment, one eye aimed a left hook at Ryo's head. Ryo couldn't prevent it. He pulled his left foot half a step back. He dodged it with footwork and by moving his center of gravity. And then, this time, he shifted his center of gravity from his left foot to his right foot, took a large step forward with his right foot, released his right hand grip from Murasim, and thrust out with his left hand. A one-handed left hand thrust. He felt a solid response from Murasim in his left hand. His thrust pierced exactly under its beak or, in human terms, around its throat. A fatal strike. It fell to the ground and spat out blood from its beak but yet its one eye was trained on Ryo. There was still indelible hatred in its eye. Yes. I am the one who took your life and the life of your disciple. I guess you can't accept the outcome after fighting with all your might. Ryo did not let down his guard even though he was approaching casually. At the very least, I was able to grow because I met you. I am grateful to you for being the catalyst for my growth. You even evolved for revenge and your disciple. In honor of your proud appearance, I will give you a merciful end. On that day, one fate was extinguished. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV 1C0025 Chapter 0025 Dragon the day after the battle to the death with one eye, Ryo returned to the battlefield. He didn't have any specific reason for doing so. It was on a whim. Seeing the battlefield once more, he finally felt a sense of victory. But that was not a place for joy. Something landed in front of Ryo. Ryo's mind turned blank the moment he saw it. Except for just one phrase. The end. Dragon. A dragon that shined red and had a total body length of 50 meters. His mind was entirely blank but it started spinning at high speed after a few seconds. Why is a dragon here? No, that doesn't matter right now. I have to do something to escape. No, is it even possible to escape? That is impossible no matter how I look at it. Fight? No, impossible. Even if the world is overturned, it is impossible to fight that. 
There's too much of a difference in our class as living organisms. No joke, it could kill me with just the tip of its little finger. He was thinking desperately so he didn't catch it. The human there. The voice that spoke directly into Ryo's mind. Mumu? Wasn't this the method for telepathy with humans? It's been a long time so I don't remember. Human, can you hear me? Eh? What? I hear something? Ryo finally returned to reality. Ah, uh, so you can hear me. It's me, the dragon in front of you. This is telepathy. Ah, uh, yes, I'm sorry, my mind was shaken. I can hear you. That's great, that's great, sorry for surprising you. I have something to ask you. Have you seen a bird that evolved from an assassin hawk around here? Eh? He had more than seen it. So much so that it was probably the one eye that Rio killed the day before. On one hand, it didn't seem like it would be possible to lie and on the other hand, even if he did, it would be a disaster once he was exposed. Yes, I have. Rio replied and told the truth. Everything from his fated connection with the one-eyed assassin hawk to the result of yesterday's battle. If it was your kin, I am terribly sorry. I apologize. Rio said and lowered his head. Uma, I see. So you killed it. The dragon replied and thought for a while before opening its mouth. No, it spoke with telepathy. It's okay, it was not my kin. It was just that the bird's reaction suddenly disappeared yesterday. I would have known if someone from the dragon tribe ate it but that didn't seem to be the case. I was curious as to why it disappeared so I came down from the mountain. It said and looked up at the east mountain. Yes, the mountain that Rio thought seems like there would be dragons living there actually had dragons living there. I see. I certainly did kill that one-eyed assassin hawk. I'm content with knowing the cause of its disappearance. It was the first evolution in hundreds of years in this forest. But you were able to beat it. Didn't it negate magic? Yes, it did. That was terrible. I'm a magician so magic nullification is breaking the rules. Yup, yup, the dragon nodded. Then, its gaze suddenly stopped at Rio's waist. That thing on your waist, what a rare item you have. Waist? Rio took out Murasame and showed it. By now, the initial fear of the dragon had disappeared. Rio's nerves may be thicker than he thinks. Ooh, it is the Fairy King's sword. Fairy King? This was given to me by the Dullahan that appeared every night at the lake in the northern wetlands. In Irish folklore, Dullahans are fairies. I don't know about Dullahans, but if it gave that to you then that was the Fairy King. The one in this forest is the Water Fairy King, I'm sure of it. Ah, uh, I am a water attribute magician so it gave it to me. Thanks to this sword, I was able to survive yesterday. I see, a water magician. That's why the fairy king favors you. But the fairy king didn't teach you water magic? Eh? No, it taught me swordsmanship and did not show magic to me even once. What? You're a water magician but you learned the sword from the water fairy king? Not water magic? We well, I'm not sure so maybe there is a relationship to it. That fairy king has also lived for hundreds of thousands of years like us. At any rate, since you were given a sword, it certainly favors you. It's not a bad thing. Fufufu, Rio didn't know what was interesting but the dragon laughed. Um, I have some questions to ask but... Moo? I don't mind, you can ask me anything. The dragon nodded magnanimously. I wish to know the size of this Rondo forest and what kind of place it is. What a vague question. Never mind. This forest, right, Rondo? Yes, that is what they call it since long ago. I can't tell you the size. Since I do not know your units of measurement. Ah, that's right, that is correct, sorry. Mama. That said, in terms of size, it is about the size of a small continent. In the past, 
It was also called the Rondo subcontinent. Continent. Rio failed to imagine it. Well, he did wish to Michael, pseudonym, for a slow life where there are no people, but this was too extreme. A subcontinent. It is surrounded by the sea on three sides, east, south, and west. To the north, there is a mountain range that runs from northwest to southeast, and another that collides into it from the east to west. You can say that it perfectly covers the north side of this subcontinent. Therefore, humans do not come this way from the human settlements in the north. To my knowledge, you are the only person currently living in this Rondo subcontinent. Wahahaha, <laughs> the dragon laughed out loud. So this is such an isolated world. Hmm, you've lived here without knowing? In the first place, where did you come from? It wasn't something to hide in particular so Rio told it that he was reincarnated from a different world. That's something rare too, occasionally people from other worlds come but. At that moment, a roar was heard coming from the east. Mumu, sorry but I have been called. I wanted to talk a little more but we'll meet again. After saying that, it stood up ready to fly off. You um, please at least tell me your name. I am Rio. Rio, huh? I am Rowan. We shall meet again, Rio. Ah, but don't come close to the East Mountain. Some dragons attack without asking questions. Rowan said before flying off to the East. Phew, dragons have such oppressive force. I wonder if its position is like a gatekeeper who surveys the surroundings. That's why it had such a presence. I can't imagine the top rank of that mountain. Yeah, I will make sure to keep away. He once again vowed strongly to his heart. On the other hand, Rowan, the Dragon King, headed for the East Mountain. Even so, he was such a strange man. Or was he really human? Are there such humans? That's the first time I've seen something like that in hundreds of thousands of years. Or was he a human mutant or an evolved species? I've never heard of such a thing though. Kukuku, anyway it is interesting. Even after living for so long, there are still things that I don't understand. I think I can see why the fairy king has his eyes on him. Thousands of years have passed since it came to this subcontinent. I think it was excited to meet something interesting after a long time too, Wilma. I can understand that feeling. However, I shouldn't interfere too much. It would be a waste. Watching as a bystander seems to be the most fun. Wahahaha. It was a long time before Rio met Rowan again. As for the Dullahan who seems to be the fairy king, Rio would continue to practice swordsmanship as usual tonight. Yes, being taught water magic didn't happen after all. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0026 Chapter 0026 Slow Life Crisis since the decisive battle with One Eye and the encounter with Ruin, about twenty years had passed by Rio's experience. And a crisis came knocking on Rio's slow life. That day, Rio was heading to the sea. He wanted to procure salt and try grilled saltwater fish for the first time in a long time. He hadn't met the Kraken since that time he dived into the sea and was about to be killed by it. Well, that said, he had only been to the sea a couple of times a year. After all, the memory of almost dying several times in the sea might have unconsciously influenced Rio. Despite being a water attribute magician, the sea was his weakness. No, the sea is not my weakness. The kraken is my weakness. I've already eaten that shrimp. Yes, the shrimp that caused Rio to faint the first time he dived into the sea. He had defeated it and ate it. He also examined the structure of its one large arm closely. The most surprising part was that despite emitting such powerful bubbles, it was not a monster but a normal shrimp. He noticed that it was an enlarged version of the snapping shrimp found in the sea near Japan because it reminded him of a video he saw. By engaging its overgrown claw, it would generate bubbles and the bursting of the bubbles would generate a shockwave. 
It was a phenomenon called bubble burst or cavitation that would generate plasma and could reach extreme temperatures of 4400 OC. The snapping shrimp in the sea near Japan grows to about 5 C in length, but it is capable of generating plasma at that size. The three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, and the fourth state called plasma. The power of nature is terrifying because it can generate that with just the shape of a claw. By eating such a shrimp, that fear was overcome. However, he was still a long way from overcoming the fear of the kraken. Now then, the sight that Rio saw of the sea was messy. In contrast to the usual beautiful white sandy beach and the blue horizon beyond, there were things that weren't natural and definitely man-made on the beach. And yes, it was strewn about. It was as if a ship had wrecked and the debris had washed up on the shore. And people were lying among the wreckage. Three people? It was the first time in twenty years, Rio's body clock, since transporting from Earth to Phi, that he met humans. Rio carefully approached and placed his hand on the nape of the neck to check for a pulse. Two of them had already passed away. The remaining one, in his mid-twenties, had dull red hair, a solid physique, and held a sword in his left hand that gave a sense of presence. It was clear that he was a man who lived by the sword. Leaving him here would probably be bad for my mental health. Rio had terrible thoughts. Wagon. A cart made of ice with a total length of about two meters was created. It could be called a self-propelled wagon as it could follow just simple movements behind Rio. Originally, it was conceived because he used to generate an ice bond and slide his luggage over it but it became troublesome and would be too difficult to carry if he hunted too much prey in one go. He actually wanted to make something like a golem that could walk on two legs. It would be able to move on any rough terrain. But he couldn't get a golem to work after many tries and even now after 20 years, it still did not work. For the time being, because he travels multiple times a year to and from this beach, he had built a cobblestone road. With that foundation laid, the wagon could move sufficiently well. He loaded the still-living man who appeared to be a swordsman and the items around him onto the wagon. Salt. I guess I can come back later for it. However, Rio noticed it when he was loading him. There was a fairly deep cut on the swordsman's left arm and blood was gushing out. Crimson blood, seems that his artery was cut. At this rate, he'll die of blood loss, yeah? He looked around for something that could be used. The basics of stopping blood flow was by compression. Just pressing down on the bleeding point with a cloth or something is effective but the items that drifted onto the beach were dirty and he worried about infectious diseases. But other than that, there was no cloth or thread around. There's no helping it. Rio muttered as he pressed down onto the sleeve of the swordsman's clothes that was above the cut and started compression. 60% of an adult's body is made of water. Two-thirds of it is in cells and the remaining one-third is interstitial fluid and blood. That means that I, a water attribute magician, can manipulate human blood too. Rio imagined it. Within the swordsman's arm in front of him. He felt that he could see the inside of the swordsman's arm through his hand. Probably he saw it through the water in both their bodies. At the very least, he was able to form an image. He tried concentrating on the blood vessels. Found the source of bleeding. Around the ruptured blood vessel, he coated the outside with a film of water. When doing so, he took special care to, carefully, not crush the blood vessels. I did it! In Rio's image, the bleeding from the blood vessel stopped but the only way to see if it had actually stopped bleeding was to remove the hand that was applying pressure. He slowly released his hand and watched. Blood did not ooze out. Phew. I somehow did it. Then, Rio slowly returned home with the wagon containing the swordsman. Abel woke up. He looked around. I was saved. His limbs were free. He wasn't even chained. The pendant that he always had on him was still there. 
his trusty sword and leather armor were leaning right next to his bed. His arms and legs could move without problem. Clothes, he still had his pants on but he wasn't wearing his shirt. There was a deep wound on his left arm but it wasn't bleeding. His condition was generally good. He didn't seem to have been enslaved to anyone. Abel got out of bed, stood up, and put on his sword on his waist. A private house, but it's too big for one. Is it the village mayor's house? He passed through the living room, opened the door, and went outside. The sun was shining brightly, and there was a large garden. It's not a village. Where am I? Ah, you're awake. I'm glad I helped you. Abel turned around in shock. He didn't sense any presence. But he was more surprised by the appearance of the man who called out to him. He was one head shorter than Abel. In his late teens, with black hair, and dark skin probably tanned by the sun. But above all, the only things he had on were sandals and a loincloth, and that was made by some tanned leather. He wasn't wearing anything that could be called clothes. Even slum kids would wear something a little more decent. No, that's not the first thing I should say. I am Abel. I believe you saved me. You have my thanks. Abel said and bowed. Ah, uh, don't mention it. I just carried you home after I found you washed up from the sea. But I was only able to help Abel San. The other people had, unfortunately. Ah, uh, the others were washed up too? Don't worry, they were smugglers. Smugglers? Rio, who couldn't grasp the situation well, tilted his head. If they were smugglers, then Abel San who was washed up along with them is, what? A smuggler too? No, if he was a smuggler, he wouldn't bother mentioning it. He talks with a blunt tone but he doesn't look like a bad person. A blunt tone, oh, I can understand his language. I don't think it is Japanese but I can understand it for some reason. I don't know why but as expected of Michael, pseudonym, a capable man. For now, have some food. Abel San's clothes are being dried here. I believe it is already dry. Oh, right, my name is Rio. A pleasure to meet you. His lifesaver named Rio was strange in many ways. First, food. There was no bread. But he had rice. It was a grain produced only in the southern part of the central countries and Abel had eaten it before. It was combined with various spices. How could he put it? He recalled that such combinations were usually exquisite. The spice roast meat that Rio gave him was surprisingly delicious. The combination of firm rice clumps, on a gyri, and roast meat felt even more delicious than the combination of bread and meat. The clothes that Rio wore, or rather his loincloth, was made of tanned boar skin. He apparently tanned it personally. There certainly were traces of hardship. But what surprised him the most was that he had no other clothes. You have no other clothes. Yeah, I couldn't get my hands on cloth or thread so I couldn't make any. No, no, even if you can't make it, you can always buy. Abel regretted it after saying that. Naturally, he couldn't buy what he needed because he didn't have money. Those were words of insult toward his lifesaver. Putting aside a town, not a single person lives around here. The answer was beyond Abel's imagination. Upon further asking, he found out that this place was called Rondo Forest? and that no one else lived around this area. Rondo Forest? Sorry, but I have never heard of this place. When I was on the boat, I heard them saying that they were being swept south. Ah, uh, that's right. In the first place, what happened on the ship that Abel San was on? Abel talked briefly about what happened on the ship. It departed from port earlier than planned. Because of that, Abel couldn't get off. They encountered a storm when out at sea and the mast and rudder were destroyed and at that point, they had been swept considerably south. And unfortunately, two days later, they were struck by another storm and were swept even further south. And in the end, the ship was destroyed by the Kraken. 
Kraken! Chills ran through Rio's body. I'm surprised you survived. Well, I guess I was lucky. After all, the others died, right? Ah, that's true. Abel also wondered about Rio's weapons. He had two knives on his left and right waist. Even if he was armed with a knife, he had too little armor. Just a loincloth was. He knew that knife users or scouts prefer lighter equipment but that was too light. He said that there were no cities around and no one lived here. But the exquisite roast meat was a slice of rabbit-type meat. Rio probably hunted it. In other words, he should be able to fight quite well. Otherwise, he would not be able to live in a land where there is a kraken offshore. The roast meat just now was excellent. Did Rio hunt that? He was curious, but he hesitated from asking directly. He decided to ask in a roundabout manner. Yes. I often hunt them in the forest to the east from here. It is the thigh meat of the lesser rabbit. Um, is Rio a knife user? I think it is quite difficult to hunt a lesser rabbit with a knife. Abel was not really good at asking in a roundabout manner. In the end, he just asked directly. Ah, uh, I am a water attribute magician. This knife can be said to be for self-defense or dismantling. Rio answered a little shyly. Magic users make up about 20% of the entire, phi, population. The remaining 80% can't use magic. Rio, who remembered what Michael, pseudonym, said, felt bashful. He expected reactions such as, Oh, you can use magic, amazing, or so you are a chosen one, or I yearn for that ability. But, magic, huh? Only half of the people can use it even in the central countries. Incidentally, I can't use it. Half. Michael, you said 20%. This is different. Rio was depressed and displayed a what a shock expression from graphic novels. HN? Rio, what's wrong? And no, it's nothing. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0027 Chapter 0027 The End of Slow Life Rio, I have something to discuss with you. After finishing their roast meat meal and cleaning up, Abel started a conversation. H.N.? About what? Actually, I wish to return to the beach where I washed ashore. I have something I need to check. I'm sorry, but could you guide me there? Ah, uh, that's fine with me. Then, let's go. Rio only had his usual loincloth, sandal, and two knives. Nowadays, he didn't even use the knife-tipped bamboo spear anymore. Originally the bamboo spear was used because the longer reach gave him a sense of security during battle. However, after days of interpersonal combat with the Delahan, close combat with the one-eyed assassin hawk, and with Murasame in hand, a longer reach was no longer necessary. Yes, Rio had improved. But that didn't appear to be the case in Abel's view. Rio. You mentioned that you are a water attribute magician. Yes, that's right. You don't need to bring your magic staff along? Eh? In the central countries, magicians typically carry staves. That was because the magician's staff was a conduit for magic to assist in magic activation and supplement the effects of magic. A magician without a staff requires more than ten times as much magical power to activate magic and the effect of the magic would be about one-tenth in comparison. In other words, to put it bluntly, they would be useless. But Rio had never used a staff to date. Eh uh, I don't have one. Abel regretted his question after he heard that answer. Another mistake. When living in poverty, it might be possible to lose your staff. I embarrassed my benefactor. Asking such a stupid question. Ah, uh, yeah, there are such instances. I am a swordsman so will be fine as long as I have this sword. Abel said and tapped the sword on his waist. If anything happens, I'll stand in front as the vanguard and fight so Rio can watch from behind. 
No, there's no need to. Please let me do just this. If I keep getting help even after you saved my life, it would damage my dignity. Abel replied and brought his face directly in front of Rio's. Ah, yes, then I'll entrust it to you when the time comes. It took his all to give his reply. There were no longer any corpses on the beach. It had only been five hours since Rio carried Abel away, but it seemed that the corpses of the two smugglers had already been cleaned up. Of course, it wasn't Rio who cleaned them up. Probably something from the sea did. Those two were already dead. It seems that they had been eaten or dragged into the sea. Rio gave a simple explanation without any emotion in particular. But that wasn't the case for Abel. In other words, if Rio didn't drag me away, that would have been my fate too. Cold sweat ran down Abel's back. Abel sounds luck is good after all. Rio smiled broadly. No, well, yes, I'll think of it that way. And Rio, if possible, could you call my name without honorifics? It's a little hard for me if you call my name with, San, but I call you, my lifesaver, without any honorifics. But I believe Abel San is older than me. Well, if you are fine with it, then it is okay. Abel. Oh, thanks. All my friends call me that so this is better. Friends. Even though I wanted to be alone and told Michael, pseudonym, to send me to a place where no one would come to. I feel a little envious of having friends. After all, twenty years alone is a long time. Rio thought to himself emotionally. On the contrary, Abel was searching for something. Ah, uh, so there's nothing after all to serve as proof. Did it sink to the bottom of the sea? Well, it can't be helped. I should join up with everyone for now. Rio, thanks. In the end, it seems that I can't find what I am looking for. That's a shame. What do you plan to do now? For now, I wish to join up with my friends. I should be able to contact them if I go to the city of Rune, but... Rio tilted his head and answered. Sorry, but I do not know where that city of Rune is. I think it is probably far north from here. I believe you drifted a considerable distance. There are no people around this area, not to mention cities. I see. I'll have to prepare myself for the worst. At that moment, Abel paused for a while. And after thinking for a little, he said to Rio. Hey, Rio, do you want to travel together? Abel's invitation came as a surprise and was completely unexpected by Rio. It certainly would be difficult to travel through the forest alone. Even if Abel was a skilled swordsman, traveling solo would increase the difficulty immensely. The greatest difficulty would be, resting? With two people, one could sleep while the other stayed up and kept watch. However, a lone person would not be able to get sufficient sleep. They would have to stay vigilant at all times. And staying vigilant for long periods would be tiring. And fatigue would cause mistakes. That was a rule of the world that even a skilled person cannot escape from. That's why even in the armies of modern earth, the smallest unit was a, two-man cell, a pair of people. However, Rio had never imagined leaving Rondo Forest. He had created paddy fields around his house, dug sewers, and laid cobblestone roads to places where he often visited. He was also cultivating many fruits within the barrier. There were fewer vegetables but that did not pose any inconvenience to life. He had no difficulties living here but, the fact was that his heart moved a little when he was asked if he wanted to travel together. No inconveniences. No difficulties. But I am just a little curious to see a city built in this world of swords and magic. That said, discarding the environment I made around the house and this slow life feels a little wasteful. Abel panicked a little when there was no reaction from Rio. Sorry, it must have been too sudden. At the very least, I would be grateful if you could travel to the city of Rune with me. As a guide, or yes, as a request. A request. If you come with me, I'll pay the request fee and help you if you wish to live there. 
To be honest, I'm totally lost here so I can't imagine how I can get to the city of Rune from here. How about it? Abel said and lowered his head. Ah, that's right. I don't really have to leave Rondo Forest forever. I can always see the world a little before coming back again. I'm confident that by that time, Michael's pseudonym, Barrier, would still be functioning. Rio thought to himself without any basis. He had complete faith in Michael, pseudonym. All right. For the time being, I have to prepare something so if you are okay with leaving tomorrow, I will accept the request to travel together. Yes, Rio, thank you. Abel grabbed Rio's hand with both hands and shook up and down happily. To Abel, Rio was kind of a ray of hope. He drifted to somewhere he had no idea where and was fortunate to be the only one who survived but it was thanks to Rio who found him and took him home that. Although Rio mentioned that he didn't exactly know where the city of Rune was, he was confident that it was fairly far north so he should have some basis for that information. In the first place, it is extremely difficult to cross a forest when you don't even know how long it would take. A magician without his staff might have difficulty fighting but I can handle the fights. I would be grateful for having somebody to take turns keeping watch when resting. Ah, right, I'll get him a staff and clothes from the very first city we reach. That probably won't be perceived as insulting. Actually, there's a possibility that he can't enter a city looking like that. Abel had completely misunderstood that Rio didn't have a staff and was only dressed in a loincloth because he was poor, although it was true that Rio had nothing to his name. On the other hand, even though he was only leaving the house for a while, Rio had to prepare some matters. The functions of the house were made by Michael, pseudonym, so Rio didn't mess with anything. The barrier and the storage would probably work fine even in his absence. The paddy field can't be saved. He'll just have to remake it when he comes back. He had stored some frozen paddy. He could eat it or grow seedlings from it so he could get started as soon as he comes back. There was no helping the fruits in the garden. He'll just have to pray that they survive with just rain. Basically, the things he will be leaving at home would work out somehow. The problem was the things he will be bringing with him. The convenient classic Otherworld story item box that is a spell capable of storing items in a subspace. He didn't have it. He didn't have any items with similar functions either. He had to be careful with what he chose to bring with him. First, he decided to bring the seasonings. Salt and black pepper. He placed them into small wrapping cloth bags, about the size of a drawstring bag, made from tanned kite snake leather. It probably won't get in the way much if he hung them on his waist. Since they were seasoning, it wasn't necessary to bring a large quantity of it. But the taste of food would be completely different with or without it. They were essential for traveling. Similarly, he placed wound grass and paste form in a drawstring bag. Next would be flint. It would generate sparks if struck against Michael's pseudonym knife. Water, he could create it. Eh? Is that sufficient? It turned out quite little. It appeared that if you don't consider a change of clothes, the things needed for travel were quite little. All that's left is saying goodbyes. After eating dinner, Rio told Abel that he would be going out for a while. At this timing? That was suspicious even to Abel. Yeah. Since I can only meet them at this timing. I plan to tell them that I won't be home for some time. I think it will take some time so Abel, please wait here. Yeah, all right. Even though he said that nobody lives around here, he has to tell somebody that he won't be home? Perhaps, is there a spirit of a person important to him? Even if he is alone now, it doesn't mean that he had always been on his own. I shouldn't pry into his circumstances. Rio came to the center of the wetlands to the north, near the shore of the lake. When the moon reached the middle of the sky, the Delahan on the headless horse appeared as usual. Normally, Rio would hold up Murasame, the Delahan would ready its stance and their combat would start. But today was different. 
Ryo approached to Dullahan without readying his sword. I wish to tell you something today. I will be leaving this Rondo forest for a while from tomorrow onward. Therefore today will be the last. He didn't know if his words got through. In the first place, Ryo didn't know what kind of being a fairy king was. Nevertheless, he felt that sincerity could be communicated to it. Even if it didn't understand, it has been true that it had been training him with the sword so it was natural that he would want to express his gratitude. I am truly thankful for all you have done until now. I have survived until now thanks to you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Perhaps it was his imagination, but he felt that the Dullahan seemed a little lonely. Of course, it was a headless knight so it had no face. Therefore he didn't know its expression. But still, Ryo could sense its lonely atmosphere. I won't be able to practice after tonight. As the final practice, I will fight more seriously than usual. After saying that, Ryo formed the blade on Murasim. In response, the Dullahan pulled out its sword from its scabbard as usual. Their sword battle began. The fight lasted for two hours without rest. The points were two to three. Ryo was able to deal two fatal hits, but he received three hits so he lost. Well, his record has been straight losses so far. But today he didn't stay down. He had to give his final greetings. He managed to stand on his feet despite them swaying. Thank you very much. Ryo bowed deeply. The Delahun approached Ryo and presented something in its hand to him. This is a robe? For me? It was white, or rather a pale blue robe. The kind of robe a magician wears in RPG games or movies, along with a hood that would hide a person from the tip of the head to the ankles. A classical magician outfit. He certainly would get caught if he entered a city with just a loincloth. Ryo accepted it and immediately put it on. It was a perfect fit. Moreover, it was tailored perfectly around the arm to shoulder to make it easy for him to swing a sword. Rather than a pure magician, it felt more like something a lightsaber-wielding galaxy knight would wear. Ryo immediately took a liking to it. Thank you very much. I will take good care of it. He bowed deeply once again. Seeing that, the Dullahan gave off a satisfied atmosphere. He didn't have a face but Ryo imagined it that way. The Dullahan straddled its horse and disappeared as usual. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0028 Extra chapter sponsored by TM Enjoy Volume 1, Part 2, Two-Person Journey Chapter 0028 Two-Person Journey Now then, shall we depart? After Ryo made a final check to ensure he didn't forget anything, he announced to Abel. Yeah, let's go. The two of them were lightly equipped. In the first place, Abel was shipwrecked so he didn't have any luggage. He only had his clothes, wallet, light armor, and sword. Ryo only had the robe he received from the Dullahan, loincloth, sandals, knife, murasame, and seasonings. Since they were crossing through a forest, having fewer luggage was better. Basically all our food will have to be procured. I have salt and pepper seasoning and I can produce water so there are no issues there but we will be hunting animals and monsters and eating wild fruits. Well, this forest has many living organisms so I believe there won't be any problems. Understood. After heading north for some time, we will come across a fairly large wetland. I have traveled up to that point before so I know the situation. For now, there won't be any significant monster encounters until we reach that point. While saying that, his first encounter with the one-eyed assassin hawk came to Rio's mind. At that time, he encountered it in this north forest. I see. Then let's head for the wetland for now. After leaving the barrier, the two of them were silent for a while. Ryo was thinking of the house he lived in for a long time while Abel was worried about Ryo. Abel finally couldn't endure it and asked. Hey Ryo. I have something I wish to ask. 
HN? What's that? Um, this might be a brash question so it is okay to not answer if you don't want to, but where did you go last night? Abel hesitated as he couldn't help but to feel curious regarding the matter that he shouldn't pry into. Ah, uh, that's fine. Yesterday I went to my master's place to let them know that I would be away for a while. Master? Did that master give you that robe? Yes, you're right. I received it as a farewell gift. At a glance, it looked to be of good quality but appeared to be a regular robe. But Abel felt something was different about it. Abel had grown up surrounded by quality and beautiful products. Therefore, he had an eye for such items. That I was telling him. That isn't something ordinary. But he didn't know what was extraordinary about it. Um, does that robe have any special effects? Normally it would be taboo to ask such a question but it wasn't taboo to ask someone within the party. Without knowing the weapons, armor, or special skills of party members, they would not be able to cooperate during an emergency. However, Abel asked Rio simply because he wanted to know the true reason for the sense of incongruity he felt. HN I don't think there is anything in particular. Because Master didn't say anything. The Delahan had never spoken before. Well, that was expected given that it didn't have anything above its neck. I see. If the owner didn't know about it, there was nothing he could do. Abel wasn't convinced but there wasn't anything else he could do. In the meantime, they arrived at the northern wetlands. For this wetland, we will detour to the left toward the west and then head north. I don't know much about what lies beyond there so I think we should be more cautious. Oh, all right. Abel nodded. I wonder if most magicians speak in coherent manners. My companion, a magician I have known from my hometown, speaks as Rio does. Is that so? I have not met other magicians before so I can't comment on that. Not to mention other magicians, Abel is the first human being I have met. Rio thought to himself and smiled wryly. They bypassed the northern wetlands and did not encounter any monsters even after leaving the wetlands northward. After proceeding further north, about mid-afternoon going to evening, they finally encountered a monster. That's a lesser boar. Like mentioned yesterday, I'll do it. Rio, please watch from behind. Saying that, Abel drew his sword. Rio did as he was asked and stood back. In Rio's mind, the scene of his first battle after coming to, Phi, was being revived. Right, the opponent for my first battle was a lesser boar too. I was exposed to murderous intent for the first time in my life and got rooted. In the end, I defeated it by piercing it with ice bond and icicle lance, so nostalgic. While Rio was remembering, the battle began. The lesser boar charged at Abel. Combat art sidestep. Abel avoided the lesser boar's charge by sidestepping to the side with minimal movement just before it reached him. And while dodging. Combat art perfect pierce. The blade pierced into the left ear of the lesser boar. The sword reached its brain and the lesser boar was killed without achieving anything. Rio was surprised. Not by that skillful execution, but by that thing? He just learned. Combat art. What is that? That side step to the side and that final pierce through the ear. So, Phi. Has such things too. Phew, this will be dinner for tonight. HN? What's wrong, Rio? Ah, uh, no, that was the first time I've seen combat art so. Ah, uh, I see. Magicians can't use it after all. It is unique to those who use weapons to fight such as swordsmen, something like a skill? I see. Rio was thinking about something. More importantly, it is going to be evening soon so perhaps we should prepare for camp. I pierced the lesser boar through its ear so blood would flow out naturally but... Ah, uh, that's right. I recall a large tree beside a cave a little way back so we can set up camp in front of that. There should be enough space for a bonfire. 
Rio set his thoughts aside for now and started thinking about what was more important. Yes, right now the most important matter was having a meal. You have a keen eye. Then, shall we just disassemble and bring the parts where we will be eating there? Abel took out a knife to disassemble the corpse there. Then I'll gather dead branches and travel back to start the fire. Rio was a water attribute magician who was good at starting a fire. The roasted lesser boar thigh meat was delicious. The combination with salt and black pepper was supreme. But unfortunately, there was no rice. Even though there was a certain amount of satisfaction, Rio felt that something was missing. On the other hand, Abel didn't feel any of that and seemed quite happy. That might have been the difference between those who stayed in one place until yesterday and those who have spent their time as adventurers. He had only left his home for half a day and he was already feeling reluctant. The importance of rice in the diet could only be understood after it was lost. If this was the case, I should have brought rice even if it was a burden. Rio was convinced even though he didn't have an idea of how he could bring it. Rice was important. When he returns home, he'll take good care of it. Then I'll take a nap first. I don't think I will sleep deeply but feel free to wake me up if anything happens. After saying that, Abel entered the cave beside the large tree. The plan was for Rio to wake Abel when the moon reached the middle of the sky. Now then I have free time so I guess I can train my magic control. He had walked all day today and didn't get to fight too so he had a lot of magical power remaining. He didn't know how much magical power he could recover by sleeping after this but he should recover the magical power consumed if it is limited to magic control training. Rio somewhat thought to himself. In the past, he used to train magic control by making huge five-story pagodas and Tokyo sky tree in his garden, but recently he had taken a liking to making miniature Tokyo towers. As with most things, it was extremely difficult to make a large object small. Even if the word, miniature, could be easily said, various techniques were required and it was necessary to pay close attention to everything from designing to manufacturing. That, close attention? was control and magic so to speak building a large tokyo sky tree required a lot of magical power however in terms of magic control rio felt that producing a tiny tokyo tower could train it better well either way both were training that he liked so he wasn't particularly dissatisfied he slowly built a tokyo tower with a line of ice that was thinner than thread right hand left hand right foot and left foot for towers all at the same time it was no longer training with just one tower training has to be tough isn't it important to create a training menu that is fun but also challenging while rio was building tokyo towers on his palms and in front of his toes a few monsters caught rio and abel scent and were approaching Abel told him to wake me up if monsters come but he still has to walk a long distance tomorrow so it would probably be better to let him sleep. Rio thought to himself and decided to settle it on his own. That said, as long as it was not a particularly strong monster, he didn't even have to move. He just had to pierce the monster from its right ear to its left ear with a water jet. Earlier, Abel also pierced the lesser boar's ear. Rio knew from experience that it was easier to penetrate through the ears. That meant that he could defeat the monsters without making any loud noises, that is, without disturbing Abel's sleep. Even if he left the defeated monsters there, other monsters would quickly drag them away. Although the blood from the monsters would gather other monsters, they would die before reaching anywhere near Rio. The night forest was such a place. As such, he kept only one lesser rabbit for the next morning's meal and left the others to the providence of the forest. If they were full, they probably won't bother to attack Rio and Abel either. Please read this novel in the original translator's website to support my work. WMV1C0029 Chapter 0029 Sword Art Relieving Rio of the night watch, Abel sat in front of the bonfire. 
Beside him was the corpse of a lesser rabbit that Rio caught. There were traces of blood flowing out from its ear. A single thrust through the ear with a knife? His skill is not bad, wait a minute, a single pierce through the ear against a lesser rabbit? And with a knife? Far from having skill, I can't really understand. Won't it normally escape before you even get close to it? Or is he adept at hiding his presence? Rather than be a magician, isn't it better if he just becomes a knife user? As expected of someone who lives alone in this forest. After adding dead tree branches to the bonfire, Abel picked up the ice jug and ice cup to pour water into that Rio prepared. Speaking of things I don't understand, there's this. When did he prepare this jug and cup? He said that I could drink it if I am thirsty while he's asleep, but would his magical power be okay? Before eating, he poured water from over my head like a shower as a substitute for a bath. If I add it to this, I believe he used quite a lot of magical power. But he didn't look like he was out of magical power. Yeah, I don't understand. He glanced at Rio who was sleeping in the cave with his robe. That robe. I feel it's special. I think it is probably something that was not created by human hands. That was given to him as a farewell gift. What kind of master did he have? When he said I'll have to tell them that I will be away for a while, I wondered if he was saying his farewell to the spirit of someone who lived with him in the past but had passed away. But if he was able to receive something like that, it was not a spirit, but not human either. Was it a legendary being like a dragon or something? No, the fact that it can't be created by human hands means that he received it from a spirit or something like that. No, no, but... A proper conclusion couldn't be reached as his questions and answers went around in circles. Well, that wasn't an issue since he didn't have anything special to do during the night watch. In the meantime, the eastern sky became brighter. Rio woke up at about the same time. Abel, morning. Ah, morning. In the end, no monsters attacked Abel even once. After eating the lesser rabbit that Rio had caught, the two began walking north. Naturally, there were no roads in the forest. There was something that barely seemed to be a beast trail, but it was not easy to travel on either. The formation was Abel in front and Rio in the back. It was due to Abel's offer that even if a monster suddenly attacks, Abel, a sword fighter, would be able to respond immediately. Well, as Rio followed while building tiny Tokyo towers on both palms, he didn't object to it since then he only had to pay attention to the rear. After all, a person would tire quickly if they had to walk ahead while still paying attention to what was coming from behind. On that day, they were attacked by quite a few monsters since the morning. Although the monsters that attacked were not strong monsters such as Lesser Rabbit, Lesser Boar, or Lesser Snake. Rio, leave the defeated monster as it is. When it is nearing noon, we'll have the most recent one we defeat as lunch. Roger that. It was possible to collect magic stones from around the heart of lesser rabbits and lesser boars. They could be used in alchemy, but the weak monster magic stones from monsters named Lesser were small and poor quality magic stones that had almost no use. Therefore, Adventurers do not collect lesser monsters' magic stones. It can't be sold in the first place so collecting it was a waste of time. In contrast, if it was greater or stronger, transactions could be done at a reasonably high price. But on Rio and Abel's journey a greater monster had not yet appeared. Abel was responsible for all the battles. Rio watched Abel's movement from behind. The existence of combat arts, that he first learned yesterday. He was extremely intrigued by it. Of course, Rio couldn't use it but he realized that the Delahan, who trained him in swordsmanship, did not use it either. That said, it was possible that Rio's eyes didn't catch it. When watching Abel activate his combat arts, a part of his body glowed white at the moment of activation. For combat arts sidestep, which was a sideways dodge, both legs would glow, and for combat art, perfect pierce. That seemed to increase the attack power with a sword, 
the hand that holds the weapon and the upper body would glow. However, during the twenty years of sword battle with the Delahan, the Delahan's body had never shown like that. With that in mind, it meant that the Delahan did not use it during their fights, after all. Although he felt great that it was possible to reach that level of strength without using combat arts, he was still interested in using the techniques that he was seeing right now. Besides, to be able to say, combat arts, oh, and reverse the outcome of the battle in one shot. Isn't that cool? Yes, a man has Chunibya no matter how old he gets. Abel, on the other hand, was naturally aware that Ryo was watching him fight. Is he interested in the way a swordsman fights? Well, some parts can be used in fighting with a knife so. That was the degree of recognition he had. In the first place, Abel was accustomed to being watched by others. Since he was a child, he grew up being called a sword genius. He also learned magic, but it didn't quite fit. And so, he devoted himself to the sword. That's why he spent all his time practicing with the sword from morning till night. And he also learned some combat arts. Since he was the second son, there was no need to leave the house. Fortunately, Abel quickly became an adventurer after reaching adulthood, at the age of 18. Eight years later, he was now a well-known B-class adventurer. Around the time it was about to reach noon, Rio and Abel exited out into a slightly open area of the forest. Even in a dense forest, there were occasionally such places. Yes, just like the place where Rio was surprised attacked by the one-eyed assassin hawk for the first time. Kaken. Abel pulled out his sword, swung it to the side from in front of him, and felt something deflect off the sword. Something that couldn't be seen, something invisible. Assassin Hawk! Rio shouted from behind. When Abel looked up, a large hawk was fluttering in the air and looking at them. That previous attack was a wind attribute attack magic. Rio ran up and stood beside Abel. Assassin Hawk, this is troublesome. In my party, we would probably escape into the woods. What do we do? Unfortunately, that is not possible. There is a normal boar behind us, and in the forest in front, there is a monster that I have never encountered before. Seriously? We're suddenly surrounded? Was this a trap or something? Thinking a little, Rio shook his head. No, it's probably a coincidence. Well, this opening here could be an assassin hawk hunting ground. The place where Rio was first attacked by the one-eyed assassin hawk was also such an open place. The assassin hawk probably knew that they could take advantage of their strength in these kinds of locations. Well, what do we do? Let's ignore the guy in the forest in front for now. If we fight here, it may not come out. Oh, that means we'll be fighting the assassin hawk and the normal boar here. Abel sighed a little. Both opponents were troublesome foes. I'll face the assassin hawk and Abel can deal with the normal boar. Abel was surprised by the allocation. Even Abel would die if he made a mistake against the assassin hawk's air slash and assault. No, but that is... The assassin hawk is in the air so it is tough for a swordsman, right? I'm a water attribute magician, so I'm good at defense. Rio grinned. Today's lunch, we can have a ton of bird and boar meat. While saying that, Rio headed for the assassin hawk. Cool. I understand. I'll rush over once I defeat the normal boar so don't die. After saying that, Abel rushed backward. Abel, don't rush and get hurt. Rio's voice was heard by Abel. Normally, when Abel fights a normal boar with his party, Warren, who acts as the shield bearer, would receive the charge of the normal boar and the wind attribute magician Rin would use attack magic while Abel would attack with his sword to kill it. But this time, Warren was not around. Moreover, if he took his time, Rio might be killed by the assassin hawk. I'll have to defeat it with haste. The normal boar entered Abel's field of view. Rio was able to detect the presence of such a distant monster. No, that doesn't matter now. 
If I don't concentrate, I will be killed instead. Seeing a human approaching it, the normal boar created and fired two stone gravels. As if that will hit? Sword art, absolute shadow. The swordsman exclusive, sword arts? That are a higher rank than combat arts? And the sword art, absolute shadow? Which was said to be difficult to learn even among the sword arts? It was a technique to dodge all long-range attacks including magic with minimum movement. While he was dodging with sword art, absolute shadow, he did not lower his speed as he rushed toward the normal boar. The normal boar lowered its head. Abel knew. After lowering its head, the boar-type monsters would charge. Usually, he would wait for the charge and dodge it sideways with combat art sidestep just before the collision. But now, to save time, he charged toward the boar too. It was extremely difficult to time. I have no choice but to give up on using sidestep. When he muttered so, the normal boar disappeared. It was a charge at a speed that was incomparable to a lesser boar. Sword art zero rotation. That was a technique to dodge the attack of the enemy who is rushing in at zero distance by rotating 45 degrees with the right foot and piercing the enemy's left side with the sword with that momentum. Abel's magic sword, which shined red, pierced the left ear of the normal boar without missing its mark.